If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 71 Zoro Senpai, please. Bartolomeo led the way obsequiously, while turning his head to look at Zoro from time to time, for fear that he might get lost. Logan Senpai told him that Zoro Senpai has a poor sense of direction. Looking at the fan in front of him, Zoro is also very helpless. He originally wanted Logan to take him to buy a sword, but Nami was the first to refuse, and then took Logan and Kaya to go shopping. Bartolomeo, on the other hand, volunteered to provide guidance services for Zoro, using Logan Senpai's advice as a token. Ah, hey! That's not a store. Without turning his head for a second, Bartolomeo noticed Zoro entering a nearby shop. It seems that Logan Senpai is right, Zoro Senpai really has poor sense of direction. Boss, how much is this earring? Zoro picked out an earring and asked the boss for the price. Nanny? Bartolomeo was stunned. Why did Senior Zoro pick out the earrings? But when he saw the earring on Zoro's left ear, he understood. Aren't you selling? Zoro frowned slightly. He only needs a single one, and buying a pair is useless. Achoo! Bartolomeo sneezed loudly, which aroused the idea of the shopkeeper. The store owner looked over subconsciously. FK! The heart suddenly reached the throat. Yes yes, no sale, only gift. The boss had a strong desire to survive so he immediately held the earring in both hands and sent it to Zoro. I'd better pay, I have money. Zoro didn't pick it up, but went to pay. Ah this. The store owner glanced at Bartolomeo in fear, and immediately saw Bartolomeo's eyes that wanted to eat him. He hurriedly shouted obsequiously, Dear guest, you must be from a foreign country? Logue Town treats guests from other places very friendly. This is a greeting gift. Zoro pondered for a moment, then shook his head, no way. Our vice captain said that we, members of the Straw Hat Pirates, must never take advantage of civilian. After all, today's Straw Hat Pirates have Logan, among other things along the way, it is impossible for those defeated pirates to be thrown around like in the original plot. The bounties of these pirates alone have a lot of money. There are already rich pirate to plunder, so why do they need to do those little things? According to Logan's idea, the temperament must be improved at this moment. Even if it is a pirate, it has to be a noble thief in the sea. This. Seeing Zoro's resolute refusal to take it for nothing, the shop owner is really desperate. He hurriedly looked at Bartolomeo, his eyes full of pleading for help. Bartolomeo thought for a while, his eyes lit up, and he said. Ah. Zoro Senpai and Logan Senpai have said that they don't take advantage of ordinary people. You see, this is not a charity case. This earring is a welcome gift, so you can take it. Seeing this, the shop owner quickly echoed, No, no. These is not charity is just my hospitality gift, just accept the hospitality of our Logue town. Hey? Is this seems right? Zoro nodded, feeling that what they said was indeed reasonable, so he accepted it. He took off the original earrings and put on new ones. The owner of the store is also a fine person, and immediately brought a delicate packing box to pack Zoro's old earrings. Ding ding ding. The new earrings emit a clear string of copper bells. Zoro Senpai, it's not that I'm talking too much. This earring has a sound, which is not good for you in battle. After leaving the earring shop, Bartolomeo reminded seriously. He has heard that in places like the Grand Line, there are strong people with strong listening abilities, and they can judge the enemy's attack trajectory just by listening. A person like Zoro who not only keeps hiding his voice, but also amplifies it, isn't that, stupid? Of course, Bartolomeo didn't dare to say this out of his mouth, he only dared to complain psychologically. It's right to have a sound. If you don't make your battles more difficult, how can you hone your strength? Zoro smiled and walked on. How did Zaraki Kenpeka go all the way from Soul Society's Rukonga to the leader of Godi I-13? Rely on non-stop fighting. And in the battle, in order to increase the difficulty of the battle, he deliberately woven a bell with sound in his hair so that his enemies could better judge his position. As Zoro, who is also obsessed with fighting to improve his strength, he very much approves of Zaraki Kenpeka's fighting concept. Hey! Listening to what Zoro said, Bartolomeo was stunned for a while. Then his eyes lit up thoughtfully, as expected of Zoro Senpai. As expected of the pride of our East Blue. This level is high. While Zoro was heading to the sword shop, Luffy's side came to the central square of Logue Town Town. In front of this square, 
there is a tall execution platform. This is the place where the pirate King Roger was executed, which is quite legendary. Today, it has become an iconic landscape in the town of Logue Town. I found it, is that where Pirate King was executed. Looking at the execution platform in front of the municipal building, Luffy's face was very calm. He muttered in his mouth, it is also the place where the era of great pirates began. In a trance, everything around seems to have become peaceful. The noisy crowd is gone. The street is gone. The pavilions are gone too. It seems that there is only this execution platform and Luffy in the world. Somewhere, there is a strange force that connects the two together. When Luffy got to the top of the scaffold, he didn't even know how he got there. The right-hand place in front of the forehead, Luffy looked into the distance. Ah, is this what Pirate King saw before the dead? Looking at the bustling scene in front of him, Luffy sighed with emotion. Hey! Boy, come down from there quickly. The sudden sound of a loudspeaker drew Luffy's attention, and he saw a plaza marine shouting. Why? Luffy wasn't just being arguing, he just thought that such a place, isn't it for people to visit? Hey! This is a special execution platform under the jurisdiction of the world government. You people! Boom! Before Mr. Marine could finish his words, a huge mace hit his head, knocking him to the ground. Really, why are you so uptight? Mr. Marine appearing in front of everyone is a tall super beauty, the mace that attacked Mr. Marine is being held by her with one hand and carried on her shoulder. Oh! What a beautiful woman! I have never seen such a beautiful person. It's so beautiful that I'm blown away. This super beauty has appeared, and the people around all of them suddenly have red hearts, showing the standard appearance of simping. But this super beauty turned a blind eye to these simps, and instead looked at Luffy with starry eyes, long time no see, Luffy. Hey? Luffy tilted his head, with a confused face, I don't seem to know you. Oh. Touching his forehead as if very sad, Alvita said, you can't even remember my appearance. But I will never forget you, you are the first man to hit my beautiful cheek. At that time, you punched me hard and made my heart move. Speaking of this, Alvita suddenly asked loudly to the surroundings, everyone, who is the most beautiful woman in this sea? It's you. Almost all the men simp with red eyes. That's right, it's me. In this world, there is no man who does not bow down under my figure. But I like strong men, so, you are my man, Luffy. Alvita opened her hands and spoke boldly. Boom! At this moment, a shell roared, and the square was in a mess. The blown fountain nearly hit Alvita, only to slide past her body. Amidst the panic among the civilians, a man came to Alvita's side, I'm sorry, beautiful Ms. Alvita. Alvita. Luffy was surprised, he looked around, Alvita? Where is she? You are not Alvita. Alvita couldn't bear it anymore and immediately laughed in a complaining tone, You are so slow, Luffy. I am Alvita. Hey? Hearing this, Luffy broke out in a cold sweat, Is that so, your appearance has changed? At this time, the man beside Alvita, revealing his self. There is no substitute for that inimitable red nose. So it's you, red nose. When Luffy saw Buggy's appearance, his tone was full of indifference. Shut up. Buggy is furious. He hates people talking about his red nose the most, so he immediately bared his teeth and shouted, This guy let his guard off. Kabeji, do it. Brush. A figure suddenly jumped down from the top of the municipal building, holding a jagged shackle in his hand, and rushed towards Luffy. If it was in the original plot, Luffy would be firmly nailed to the execution platform by Kabeji here. But now Luffy. The moment Kabeji jumped off the building, his observation Haki immediately sensed the opponent's attack trajectory. The sawtooth shackle slammed into the execution platform, Kabeji sat on it in a chic posture, and said very forcefully, Long time no see, rubber. Yet. You guys are still alive, you are really lucky. Luffy stood beside the sawtooth shackle, digging his booger while looking at Kabeji. Back then in Orange Town, the guy in front of him was knocked to the ground by Zoro. Listening to the voice coming from the side ear, Kabeji's face suddenly became stiff. Um? As soon as he turned his head, he saw Luffy on the right. What? Frightened, Kabeji quickly looked at the sawtooth shackles sitting under his buttocks, but found that there was nothing there. You, you 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 you, escaped. Originally, this raid took advantage of the right time, place and people, 
and it was a raid that Kabeji believed to be 100% successful. But now, embarrassment is one thing. He is like sending himself to the opponent's big boss alone. No way. Fight him. Kabeji draws his sword and chops. Swipe swipe. A flash of swords. Luffy didn't make a move at all, just dodged randomly. After a burst of hacking, Kabeji rested his hands on his knees, panting, no. Impossible, the gap can't be so big. Okay, I don't have time to play with you, I have to buy meat. With that said, Luffy jumped off the execution platform directly. In an roof not far from the execution platform a man wearing a dark green overcoat with a mark on his face that looks like the sole of a shoe is watching every move on the execution platform just now. Just now Luffy's ability to avoid the opponent's slash seems to be. Observation Hacky the man thought. The man in the dark green coat called the leader is none other than the leader of the revolutionary army, Monkey D. Dragon. That is Luffy's seed donator, aka father. He had come to Logetown to recruit soldiers, but he didn't expect to see his son here. Considering that there are guys like Smoker in Logetown, Dragon intends to secretly help Luffy. So, he's been keeping an eye on Luffy. But now it seems. Looks like I'm just worrying about nothing. Shaking his head slightly, he smiled self-deprecatingly. Chapter 72 Luffy jumped off the execution platform and went to buy meat. Nanny? Seeing Luffy's nonchalant look, Buggy's mouth was crooked. What is the most important thing to be a big pirate? Prestige. But at this moment, with so many people watching, Luffy just ignored him. Where does this put his buggy god tier prestige? Stop. Straw Hat Boy. In a rage, Buggy immediately chased after him. But Luffy ignored him and continued walking towards the market. What are you bastard doing? Don't you see I'm going to fight you to the death? Buggy bared his teeth and claws, and the dagger in his hand fluttered in the air. Not interested. Luffy shook his head and kept walking. Nanny. Buggy is stunned. Luffy turned his head and glanced at him, we didn't have any enmity at all. You have been punished for the Orange Town matter. The matter between us has been written off. Write it off ass. Buggy was hysterical, and when he thought of his experience of being shot by buggy cannons and flying to two places, he was furious. Asshole. Do you know what I've been up to for more than a month? Do you know how much my body suffers trying to find each other? Especially the lower half of my body, because I have no vision, I have been bullied by so many beasts. Although I also experienced a small adventure that gained friendship, but... This more than a month is a past that I can never let go of. Luffy, I'm going to fight you. As soon as Buggy finished speaking, Luffy's fist landed on his face. The powerful force directly sent Buggy flying. Okay, the fight is over hee hee. Showing a mouthful of smile, Luffy continued to run towards the market. But... Luffy. You beat Buggy and proved that you are stronger. You are the man I like, don't run away. Alvita's voice followed closely behind. Ah this. Luffy felt a pain in the ass. This kind of thing is what he is least good at. But thinking of Alvita's original appearance, Luffy couldn't help but want to give Alvita a punch. Da 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 da. At this moment, a burst of dense footsteps came. A large number of marine soldiers rushed over. White smoke bomb. Accompanied by a loud roar. Billowing thick smoke instantly dispersed the entire square. Wow. What is this? It's bad. Why can these smoke bind us? Damn it. It's the one with the smoke smoke fruit ability. The pirates yelled in horror. But in the face of smoke fruit's ability, ordinary people like them have no choice but to be tied up obediently. In the roof on one side. That is Smoker, he has come out, Luffy is in trouble now. Do I need to take action? Asked the leader of the Revolutionary Army. Dragon pondered for a while, then shook his head, I think I should watch first. Below. The engine roared, and Smoker came out on his bike. Whoosh. A large net was launched from the front of the car, instantly covering several pirates including Buggy and Alvita. Buggy and Alvita, who were still alive and kicking, suddenly felt weak. This net is not an ordinary fishing net, but a special net with sea stone, specially used for the opponents with devil fruit power. As for the other little pirates in the net, that's by the way. Buggy. Alvita. You two guys are on the most wanted pirate in East Blue, dare to come to Logue Town to cause trouble, you really cast yourself into a trap. A cool drift by bike, 
Smoker put the bike in front of Buggy and Alvita. Um? How come there is still a fish that slipped through the net? Smoker turned his head to look behind him, only to see a boy in a straw hat break free from the smoke. Smoker saw it, and so did Buggy and Alvita. Straw hat boy. Free me. If you save me this time, our grievances will be wiped out. As if grasping at straws, Buggy didn't seem to know that he kept saying he was going to duel just now. But he couldn't care less. He still has a treasure dream, but he doesn't want to be sent to the Impel Down prison like this. Alvita also shouted, Luffy, my man, save me. Luffy's face is black. Seeing that the two big pirates, Buggy and Alvita, both knew this straw hat kid, Smoker wondered, are you a pirate too? In the original plot, it was because Captain Nezumi reported to Marine Headquarters so that Marine Headquarters noticed the Straw Hat Pirates and offered a bounty to the Straw Hat Pirates. But now, Captain Nezumi has been thrown into the sea by Logan to feed the fish, so naturally he has no way to report to the Headquarters. So there is no bounty for the Straw Hat Pirates at all. They're only Zoro with a bounty, Marine doesn't even know which pirate group he joined. Without a bounty, Smoker naturally doesn't know about the Straw Hat Luffy. Yes. I am the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, and my name is Monkey D. Luffy. When he was asked about his identity, Luffy of course reported his pirate group name in a friendly manner, and then he did not forget to do his signature moves. He raised his hands high and shouted, I am the man who is going to be the King of Pirate. With this shout, all the people in the Logue Town Square took a deep breath. Shouting such slogans at the place where Pirate King was executed, how daring is this person? especially when Captain Smoker from Marine Headquarters is still here. Boy, you are really not afraid of death. Pirate King. The corners of Smoker's mouth curled up slightly, and then he sneered, this boy is really stupid. He glanced at Luffy, and didn't give Luffy a high evaluation of his combat power, but said lightly, the boy with the straw hat, just surrender with your hands up, lest I do it. After all, Luffy doesn't look very old, and Smoker is still a bit respecting the old and loving the young. Hey. Luffy tilted his head, sorry, since you're Marine, then I'm going to run away. With that said, Luffy turned around and ran away. Wow. A puff of smoke rushed in, blocking Luffy's front. Immediately afterwards, the smoke condensed into Smoker himself. Give it up, kid in the straw hat, you have no idea how powerful the Logia Devil Fruit power is. Smoker came out of the smoke like a god of war. Luffy frowned, feeling a headache. Look at it like this, it's impossible to slip away. He rubbed his fists and put on a stance, I won't give up without a fight. Smoke man, you can't stop me. Luffy's age is so deceiving. When meeting him for the first time, everyone would think that he is just a rookie. Smoker shook his head, and looked at Luffy with the eyes of an illiterate, you don't understand how powerful Logia is. As he said that, he stood there with his hands on his hips, and said confidently, just try to punch me and you'll know. Then obediently put your hands together and catch me, it's convenient for everyone. Punch you? Why? If it was someone else, it would either go up or punch him. But Luffy's brain circuits are different from normal people. He will not do things without reason. I tell you to hit me Smoker spoke slowly, with a slight displeasure in his tone. This little rookie, so much nonsense? Luffy raised his eyelids and pursed his lips, Uncle Smokey, I don't want to hit you. You tell me to leave, I'll go buy some meat, and leave here when I'm done. Leave. Smoker rubbed his chin, and there was even sympathy in his eyes. Poor baby, he is still thinking about buying meat. If you want to blame, blame yourself for insisting on being a pirate. You don't have to think about leaving. In the prison, you may not have meat, but you should have enough food. Seeing that Luffy was still leaving, Smoker couldn't bear it, so he walked towards Luffy. Well. If you insist on arresting me, then I can only beat you to the ground. Sighing, Luffy also became upset. I just want buy meat, but you want to arrest me and put me in jail, and you won't give me meat? Is this what people do? Thinking of this, Luffy suddenly lost his temper. Oh? Want a shot? That would be great. It was also because Luffy didn't follow the routine, and Smoker was brought into a corner at this time. He has to teach this ignorant kid in front of him a lesson today. Let him know how invincible a Logia-capable user is. So, Smoker didn't move forward, stood on the spot, until Luffy pouted, Come on. Luffy didn't hold back anymore, 
he put his hands on his knees. A large amount of air was quickly sucked in from his feet, thus speeding up blood circulation. Second gear. A puff of green smoke spread over the surface of Luffy's body, his skin turned slightly reddish. Oh! Looks like a devil fruit power too. Smoker pressed his eye sockets slightly, but he didn't pay much attention. After all, what if the opponent has devil fruit power? In the face of elementalization, they are all worthless. Third gear hone fusion, bone balloon. Luffy put his right thumb into his mouth, took a bite, and then blew it up. Puff. I didn't see how much gas he blows in, but his right fist expanded tens of times or even nearly a hundred times in an instant. Oh my god. What a big fist. He's also a devil fruit user. As expected, it is a necessary place leading to the Grand Line, how many devil fruit powers user appear here every year? The people around all exclaimed. Smoker raised his eyebrows, it's really exaggerated, but... Smoker still feels disdainful. Uncle Smoke Man, my fist is very powerful, are you sure you want to hit? As an optimist, Luffy would definitely not want to fight if he could avoid it. Shelf. Stop talking nonsense. Come on. Smoker blew a smoke ring. What's the use? If it was so useful, then the giant race would have dominated the world long ago. Okay. This is what you said. Seeing that Smoker still persisted, Luffy didn't ink any more, he jumped up one step at a time. Luffy was in the air, his huge fist was thrown to the sky, and then he fell down. Under the force of the arm, the huge giant fist in the sky was pulled down fiercely, and then produced an extremely terrifying downward smashing kinetic energy. Gomo Gomo no gigant pistol. Hey, 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 hey. This is too scary. Who can withstand this punch? Devil fruit user, all of them are monster-like existences. Don't worry, in front of Captain Smoker, there is only one fate for these pirates, and that is to go to the Impel Down prison. Although the marine soldiers were shocked by Luffy's huge fist, no one doubted Smoker's strength. The fist wind brought by the fist violently blew the ground. Smoker looked up at the giant fist against the sky. The fist wind blows on his face, blowing the two cigars in his mouth until sparks shine. Stupid and ignorant. Muttering in his mouth, Smoker watched Luffy's attack confidently. Hey? Wait, this fist. Suddenly, Smoker frowned slightly, he found that there seemed to be something on the surface of Luffy's fist. He was startled, his pupils constricted immediately, and he looked over carefully. The front of this kid's fist was covered with a thin layer of black air. Black air? And many more. Isn't that? Suddenly thinking of this possibility, Smoker's eyes widened suddenly. Not good. Without thinking too much, Smoker is about to get out of the way. But Luffy's fist is too big. Boom. The fist hit the ground with a bang. Boom. It's as if the whole town of Logue Town is shaking. This power is too terrifying. It feels absolutely no worse than the power of a giant. Yet. It's a good thing it's Captain Smoker, otherwise whoever is there will die. Ah uh, hello? Isn't Captain Smoker afraid of such a terrifying power? Haha. <laughs> What nonsense are you talking about? Captain Smoker has Logia Devil Fruit. Ordinary people's attacks have no effect on him. That's right, if you don't believe me, look over there. Amidst the compliments from the marine soldiers, all eyes were on the location where Luffy's fist was bombarded. The smoke and dust receded slowly, and the ground cracked by the punch slowly appeared in front of everyone. When they saw the situation there clearly, the people around them all opened their mouths wide and their eyes widened in an instant. Among the rubble, a guy wearing a marine coat was lying sprawled among the rubble. Take a closer look. Hiss. Isn't it the smoker who is like a myth in the eyes of marine soldiers? Chapter 73 In the Roof Ah. That, that's. Armament Hacky. The leader of the Revolutionary Army are shock. He was still thinking about whether to help Luffy later. But look what happened. He is really worried about nothing. Looking at the cracked ground in the square, the leader of the Revolutionary Army couldn't help being shocked and said, he's only 17 years old, and he has already trained two type of hacky, Luffy's talent is too terrifying. Just judging from Luffy's age, this talent is indeed terrifying. But, if combined with the time Luffy spends at sea, this talent is not scary. It's super super scary. As the leader of the Revolutionary Army, he know that hacky's training can only be honed through continuous fighting. 
especially after experiencing the kind of battle where the edge of life and death hovers, Haki is more likely to awaken. However, in just over a month since Luffy went to sea, he has already awakened the two type of Haki. What is this concept? You must know that many people will not be able to stand on the threshold of a kind of Haki throughout their lives. At Luffy's age, as long as he can touch the threshold of a kind of Haki, he is already considered a genius. But Luffy not only awakened the training of two Haki at the same time, but it seems that neither of them is just getting started, at least they have reached the primary stage. Dragon took a deep breath, my son, is definitely not a rookie. Dragon looked over. On the square. Luffy stood in front of Smoker and spread his hands, I told you, my fist is very powerful. Believe it now. Lie here for a while, I'm going to buy meat. Mmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmm
He looked at Luffy again, and said thoughtfully, No wonder he has such strength at such an age, so he is the captain of the pirate group. Then, he supported Luffy's neck with sea stone ten hands in one hand, and lifted Luffy up from the ground with the strength of the other. Boy, don't say anything kind or unkind. I am Marine, and my duty is to catch pirates. As long as I can catch pirates, everything is just. Smoker looked at Logan and taught him with his great principles. Of course, he said this mainly to maintain a positive image of Marine. His sneak attack just now was indeed unreasonable, and it was also seen by the surrounding civilians. Saying this now gives him an advantage in his position. Is that so? Hearing this, Logan frowned slightly. Then, he stretched out his arm, stretched it quickly, and grabbed two beautiful civilians. Smoker immediately shouted, Stop! What are you doing? Don't hurt civilians! The surrounding marine soldiers also raised their guns in unison, aiming at Logan. Look, according to your concept, I'm a pirate. Is it reasonable for me to take hostages in exchange for my own captain? Logan hugged the two girls with his left arm, and said calmly. Take it easy ladies, we'll get you out. Yeah, don't do anything radical, these nasty pirates will kill people every now and then. Keep calm, we will rescue you. Marine soldiers encouraged the two hostages one after another. However, the two little girls have a strange delusion. That is, the two of them were obviously hijacked by this handsome big brother, but they were not afraid at all. This big brother seems to be very nice even with his arms around them. So gentle. As the two of them felt, Logan really didn't mean to hurt them. At this time, Logan sent the two little girls back to their original positions with a whoosh. What do you mean? Smoker frowned, he couldn't understand the young man in front of him. Originally hijacked a hostage, he would indeed throw a rat. But why did he give up such a great advantage all of a sudden? White Hunter, I just wanted to tell you. There are things that can be done, but not everyone will do them. What you want to do, you don't need to find any bullshit justice reasons. Justice is not spoken with your mouth, but in people's hearts. Everyone has their own concept of justice in their hearts. Logan spread his hands, waved to the two little girls, and said with a smile, What do you think? The big brother is so right. Big brother is justice. In just a few seconds, these two little girls became Logan's super fans. Even the surrounding civilians showed expressions of thinking one by one at this time. Yes. The job of Marine is to catch pirates, but is it really necessary to use this as an excuse to do everything? Pirates are defined as evil. According to Marine's theory, pirates can do anything without worrying about the consequences. But in fact, not every pirate is heinous. The well-known great pirate Whitebeard, although he did a lot of bad things, but at the same time he protected many islands from other pirates. He's a big pirate but for him. For the civilians who he protected, in their hearts, Whitebeard is good. It is justice. Not even Marine can compare to Whitebeard. And the pirate in front of him can easily exchange for the captain he added by using ordinary people as hostages, but he didn't do that. Isn't this also a good conception of justice? Moreover, the captain of the family clearly defeated Smoker just now, and did not kill Smoker. Instead, Smoker avenged his kindness and attacked them. Still in the name of justice. This justice seems too cheap. This person, is not simple. In the roof, Dragon listened to what Logan said in the square, nodded deeply, thought for a moment, and then said, Luffy can have such a partner. What Logan said made Smoker feel ashamed. Damn guy, don't you know the truth about hitting someone in the face? You are so good, you really don't give me any sympathy. So, Smoker said in a cold voice, Okay. Boy, you should be arrested without a fight. For the sake of letting go of the hostages on your own initiative, I will tell the soldiers not to torture you. Think too much. Now, it's time to use my own method to save our captain. As he spoke, Logan rubbed his wrists, stretched his arm aiming to attack Smoker. What? Why is it the same as Straw Hat Boy's fruit ability? When he saw Logan taking the hostage just now, Smoker didn't pay much attention, but now seeing Logan use the rubber fruit ability again, Smoker was completely shocked. He exclaimed, how can there be two identical devil fruit? Logan shrugged slightly, this is called ignorance. Just now, he had just mocked Luffy's ignorance. Not long after, he was ridiculed by Logan with the same words. Although he knew that the other party was doing it on purpose, Smoker found that, 
he couldn't refute it. Because he really doesn't know anything about this kind of thing. At this time, Logan's fist swished over, heading straight for Smoker's head. Smoker didn't think much of it, and left to get his head into elementalization. As for the fact that elementalization cannot defend against armament hacky, Smoker is not so worried. Come on, this is East Blue. Isn't it enough to have a young man who knows armament hacky? You said there were two young men who knew armament hacky at the same time? Boom. Logan's fist hit Smoker's head, making a terrible sound. Smoker only felt his head buzzing, and then his head slammed to the store. This huge force directly flew out with his body upside down. Boom. Smoker smashed a big hole in the ground. Smoker lay in the ruins, his eyes full of unbelievable horror. How, how, how is it possible? Even if all the young people in East Blue are pulled together, you can't find two guys who know armament hacky? Why does he meet two at the same time and place at once? What the hell did he do in his previous life? Puff. Dash. A mouthful of old blood spurted out, Smoker didn't know whether he was beaten or angry, and passed out immediately. Chapter 74 Damn it! In the roof, the leader of the Revolutionary Army couldn't help but swear, he said in disbelief, is armament hacky already so popular? Even in the ranks of the Revolutionary Army, there are not many who know armament hacky. The square is. Marine soldiers are stunned. Everyone stared at Logan dumbfounded, and didn't know whether to fire the gun in their hand. Let's shoot, Smoker is not here, they take the head against such a powerful pirate? At this time, Logan's eyes swept over the faces of the Marines, I advise you not to do stupid things. You know, I am a pirate, the kind who kills people without batting an eye. Gulp. Some Marines swallowed in fright, and subconsciously raised the gun in his hand. The muzzle is not pointing, expressing hostility. Soon, clatter. All Marines cocked their guns. There is no way, they have more people, the advantage is still on their side. Even the surrounding civilians obviously don't think there is any problem with the pirate's approach. Smoker passed out, and his devil fruit ability was naturally removed. Haha. <laughs> Saved. Great. Thanks to the straw hat pirates, otherwise we would have been sent to the impel down prison. The pirates in the world are one family, haha, <laughs> everyone helps each other. Without the control of smokers, those pirates were all free at once. Several pirates went up and lifted the nets covering Buggy and Alvita, cheering and rescued their captain. The world's pirates are a family? Logan frowned. If he didn't say that, he really didn't want to care about it. But as soon as these words came out, it seemed that the Straw Hat pirates, the Buggy pirates, and the Alvita pirates were in the same group. Ha ha ha. Straw Hat pirates. You're rescue me this time, I, the Great Buggy will write it down. The previous account has been written off. Buggy grinned, as if he had everything under control again. Boom. Logan's fist landed on Buggy's face in an instant, knocking him over. Buggy didn't even react, and passed out. Stop being sentimental. Who cares whether you remember your grudge or not? Logan curled his lips he was displeased. Ah. Captain Buggy. Damn it. We want to avenge the captain. Don't be stupid. We are not opponents at all. Save the captain first. The pirates of the buggy pirates felt exhausted. During their trip to Logue Town today, they seemed to be either saving the captain, or on their way to rescue the captain. This punch knocked down buggy, Logan showed great vigor. In Alvita's eyes, this flamboyant move immediately attracted the most beautiful woman in the sea. Stronger than Luffy, what a powerful man. Alvita looked at Logan with starry eyes, and said in an arrogant voice, I've decided, I don't like Luffy anymore. Now you are the man I like. As she spoke, she put her hands on her cheeks, put on a beautiful posture, and winked at Logan, handsome and strong, be my man. Like Luffy, Logan has also seen the original Alvita. Hearing this, his mind is full of the original version of Alvita. Logan only felt that the back molars were sore, and goosebumps fell all over the floor. Stay back. No nonsense, Logan slammed out a rubber fist and went straight to Alvita's face. Boom. But when Logan's fist landed on Alvita's face, it just slid over. Hey? Logan froze for a moment. Slippery fruit. Hmm, actually is willing to attack me, what an obsessive powerhouse. After being attacked by Logan, Alvita not only didn't get angry, but showed a more charming posture. 
Logan couldn't bear it a little bit, as if he was being bitten by ten million bugs all over his body. An uncomfortable one. At this moment, a bolt of lightning fell from the sky and crashed onto Alvita's body, knocking her to the ground. Sitsizi. Alvita fell to the ground, a strong electric current jumped back and forth on her smooth skin. Convulsed violently for a few times, Alvita passed out after foaming at the mouth. Ah! Where did the lightning come from? Captain! There are obviously no dark clouds, what's going on? Thunderbolt in the sky. Don't you think it's scary? Others don't know what's going on, but Logan does. He subconsciously looked at Nami who was not far behind him, and saw that the little thieving cat's face was full of anger at this moment. Obviously, Alvita violated Nami's reverse scale. Logan is thinking narcissistically. Ha ha. What to do? The captain fainted. So is our captain. Quick. Get out of this damn place first. Everyone, please help and carry the two captains away. The pirates got busy with their hands and feet. However, they didn't realize at all that they had been implicated by their captain. Originally, Nami was in a good mood, went shopping with Logan, and then went back to buy something, very happy. But she didn't expect not only to be spoiled by these pirates, but also to openly snatch her man. How can this be tolerated? Accept the terrible wrath of a jealous woman. No one is allowed to go. Nami. Gave a coquettish cry, and pointed the small wand in his hand towards the sky. Rumble. The originally cloudless sky was suddenly filled with azure blue lightning. Countless thunder and lightning are intertwined, just like the waves of the sea. What? Underscore underscore. What the hell? What's going on? This, this is the devil fruit ability. It's that woman. Oh my god. She looks beautiful and harmless to humans and animals, yet she has such terrifying abilities. Run. The pirates realize that there is a big problem. No matter what Buggy and Alvita, run away. Only. Chop. 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 Strands of extremely thick lightning beams poured down from the sky like a pouring basin. Landed with a bang. It's over. Help. Not only the pirates, but also the marines and civilians have the same thoughts at this moment. It's over. It's over. They knew they should go home now. It's too late to run now. Almost everyone has the same reaction, holding their heads and dying. Boom. 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 After a burst of terrifying thunder, the square regained its tranquility. Hey! I, I didn't die. A civilian let go of his hands holding his head, and looked around cautiously. I, I didn't die. God! I can survive such a terrifying thunder and lightning. I'm not dead. Hey! It seems, only those pirates were struck by lightning. Obviously. They don't want to hurt us civilians at all. Great! When the lightning disappeared, the civilians and marines found that they were all unharmed. But also realize one thing. If people want to kill them, it's just a matter of thought. This feeling of weakness is really helpless. In the roof. This, this, this. The leader of revolutionary was shock. At first Luffy's strength shocked him. Later, a strong and thoughtful partner like Logan appeared, which made Dragon even more shock. Now there is another partner with such a powerful devil fruit. Dragon is not well. Why didn't he have such good luck when he first went to sea? To think he got jealous to his son. On the square. Marine soldiers dare not move. I, can we go? A bolder marine soldier asked nervously. Humph. I didn't restrict your personal freedom. Nami came over, and Kaya followed closely behind her. Seeing such a big scene for the first time, Kaya was still very nervous. Which one of you is the leader? Nami came in front of Marine, with one hand on his hip, like a big sister. Then, there, there. The Marines all pointed to Smoker lying in the rubble. Now? Who's beside him? Nami doesn't bother with Smoker, she just knows who has the right to speak. Uh, it should be me. A Marine with the petty chief officer's badge on his shoulders stepped out. He bowed his waist slightly, lowered his head, and his attitude in front of Nami was extremely respectful. This damn desire to survive. Nami nodded, okay. I'll give you two hours to count the bounties of these pirates for me immediately, and then give me all of them. What? Hearing this, Petty Chief Officer Marine was stunned. Ah, uh, what? 
Didn't you hear me? Having just experienced the unpleasant experience of being obda man face to face, Nami is now mad. No 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 no. No. No, even if it's for bounties, but these pirates were captured by Captain Smoker. The Marine had a bitter face. Didn't they run away again just now? Nami asked back. Hearing this, the Marine nodded, ah it seems to be the case. Then what's the nonsense? Go get the money. I'm a bounty hunter. While talking, Nami's ability to activate cards. Rumble. In the sky, the thunder shook violently, and a group of lightning ripples intertwined in the sky. Ah. Please, don't be angry, I'll let someone take the money. Feeling the pressure on the top of the head, how dare Petty Chief Officer Marine dare to beep. So, if you want others to reason with you, first of all you have to be the one with the big fist. It's useless to talk nicely to you, once the thunder and lightning strike, you will immediately understand the truth. Nami said, very well, quickly, you will gather here, and I'll come to get the money. You won't break your promise to me, will you? No, no, no. Don't worry, ma'am. You you are such a little money grabber. Looking at Nami who came to his side, Logan smiled. He he. Isn't it right for people to get some money for capturing them? The little hand took Logan's arm without any haste, and Nami smirked slightly annoyed. He he. We've got so much money for the crew, it's not too much to spend some money to buy clothes. Not too much Logan was noncommittal. Not a big problem. Then let's go. With a happy smile on his face. Nami left with Logan on his arm. Chapter 75 At sunset, Going Mary left the port of Logue Town. Standing on the deck of Going Mary, Nami looked at the sudden strong wind, and said a little strangely, Strange, how could wine suddenly blow in this weather? Wahaha. Anyway, it's a tailwind, amazing. Luffy had meat in his hands and a stuffed mouth. Logan smiled and said, I guess this is the father give to his son. What dad? Usopp leaned over. It's nothing, just talking nonsense. Logan made a joke he don't bother to explain much. He can't tell you that it was Luffy's dad who did it. They won't believe it either. It was already very late after the banquet. Logan took a shower and was about to go to bed. Creak. The small interior door opened. There is no doubt that this is Nami coming. Ah. My clothes are disheveled. Logan just got out of the shower and his clothes are all short sleeping styles. It was a bit embarrassing to be barged in by Nami suddenly. That's right, here you go, put it on. Nami gave Logan the set of clothes she was holding in her hand. I'll come and see later. With that said, Nami went back. Logan opened the suit to reveal a sporty hoodie and pants. Plus a plain white shirt. Thanks Logan said remembering when he was in the clothing store today, this little thief cat shop there for so long, so she bought clothes for him. Looking at the style of this hoodie Logan did not reject it. After all, the styles of sports style clothes will not vary too much. Logan changed into the suit and went to the mirror to have a look. Really? He is handsome, and he is naturally handsome in clothes. If he was in the campus of the previous life, he afraid that the girls would glare at him with passion. So? Did I pick well? Nami's little head suddenly popped up beside Logan. Yes, this is amazing. Before he finished speaking, the corner of Logan's eyes flashed. He looked at Nami who was standing with him in the mirror. Logan's hoodie is in blue, and Nami's hoodie is in pink, he was trick. To think Nami give him a couple hoodie matching with her. Ah. Logan could only shake his head. Naturally, Nami took Logan's arm, leaned her cheek on Logan's shoulder, made a V with the other hand, and muttered, it's a good match. Then she looked at Logan in the mirror and blinked. Let's wear like this next time we go shopping is it okay? Okay. He really lost to Nami. What else can Logan say? Okay, whatever you say, okay. Shrugging, Logan said yes. But having said that, it feels like someone is thinking about everything, which is very, very good. Okay. Then it's settled. No Baxi. After speaking, Nami happily ran away. On the other hand, Zoro didn't go to rest after the banquet. His time limit for entering mangas today hasn't run out yet. Open Zaraki can pick a biography, spiritually going with the manga, and Zoro entered it. Rukonga, Zaraki District. Zoro appeared here. To be precise, Zoro appears as a soul in the Shinigami world. 
As a fresh soul who just appeared here, the other soul smelled Zoro immediately. Another rookie. There are several souls around who are sharing the only water left in a container, and they suddenly notice that Zoro is coming, so they naturally think that he is here to grab the water. The whole Rukonga, divided in 320 district. Divided into four directions, east, west, north, south, each direction has 80 districts. The larger the serial number, the more shortage of spiritual particles in the atmosphere and drinking water. A more pastoral area is District 80, an almost deserted area. Here, all kinds of crazy fights happen every day, just for the very limited water. The so-called drinking water can be understood as the water resources needed by souls. Snatch water. Hearing this, Zoro looked towards the soul. Seeing the container they were pulling, Zoro felt a nausea at the moment. Even if you give me this stuff, I won't drink it. He thought so in his heart, but Zoro said coldly, That's right, I'm here to grab your water. Then you are really looking for death. Brothers, kill him first. A leading soul howled, and several surrounding soul rushed up together. Zoro unhurriedly drew three swords. He didn't make sure to kill the two souls who rushed over first, but let them form an encirclement circle. These souls look like guys who often hunt and kill other soul, and they are very smart in cooperation. After surrounding Zoro, they did not rush to attack, but circled around Zoro. Ding ding ding. When Zoro turned his body passively, the ear rings on his ears made a tinkling sound. Ha ha. What an idiot. To wear such loud ear rings, it seems that he was also a rich man in his lifetime. When I first came here, I wanted to grab food and water from the other but I got beat up instead. Don't be careless, there used to be a ruthless guy in our area. That guy braided bells in his hair, and his style is a bit similar to that kid. I just learned from him. The surrounding souls swarmed up and cooperated skillfully. Swish. 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 Zoro withstood the attacks of several soul with three swords. These soul are not weak either, although the weapons in their hands are various, they are accurate and ruthless. Although the strength is not bad, but here. Everything is a new beginning. Battle experience plus 1000. Haki prototype experience value plus 1000. Zanpakut prototype experience value plus 1000. Battle experience plus 1000. Haki prototype experience value plus 1000. Zanpakut prototype experience value plus 1000. As Zoro continued to fight, above his head, an invisible hint popped up for a mile. Puff. Zoro pierced the stomach of one of the soul with a sword, and the moment he pulled it out, the soul rolled out. But another soul seized the opportunity and cut off Zoro's head with a single sword. Well. Waking up suddenly, Zoro looked at the manga in his hand and touched his neck subconsciously. That cool feeling, even after withdrawing from the manga world, is still so clear and terrifying. Death is really not something to be happy. Taking a few deep breaths, Zoro entered the manga again. This time, the result was the same as before, only killing one soul before being killed. The difference is that this time someone poked his heart from behind. The sound of the ear rings really greatly increases the difficulty of the battle. The two deaths just now, this bell ear ring can be said to be indispensable. That man can do it, and so can I, Zoro. Without further ado, Zoro entered the world of manga again. While Zoro was fighting in Rukonga, another person also entered the Shinigami world. Usopp. But unlike Zoro, Usopp entered not Rukonga, but Siridei. Even though, the two people entered the Shinigami world it is not at the same world. The soul society that Usopp entered was 2000 years earlier than the soul society that Zoro entered. At this moment, in a certain forge in Siridei. A trendy man with curly black punk hair holds a prototype blade in one hand and a small hammer in the other. There is no doubt that this person is the protagonist of the manga that Usopp has taken. Holding the prototype of the blade with the pliers in the left hand, and gently tap the blade with a small hammer in the right hand. Ding 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 ding. The sound was very crisp, but the small hammer did not land on the prototype of the blade, but on the forging platform. Next moment. A sledgehammer hit the prototype of the blade heavily. The moment the sledgehammer head left, the two small hammers fell down again in an instant. Ding 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 ding. The sound is still crisp. When? Brutal sledgehammer strikes again. Ding 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 ding. The hammer is as light as running water. The sledgehammer and the small hammer have different divisions of labor, but they are both essential. 
This is a way that only hammer artists can understand. I don't know how long it took to strike, but both the sledgehammer and the small hammer stopped. It should work this time. Usopp put down the sledgehammer in his hand, wiped his sweat, with a look of expectation on his face. That's right. The one who has been wielding the sledgehammer just now is none other than Usopp who has entered the manga world. After he finished reading the whole manga, he had the idea of becoming Ertsu Nimeya's friend. He have been here more than a hundred times, and finally yesterday, relying on the accumulated failure experience of more than a hundred times, Usopp finally connected with Ertsu Nimeya and successfully deepened the relationship with him. But today, Usopp went to the next level and finally got the approval of Ertsu Nimeya and became his forging partner. Yet, yeah. Those guys' weapons are very unique, but in my opinion, those weapons have no soul. Ertsu Nimeya clamped the forged prototype of the blade and put it into the rich spiritual power pool. Tsitsizi. Accompanied by the rising of strong spiritual exhaust gas, the prototype of this blade began to be tempered. I'm really looking forward to it. You've put so much effort into it. This experimental product will definitely not disappoint you. Usopp rubbed his hands together, staring intently at the refining pool. As a master of the same craft, Usopp's talent is no worse than Nimeya's. You know, in the world of pirates, Usopp can make magical objects like weather sticks with his own pair of skillful hands. If he is given a wider stage, even the god of craftsmen will have to worry about losing his status. It's not my painstaking effort alone, but also yours. Picking up his black punk curly hair with a small wooden stick, Ertsu Nimeya patted Usopp on the shoulder and said with a smile. He is a man of great character. Usually, people with personality are very serious. What's yours is yours. You also contributed, then I can't take your share of the effort. Ever since he recognized Usopp's talent in craftsmanship, Ertsu Nimeya has completely regarded Usopp as a partner. If you say that, then I'm not going to reject it. To tell you the truth, I used Tinker a lot. Usopp smiled, and was about to start bragging, when suddenly he looked at the tempering pool and exclaimed, What? Something happening. Sometimes, when it you work together a lot, you can produce telepathy between each other. Ertsu Nimeya was in this state right now, he couldn't wait to take out the tempered blade. The blade is as smooth as a mirror, as if it has been leveled. But, it feels like this is no ordinary sword. Putting the blade close to the ear, Ertsu Nimeya listened. After a while, his eyes lit up, and he put the blade close to Usopp's ear, Did you hear that? I hear it. Usopp's eyes were also shining, and he said in surprise, that's the resonance from the soul. Haha. <laughs> yes. It really is true. I heard it, and you heard it too. This time it really succeeded. Ertsu Nimeya hugged Usopp excitedly, his whole body couldn't hide his excitement. Yet. This is a groundbreaking event for the entire Soul Society. I have a hunch that it won't be long before the entire Siridi Eyes Shinigami will use you to forge sword. Usopp praised the blacksmith. Hearing this, Ertsu Nimeya took a deep breath, his heart was surging. All Shinigami use my forged sword. That amazing, just thinking about it makes me dream. He grabbed Usopp's hand, took another deep breath, and said with emotion, Usopp. I also have a premonition. After a thousand years, your name and mine will surely resound throughout the soul. Hey? I'm also included. He was surprised for a while but Usopp was very excited, okay. Let us become the legend of the Soul Society. By the way, what are you going to name this weapon? Ertsu Nimeya held the blade in his hand, pondered for a moment, and said, this is a weapon with a soul, and it uses a sword as its original form. Then, its name is it's called Zanpakut. Good name. Usopp say as he praised the name. Afterwards, he also pretended to think for a while, and said, this kind of Zanpaka that hasn't found its owner yet, let's call it a sealed state, what do you think? Sealed state. Ertsu Nimeya savored it carefully, and then the light in his eyes gradually brightened, okay. It's the sealed state. This is the first Zanpaka. As a souvenir, I want to collect it. Next, the second Zanpaka that we forge, will be forged for you. Ertsu Nimeya is a real person, and he will not forget Usopp's contribution. The first one is collected by himself, then the second one must be collected by Usopp. That's what a partner is. Usopp agreed, good. However, I hope that the forged weapon is not based on a sword, but a slingshot. Slingshot. 
Ertsunameya showed a surprised look, but then smiled, okay. As you wish. Chapter 76 Time flies. Going Mary was approaching Reverse Mountain. During the voyage these days, Logan's system mail has increased by five more. Your manga fan Monkey D. Luffy's strength in the world of the manga Akame G.A. Kill has been improved, and Armament Haki has been promoted to the middle level. You gain its Armament Haki ability simultaneously. You get points plus two. Your manga fan Nami has conquered the little card in the manga card captor Sakura world. You simultaneously gain the Clow card ability. You get points plus one. Your fan Sanji train the first gate of eight inner gates in the world of the manga Might Guy biography successfully opened the first gate. You will gain the ability to open the first gate. You earn points plus one. Your manga fan Usopp has created his own Zanpakuto weapon in the world of the manga Bleach, Ertsunameya Sealed State Slingshot. You simultaneously gain the Sealed State Slingshot. Get points plus three. Your manga fan Rorano Azoro has improved his world strength in the manga Zaraki Kenpeki biography, and Armament Haki has been promoted to the primary level. You gain its Armament Haki ability simultaneously. You get points plus one. To Logan's satisfaction. Sanji and Usopp, finally opened their manga. Especially Usopp, which contributed three points right after its opening, is really a bit of a come from behind. In addition, there is an email reminder. You have synced Armament Haki from Monkey D. Luffy and Rorano Azoro at the same time, so your Armament Haki ability is the sum of their Armament Haki abilities. This is very good news for Logan. He stretched out his palm, and a relatively thick black air flow circled back and forth on his arm, attaching to it. Logan punched forward. The feeling of power arises spontaneously. Not bad. Sanji will also cultivate the armament haki in the future. The three of them work together, and my armament haki should soon reach the advanced armament haki. This kind of system where similar abilities can be superimposed is very comfortable. Everyone come here. It seems to be here. At this time, Usopp's voice came from the microphone. The so-called microphone is a simple and effective sound transmission method on the ship, which is transmitted to every area on the ship through metal pipes. Although it is not as clean as phone snail, it is more convenient and faster. Soon, a group of straw hat pirates came to the deck. Look ahead. Usopp was on deck early today. He can be said to be the most fearful guy in the whole team, so when he learned that he could reach Reverse Mountain today, he didn't even think about entering the manga world, and just stayed on the deck. Clack clack. Huge raindrops were like machine gun bullets, slamming on the deck surface, making a dense sound. The strong wind swept the waves, shaking the direction of going merry from time to time. Sure enough, just as the legend says, continue to sail forward, we will see a mountain, there, is the entrance of the Grand Line. Wrapped in a baggy raincoat, Nami looked forward. Although the heavy rain greatly hinders the line of sight, for an excellent navigator, discerning the direction is one of the most basic abilities. What? The entrance to the Grand Line is a mountain. Usopp only knew they were approaching a mountain, but didn't know that the mountain was the entrance. Hearing Nami say this at this moment, his eyes widened in disbelief. Come in. Nami turned back into the cabin and came to the conference room. The rest of the Straw Hat Pirates also followed. Look. It's hard for me to believe this kind of thing, but here. Nami's finger pointed to a certain place on the map, and it was indeed pointed on Reverse Mountain. Are you kidding? Are we going to crash into a mountain? Usopp is not well. Who said we were going to hit the mountain? Logan came over, he pointed to the side of Nami's finger, and said, Although I don't know much about navigation, isn't there a canal here? No, why do we have to go in from the entrance? Can't we go around from the south? Zoro looked at the map, where their ship is now, it is obvious that they can enter the Grand Line as long as they drive south. Why does it have to be so hard to go up the mountain? Because. Afterwards, Nami would like to introduce the so-called Com Belt to everyone, so that everyone can understand why everyone has to climb the mountain to enter the Grand Line. In the original plot, Going Mary arrived here and was blown to Com Belt by the wind and waves which almost caused the destruction of the Straw Hat Pirates. But now Going Merry is many times larger than before, and its ability to withstand wind and waves is also stronger. In addition, Logan is a cautious person, and he has already told Usopp to control the ship. Others may be careless, but Usopp is not. Because he is most afraid of death. Soon, a dark shadow appeared before Going Merry's eyes. 
near the front of the mountain, because of the shelter of the mountain, the storm was already very small, and the members of the Straw Hat Pirates also came to the deck. This is a major historic moment for the entire team, and no one wants to miss it. Everyone wants to witness it. Are we really going to climb a mountain? I've never heard of a ship climbing a mountain Zoro drooped his eyelids, still unwilling to believe such outrageous things. But Sanji said, I've heard of it. And I've heard that half of the people who want to enter the Grand Line will die at the entrance before entering. I saw it. What an incredible mountain. Luffy pointed forward excitedly. Usopp's eyes were full of horror, hey, hey. That's the Red Line, right? It's soaring up into the clouds, you can't see the edge at a glance. Don't be careless. The ship is being carried up the mountain by the ocean current. If we are not careful, we will be smashed to pieces. As the navigator spoke, the Straw Hat Pirates immediately got busy. Usopp and Sanji ran to take the helm. Luffy and Logan stood on one side of the deck. As for Zoro, in this kind of matter, it is safer for him to rest. Asterisk. Not good. Going to deviate. Control the rudder quickly. Usopp and Sanji's five senses were flying, hysterically trying to control the rudder with all their strength. In front is the entrance of the canal. Near. Closer. Luffy, do as I say. Logan yelled. Good. Luffy responded. Then, the two used the ability of rubber fruit at the same time, extending their arms to both sides respectively, and using the tall frames on both sides of the canal to achieve the effect of adjusting the course. Wow. This method is so good. No danger. Watching going Mary rush down the canal to the hillside in an orderly manner, Luffy grinned happily. Whoosh. With the strength of the ocean current, going Mary rushed to the highest point. Wow. It's the grand line. Luffy sat in his special seat, holding the sheep's head with one hand, and building a pergola in front of the head with the other hand, looking into the distance. Guys. It's time to shout out your dreams. Logan stepped on the fence in front of the deck and raised his arms high. At this time, going Mary rises into the sky, people are in the clouds. Hearing Logan's yell, everyone was excited. Wahaha. I'm the man who is going to be the Pirate King. I must become the world's number one swordsman. I want to find the ultimate dream of a chef, the All Blue. I want to be a brave sea fighter. I want to draw a nautical chart of the whole world. Everyone shouted out their dreams one by one with enthusiasm. Then, they looked at Logan in unison, Logan, what about you? Logan originally just wanted to make it to the finale. But now, it seems that there is no need to fight. But if there is any dream, it is too far-fetched. To overthrow the world government? Collect all the beauties? Sorry. Logan really didn't think that far. But at this moment, Logan suddenly has a very strong desire. He looked into the distance and said boldly, I want to draw our adventure into a manga. It will last forever. Great. The crowd cheered. Come on. Going Mary rides the wind and waves, and rushes down the great direction along the second half of the canal. Hey, hello. What's that sound? Did you hear any strange noises? Suddenly, Zoro asked very cautiously. Never mind him. Go. Luffy was still excited left fist forward, making a superhuman movement. Nami explained it carefully, maybe it's the sound of the wind, because there are many special terrains here that make the sound of the wind very strange. Some even sound like a child crying. Ooh. What is that? Usopp is on the watchtower, standing high can see far. Sanji did not know when he came here, he also shouted, beautiful Nami-chan, there is a tall mountain ahead. Mountain? Nami was surprised and said, impossible after passing reverse mountain, there should be an endless sea. At this time, going Mary broke through the clouds and mist, and the sight ahead was unobstructed. Ah! That's not a mountain. It's a whale. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates suddenly exclaimed. What to do? Hit it. Usopp was extremely anxious. If it hits it, it's no different from hitting a mountain. Sanji was furious, idiot, we hit it like a mayfly shaking a big tree. How do we fight? But if you go on like this, you will collide. You can go around from the left, and pull the rudder to the left quickly. Zoro was also sweating profusely and shouted anxiously. I suddenly thought of a good idea. At this time, Luffy's eyes lit up, and he ran directly to the cabin. Luffy, 
what are you doing? Seeing Luffy rushing to the cabin, everyone had a bad feeling. What else can I do? He must have gone to fire the cannon. Logan revealed Luffy's intentions. What? Zoro, Sanji and Usopp opened their mouths so wide that their jaws were hanging on the floor. To fire a cannon at a time like this, aren't you out of your mind? In front of such a huge whale, even if our main gun is in front of it, it is just like a small sausage. People don't even feel it. Go and stop him. Sanji immediately jumped down and was about to chase Luffy. But he didn't take two steps before he was pulled by Logan's outstretched arm. Don't worry about him, it's fine. Logan said. Hey hey hey. That idiot is going to bombard the whale with a cannon. He's going to piss the whale off. Usopp also rushed down. He felt that Logan might not realize the seriousness of the problem, so he quickly reminded him. Zoro also came over, and he said in cold sweat, that's a whale. Why are you so calm? As soon as he finished speaking, he looked at Nami again, no, why is Nami so calm? Because Logan and I have a perfect plan. While speaking, Nami's hand involuntarily took Logan's arm. ER. Is that so? Usopp's tension eased instantly. If only one person said this, he might not believe it. But both said that it was fine, which is indeed largely reassuring. Since the beautiful Nami-chan said so, even if I were to be killed by a whale, I would die without regret. Sanji clasped his hands together, with red hearts in his eyes. Zoro gave him a disdainful look, and complained, You bastard, why don't you have any eyesight? Didn't see what happened with Nami and Logan? He still looks like he is simping, it is really hopeless. Going Mary goes all the way, faster and faster. The gigantic whale is approaching. Closer. Going to crash. Usopp shouted anxiously. At this moment, Going Mary's main gun burst into flames, and a shell blasted out blatantly. Hey! That idiot! Sanji, Usopp, and Zoro shouted urgently. Seeing that the shell and the ship were about to hit the whale, the three of them blocked their eyes at the same time. Prepare to take a hard hit. However, after a few seconds, hey! Usopp carefully lowered his shielding arm and looked around. The sea was calm. Ahead is the endless sea. Behind is the towering red line. Hey! Where's the whale? Sanji looked around in confusion. Zoro was also shocked, yes. Why did it disappear suddenly? Where did that whale go? Hee hee, it's here. Nami stretched out her palm, and saw a miniature whale writhing in her palm. Chapter 77 Fire In the cabin of Going Merry, Luffy held the main gun controller in his hand, and when he was about to hit Laboon, he pressed hard. It has to be said that Luffy is always smart when it matters. If Going Merry had crashed directly into the whale, it would have ended in a shipwreck. However, the instantaneous recoil force generated by firing the main gun can greatly offset the potential energy of the forward rush, thus keeping Going Merry from crashing to the whale. But the moment the cannonball was fired, Luffy was stunned. Hey? What about the whales? The huge whale just disappeared. The shell that was supposed to hit the whale also directly passed the position of the whale and flew to the distant sea. Boom. The shells fell. What? Underscore underscore. A small ship was blown up, and two people fell into the sea. The man wore a crown and a green suit, dressed like a frog prince. The woman has a soaring single ponytail, blue hair, and an evening dress, and she looks very beautiful. The two are from Baroque Works, both are codenamed agents, Miss Wednesday and Mr. Nine. Damn! Where did the shells come from? The frog prince popped his head out of the sea, and he was in a daze. He had clearly seen the prey on this trip, but his eyes blurred, as if the prey had disappeared, and then he saw a shell coming straight towards them. Poof! Next to him, Miss Wednesday with blue soaring ponytails also floated up, she wiped the sea water from her face, and she was also dazed. Whale, where's the whale? Looking in the direction of Reverse Mountain, Miss Wednesday asked in horror. The corner of the frog prince's mouth twitched, You ask me, who should I ask? After thinking for a moment, frog prince Mr. Nine suddenly showed a look of shock on his face, No. Our plan must have been known. Miss frowned on Wednesday, Impossible. We received the mission directly from the base camp. No, no, no. Think about it carefully. Our goal is to hunt whales. We came from such a distance. We have seen whales a long time ago, 
but we waited for when we got to the whale, and the whale suddenly disappeared. This is absolutely not normal. The frog prince carried a piece of driftwood from the hull and analyzed it carefully. What you said, seems to make sense. Miss Wednesday narrowed her eyes and nodded, it seems that someone is deliberately trying to target us. It seems that this operation has to be suspended. After thinking about it, Miss Wednesday made a decision, and then he looked at the position of the whale just now, and immediately saw a huge pirate ship. Remember that pirate ship, go back and report to the boss. That's right. Maybe relying on this information, the ranking of the two of us can go up a little bit. Thinking of this, the frog prince also came alive. Afterwards, the two paddled the hull fragments and swam back. Hey hey hey! Where's the whale? On the deck of Going Merry, Luffy rushed out from the cabin and asked with a confused face. Isn't there? Zoro pointed to Nami's palm and said. Luffy looked over, only to find a miniature whale in Nami's palm. Ah! Nanny! Luffy's mouth fell open all of a sudden. Nami took her hand back with a whoosh, hey! This is not edible. The reason why the whale laboon is so small is because Nami used the little card from Klaus' deck when going Mary was about to hit the whale laboon. Whale laboon instantly became as small as Nami wanted. I don't want to eat it Luffy scratched his head aggrievedly, then took a puddle of water from the bucket next to him, and poured it on the whale laboon. In this way, a puddle of water appeared in Nami's palm, and the miniature whale swam in it. At this moment, a door suddenly opened on the body of the whale laboon, and a ship rushed out from it. Only. The ship is also super mini because of the little clow card. And it's even smaller than Laboon. FK. There was an old man on board, and the old man let out a shock as soon as he came out. He looked up at the heads of several giants in the sky, and his whole body was numb. What happened? Why are there so many giants? Wrong. This is not called a giant anymore, this is called a giant among giants. He has also been in contact with giants before but no matter how big a giant is, it cannot compare to Laboon's. Most giant are about the same size as Laboon. But now what about these young giants, who hold Laboon in just one hand? And he, he was like a little ant in front of Laboon, now in the eyes of these giants, whether they can see him is still unknown. As soon as he thought of this, the old man suddenly saw something terrifying. He took a closer look and saw the lighthouse at Twin Cape. No way, how could the lighthouse... Seeing the huge lighthouse, the old man was shocked. After carefully observing the surrounding situation, he finally realized the problem. Instead of meeting a giant, he and Laboon were shrunk. He is also a man who has seen the world, and immediately understood that it was the work of devil fruit power. Hey? There's another person here. As a small card user, Nami can naturally sense an old man appearing beside the whale Laboon. Restore him first. Logan also saw the old man and immediately recognized the old man as the former ship Dr. Crocus on the Pirate King ship. With a thought, Nami cancelled the small card ability on Crocus. Who? Crocus heaved a sigh of relief as he returned to his normal size. In the state just now, if someone wants to kill him, he only needs to pinch it lightly, and he will explode. Old man, who are you? Why did you come out of the whale's belly? Luffy asked curiously. Crocus pushed his glasses, and said in a deep voice, when asking someone, it's polite to introduce yourself first, isn't it? That's right, I'm sorry. I am. Luffy scratched his head, smiled apologetically, and was about to introduce himself, but was interrupted by Crocus again. My name is Crocus, and I am the guardian of the Twin Cape Lighthouse. I am 71 years old, and my blood type is Ub. Crocus reported his family name in a leisurely manner. Luffy's eyes are twitching. You wanted me to introduce myself first then you go cut me and introduce yourself first. I really want to beat you, you old man. Crocus, this name should be the name of the ship's doctor on the former Pirate King Roger ship. According to your age, you are also suitable. From this point of view, you are the ship's doctor of Roger Pirate Group. Logan pretended to say it by analysis. His words made Crocus a little surprised, oh? You look so young, but you have heard of my name? It's so rare. Logan was noncommittal, our captain is going to become the Pirate King. Therefore, I naturally want to inquire about some relevant information about the former Pirate King. Ah uh, hello. You admit it. You Usopp reacted suddenly, he looked at Crocus in shock, you are actually the ship doctor of the Pirate King. Logan smiled, 
don't be so surprised, he is not the first person on the Pirate King ship we have seen. What? Have we seen other people on the Pirate King ship? This time, even Luffy opened his mouth wide in surprise. Yeah. That's the red-nosed buggy. Is it unexpected? Surprised or not? Sure enough, just as Logan expected, the friends were all shocked. No way. That funny guy actually belonged to Roger Pirates. Recalling the appearance of Buggy, Zoro said it was hard to believe. Luffy thought for a while, that Red Nose? I didn't expect him to have such an identity. Nami frowned slightly, his strength is so weak, is he really on the Pirate King ship? Hee <laughs> hee, that brat. He used to be a trainee crew member on Roger's ship. But his strength is really not that good. I didn't expect to be met by you. While speaking, Crocus seemed to recall the years at that time, and the brown old man couldn't help but sigh. Logan nodded, yes. Not only did we meet him, but we also exchanged him for a bounty. Puff. Crocus almost choked to death. Ahem, well, it looks like that kid has done a lot of bad things. With a sigh of relief, Crocus also felt helpless. After Roger's death, the Roger pirates will naturally disband. Everyone's ideas are different, and the natural ending is also different. Old man. Since you are the ship's doctor, then you can join my crew. At this time, Luffy's crazy will to recruit people into the group is activated. Ah? Forget it. I'm already my in my old age, and even if the wind and waves are a little bit stronger, I will struggle. Crocus refused without hesitation. Later, he thought of something, and said, if you need a ship's doctor, you may pass a place called Drum Island during the journey ahead. Doctor skill is very good there, and you can find a ship's doctor there. Old man, even you said that. It seems that Logan is right, there really is Magnetic Drum Island. Usopp was delighted to hear Crocus mention Drum Island. If Magnetic Drum Island exists and medicine is developed, then Kaya's disease will be solved. Also thinking about Kaya is Nami, and Nami said happily, it's great. When we arrive at Drum Island, we can cure Kaya's disease. Magnetic Drum Island. Okay. I've decided, we'll look for a ship doctor partner there. After serious consideration, Luffy raised his hands and made a decision. Then, he looked at everyone, it's not too late, let's go. Wait a moment. Upon hearing this, Crocus quickly stopped them and said, what are you going to do with Laboon? Laboon? What? Luffy tilted his head, and three question marks emerged. Crocus pointed to Nami's palm, that's the whale. It wanted to eat us just now, but we will eat it first. As Luffy said, his mouth was drooling greedily. No. Crocus his complexion changed. Laboon is not going to eat you, but... As he spoke, Crocus slowly told the Straw Hat Pirates about Laboon. Laboon was originally an island whale that lived in West Blue. When it was very young, it became friend with the Rumber Pirates, and regarded the Rumber Pirates as its crew, and followed the Rumber Pirates to Cape Twins. But the Rumber Pirates couldn't take it into the Grand Line, so they let it wait here. As a result, the Rumber Pirates are gone forever, but Laboon has waited here for 50 years, still believing that its crewmate will come back to find it. It thinks that its crewmate are on the other side of the Red Line, and as long as it passes by, it can pick up its crewmates. So it often bumps its head against the mountain, trying to break a path. So that's how it is, story is so touching. Nami's eyes sparkled. Sanji sat on the ground, smoking a cigarette, and angrily scolded in a world-weary tone, those people threw it away, it's disgusting. They couldn't even keep their promises for their own lives. Usopp is also full of grief and anger, they threw this whale away? It still believes them. It has been waiting here for 50 years. Damn it. Who? Nami took a deep breath to keep herself from crying out, she looked at Crocus, since you know those people can't come back, why don't you tell it? Can it understand human language? Crocus shook his head, I told it without any concealment, but it didn't listen. It firmly believes that its companions will come to it. Its belief is right. At this time, Logan suddenly spoke. What? Crocus looked puzzled. How is that possible? Sanji retorted immediately. Usopp also firmly did not believe it, hey, hey. They have been away for fifty years, why do you still believe it? Yeah, it's been so long Zoro also nodded. Logan did not respond to such questioning, but looked at everyone, 
and asked calmly, if one day, we need to separate for some reason, I said that I will definitely come back to find you, do you believe it? I believe. Nami made a statement immediately. Zoro said in a deep voice, we are partners, of course we trust you unconditionally. It's your word, I'll definitely believe it. Sanji also said. Usopp also nodded, the partner's words are worthy of trust. Trust 100%. Yay. After Luffy finished speaking. Yes, that's it. Logan was very moved, and then he looked at Nami's hand that was gently holding Nami, poured Laboon into his palm, stroked it gently, and said with a smile. Rumber pirates, they are also Laboon's partners. Chapter 78 They are Laboon's crewmates. When Logan shouted these words, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates was shocked. Yes. They can trust their crew, why can't Laboon trust its crew? They are sure that are worthy of their crew's trust, but why should they deny other people's crew? Everyone's face is obviously ashamed. Needless to say, my friends. The crew who can keep Laboon here for 50 years and still believe in it, they will never break their promises to Laboon. Logan looked serious, this is his speech from the bottom of his heart. He looked at the crews of the Straw Hat Pirates and continued, Guys, I have an idea. Take Laboon. Before Logan could fully express his thoughts, Luffy directly raised his hands and shouted. Good guy. You are indeed the captain. Logan looked at Luffy and nodded solemnly, Well said, Luffy. That's what I think. Since Laboon wants to go find the crew in the, the Grand Line, and we happen to be going to the Grand Line. Then we will take Laboon and find his crew. Take Laboon with us. Nami's eyes lit up, and he said excitedly, Great. Laboon's dream is to reunite with his friends. If he can also go to the Grand Line, it will be one step closer to his dream. That's right. We have our dreams, and Laboon has its dreams too. There are already so many dreams on this ship, and there is no problem with having one more dream. Take Laboon. Under the leadership of Logan and Luffy, the crews of the Straw Hat Pirates were resonated and determined to bring Laboon. Hey hey hey. I don't mean to discourage you. But... It's been 50 years, those guys. At this time, Crocus came to pour cold water. He didn't say all the words, but the rest of the words are self-evident. How long can a person live? 50 years have passed, and with the original age of those people, the answer can be guessed without even thinking about it. What you said is not unreasonable. But, even if it is really what you think, those people will definitely leave traces on the Grand Line. Maybe they can be found Logan said while looking at the Laboon in his hand. Laboon can understand people's words, and at this moment, he is shaking happily, as if expressing his willingness to Logan. Looks like Laboon really wants to go. Crocus also noticed Laboon's actions and felt slightly emotional. He rubbed the corners of his eyes, as if the warmth passed by again. It's great, to have you group of young people carrying Laboon's dream forward together, maybe it's really better than me giving it a tranquilizer here every day. For so many years, in order not to let Laboon hit the mountain to torture himself, almost all of his hard-earned savings were used to buy tranquilizers. Now, if Laboon can follow this group of people to the Grand Line, then Laboon will be free. Isn't he, Crocus, relieved? Good. 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 I hope you can find the traces of the Rumber Pirates and realize Laboon's dream. Even if you don't find it, at least, Laboon will work hard for his own dream. Having said that, Crocus bowed deeply to everyone, thank you. Old man, I also want to thank you for taking care of Laboon for so many years. With that said, Logan handed a money bag to Crocus's hands, all the money you spent on Laboon over the years, let us repay you. Ah. You are underestimating me opening the corner of the purse and seeing Belly inside, Crocus suddenly showed dissatisfaction. Logan laughed, haha. Don't dare to underestimate it. We treat you to a drink. That's about the same. Crocus stopped being hypocritical and accepted it decisively. After all, he is really cash-strapped now. Then, bye, old man. While speaking, Logan used the ability of the small card to change Crocus's ship back. His claw cards are of the same origin as Nami's claw cards, so Nami's abilities are common to his. Good. I wish you all the best of luck. Crocus jumped aboard his ship and waved to the crowd on the deck of Going Merry. Suddenly, he remembered something, so he shouted, Hey! Young people, my old man has introduced himself, but you haven't introduced your name yet. 
Say it. I'm Luffy. Monkey D. Luffy. I'm the man who's going to be the Pirate King. Crocus almost spewed out. What the hell? This boy. Logan followed closely, me. Logan. The mangaka on the future Pirate King ship. Crocus rolled his eyes. This is to believe that the captain of the ship will definitely be able to become the Pirate King? Sure enough, newborn calves are not afraid of tigers. Even at the beginning, we never thought that Roger could become the Pirate King. I. Nami. The navigator on the future Pirate King ship. I. Zoro. The great swordsman on the future Pirate King ship. Me. Sanji. The chef of the future Pirate King ship. Me. Usopp. The sniper on the future Pirate King ship. I don't know if it's intentional or not, anyway, the other crews followed Logan's template to introduce. Good. 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 Then the future Pirate King team, I wish you good luck. Crocus looked at Going Mary who was gradually moving away from Twin Cape, and saw off with a smile. Look like I'm free now. What he said seemed to be relief, but his tone was full of a sense of loss. Lie in the sun by the lighthouse at Twin Cape. Not long after, a messenger seagull flew over. A newspaper. With belly given by Logan, Crocus is now rich again. Open the newspaper, and the headline on the front page is about East Blue. Bounty. Monkey D. Luffy. From East Blue. Belong to the Straw Hat Pirates, and holds the position of captain. Powerful, the reward of 100 million belly. Logan. From East Blue. Affiliated to the Straw Hat Pirates, the position is the deputy captain, and a mangaka. With powerful strength and superb IQ, the reward is 90 million belly. Nami. From East Blue. Belongs to the Straw Hat Pirates and is a navigator. Strong, suspected Logia Thunderfruit user, the first reward of 60 million belly is offered. Hiss. Surprised, Crocus quickly sat up, straightened his glasses, and looked again carefully. That's right. This name, they are right. After reconfirming that it is the Straw Hat Pirates, Crocus took a deep breath from the bottom of his heart. At first glance, these rewards do not seem to be much for him. After all, he has been to Raftal, and in his eyes, big pirates with over 100 of million can be seen everywhere like wild flowers on the roadside. But the problem is. This is East Blue. A sea of the weakest that even offers a reward of more than 30 million belong to the rarest ones. A group of teams with such a high reward appeared unexpectedly. How can this not shock Crocus? You know, Roger's first time is only 30 million belly. Even for monsters like Charlotte Linlin, the first reward was only 60 million belly. Kaido was 19 years old when he offered a reward for the first time, which was 70 million belly. The combined first rewards of these three people are not as much as the combined first rewards of the three members of the little pirate group from East Blue. Outrageous. The guy who came out of East Blue and offered a reward of 30 million belly for the first time has already become Pirate King, so these guys. Roger, it seems that what you expected is happening. Chapter 79 Going Mary sailed away from Twin Cape. Nami made a basin on the ship, put sea water in it, and this is the temporary residence of Laboon. On the next island, Nami is going to buy an exquisite fish tank for Laboon. Of course, during normal sailing, they don't have to go through such troubles, just let Laboon swim in the sea. Wow! The monstrous waves set off, and Laboon's big head emerged from the sea water. Hey! Come back soon, Laboon! There's going to be a storm on deck, Nami waves to Laboon. It immediately swam to the side of Going Mary. With a light wave of Nami's small magic wand, the small card ability is activated. Nami put Laboon in the basin and kicked back to the cabin. It's bad. Nami big sister, come out and have a look. The ship's course seems to be wrong. Standing on the watchtower, Usopp felt more and more that something was wrong. Nami settled Laboon and came to the watchtower. What's the matter? It was fine a minute ago, why did the course turn back all of a sudden? Just came up, Nami's complexion is not good. She immediately took out the compass, and then her face became even worse. Ah! The compass is totally out of order. Not good. Tell everyone to come and discuss. Seeing the compass needle in his hand spinning rapidly, Nami realized that there was a big problem. This situation is clearly beyond her nautical knowledge. Soon, everyone from the Straw Hat Pirates came to the meeting room. Well, the situation is like this now. 
Nami clarified the situation and put the confusing compass in the middle of the table. It seems that the situation is really not good. Although Zoro doesn't know how to sail, but just looking at the rapidly rotating pointer, he understands that things are not easy. Does the pointer point at random, in this case, wouldn't our adventure be more exciting? Luffy showed a big smile, very excited. Duan. Nami punched Luffy into a daze. She was furious, stupid. We are not going to take risks. Nami-chan is right, you idiot. Sanji also took the opportunity to go up to mend his feet. So, no one knows what's going on now. Looking at everyone's situation, Usopp suddenly collapsed, his face was full of sadness, it's over, we're over. Logan also frowned. He frowned not because he knew what the situation was, but because he ignored this matter and forget about it. Boom boom boom. Logan knocked on the table, and everyone looked over immediately. I have read some information about the Grand Line before, if I remember correctly. Here, because the magnetic field of each island is very weird, the compass cannot be used here at all. Logan said. What? It is said that Nami, who is a navigator, is the first to understand the serious consequences of this kind of thing. Then, she wondered again, but how do those ships that enter the Grand Line move forward? Logan replied, it relies on something called a log post to replace the role of the compass. Then this is not good, we don't have that kind of thing in our hands. Hearing this, Nami also showed a look of despair on his face. After all, in the middle of the sea, the little pirate ship is really helpless. Logan explained, at least you have to reach the first island of the Grand Line before you can buy a log pose. In fact, Crocus has it, but Logan didn't think of asking it at the time. Otherwise, Crocus would have been willing to give his log pose to the Straw Hat Pirates. It's over. Then it's really over. Usopp put his head in his hands and leaned it against the window, looking like he was in dire straits. But the next moment, he was slightly taken aback, and looked into the sea through the window, Hey? Why is there someone in the sea? Is there someone in the sea? How could it be possible? It's dangerous to stay on the deck in this horrible weather, let alone in the sea. Ah! There is really someone. Sanji didn't believe it at first, but when he walked to the side, he exclaimed, There is a beauty. What? There are people in the sea who don't say anything, but there are also beautiful women? This bastard doesn't dare to brag like that, does he? Logan walked over, just took a look, and his eyes lit up immediately. The log poses here. Coming to the deck, Logan stretched out his hands and reached into the sea. Wow! A man and a woman were dragged up. Surprisingly, it was Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday who escaped before. Thanks, ah! Underscore. Mr. Nine was about to say thank you, but suddenly saw the pirate flag of the Straw Hat Pirates, and his expression changed drastically. Isn't this the group of pirates who specifically targeted us? Miss Wednesday on the side is also shivering. They don't know if it's because of the cold or because she is still scared. Hmm? Why are you two reacting like this? It seems that they are seeing Ghost. Say, what are you two doing? Nami approaches the two, and Holmes Nami gets on the line. No no no, we're just scared because we almost drowned. Miss Wednesday reacted relatively quickly, and quickly explained. Yet. We just wanted to go fishing, but we encountered a big storm and the ship capsized. Fortunately, we met you. Mr. Nine said superfluously. You're fooling no one. The corner of Nami's mouth twitched slightly, she didn't believe it at all, she pointed to the sea with her finger, you two are fishing in this horrible weather. Really? You see, this plank is a piece of our ship. Mr. Nine raised the board in his hand and explained. Hey? It's true. Luffy looked at the fragments of ship, and nodded. Boom. Nami went up and punched, hey. You are too easy to deceive. Okay, let me tell you. Logan pulled Nami back, and then said, no matter what your reasons are, since I saved you, I will send you to a safe place. Where are you going? Hearing this, Miss Wednesday and Mr. Nine looked at each other. Then Miss said on Wednesday, let's go to the nearest town from here, Whiskey Peak. Whiskey Peak. Sounds like a very interesting place. As soon as he heard the name, Luffy became excited. Miss Wednesday continued, that's right, it is the first island from the entrance of the Grand Line, so the people there respect pirate very much. And any pirates who come from all over the world can enter there, 
they will prepare a wealth of food for them for free. Yes, yes. Everyone there is very nice, and everyone loves pirates so much. Mr. Nine also explained. Hey I'm not lying. Everyone really loves pirates. Especially the bounties offered by pirates. Wow. That is amazing. Luffy was so excited that he couldn't control himself, he held up his hands, I've decided, we'll go there next stop. Hey, hey, hey. Don't think about it, we can't go there by ourselves now. Zoro very appropriately poured cold water on Luffy. Luffy suddenly froze, hey? Right. We have lost our course now, and the compass has also failed. Compass. Hearing this, Miss Wednesday showed a surprised expression, and then suddenly realized, is this your first time in the Grand Line? Yet. Yeah. It is. Logan nodded. That's no wonder. On the Grand Line, the compass is useless. No matter how experienced a navigator is, if he doesn't they vlog pose, he will be blind. Here, the only thing that can be trusted is the log pose. As she spoke, Miss Wednesday took out a crystal ball-like object from her arms, here, this is it. Whizzing. Both arms extended at the same time. Oh, I didn't get it. Luffy scratched his head a little disappointed. Got it. Logan breathed a sigh of relief, and he rolled his eyes at Luffy, fortunately, I reacted quickly, otherwise, our only hope might be ruined by Luffy clumsy hands. Logan clearly remembers that in the original plot, the first log pose obtained by the Straw Hat Pirates was destroyed by Luffy and Sanji's nonsense. If it weren't for Crocus providing a log pose. Then the manga of One Piece should end with the failure of the adventure of the Straw Hat Pirates. Ah. That's my log pose. Only then did Miss Wednesday realize that his log pose had been snatched away. Logan nodded, showing a thankful smile, Oh, you actually gave me such a valuable thing as soon as we met, thank you so much. Nanny? Miss Wednesday was stunned, she bared her teeth and said, Who said I would give it to you? Keep your voice down. Logan saved you, what happened to you giving us a log pose? She stepped forward and grabbed Miss Wednesday's collar, and said angrily in a more fierce tone than Miss Wednesday, If you don't want to give it away, we won't force it. We return the log pose to you now, and leave you intact back into the sea. No please. Then let's do this. I'll return the log pose to you first and after you drown, we'll go get the log pose it also saves food for two people, it's perfect. As he said that, Logan took the log pose and put it on Miss Wednesday. Miss Wednesday look everyone like they are stupid. Is there still such a flamboyant plan? The people on this ship, are all devils. She quickly pushed Logan's hand and shouted, don't. I, I don't want it anymore. Yes, yes. This is a gift from us, please accept it. Mr. Nine followed suit and kowtowed to Logan directly on the ground. Although the log pose is very important to them, but obviously, life is more important. Hey. Since you are so polite, we will not be disrespectful. Shrugging his shoulders, Logan handed the log pose to Nami, keep it safe, and don't let Luffy touch it. Do not worry. Nami will remember. The log pose is put away. With the log pose, although the voyage in the next few days was not smooth, it was generally safe and sound. A few days later, Going Mary approached Whiskey Peak. Logan's system mail has increased by six. Your manga fan Rorano Azoro has improved his world strength in the manga Zaraki Kenpeki biography, Observation Haki has been promoted to the primary level. You get its Observation Haki function simultaneously force. You get points plus one. Your manga fan, Nami, has conquered the suite in the world of the manga card captor Sakura. You get the sweet card at the same time. You get points plus one. Your manga fan Nami conquered the shield card in the world of the manga card captor Sakura. You gain shield card simultaneously. You get points plus one. Your manga fan Usopp has improved his world strength in the manga Bleach, Urtsunimeya and developed the Shikai of Zanpaku Slingshot. You simultaneously gain the ability of Zanpaku Slingshot Shikai. You get points plus three. Your fan Sanji cultivated the second gate of eight inner gates in the world of the manga Might Guy biography, and successfully opened the second gate. You simultaneously gain the second gate ability. You earn points plus two. Your fan Kobe has improved his world power in the manga Demon Slayer, Zenitsu and has learned the Breath of Thunder, the Shape of One, the Flash of Thunder, and six consecutive. You simultaneously get its learn ability. You get points plus one. 
Nami is as good as ever. Others are still doing it step by step. It was Usopp's Shikai that interested Logan. He stood on the deck, communicated with his soul, and a sealed state slingshot in the form of a slingshot appeared in his hand. Chasing freedom, God killing star. Logan felt a little embarrassed when he yelled such Shikai. Fortunately, no one was around, so he took advantage of it to see what Usopp's gadgets were. He saw that the original slingshot suddenly became bigger. It becomes a shape of a bow, about 1.2 meters in length, just right to hold, very handy. God Killing Star, this name is very suitable for Usopp it is Zanpakut after all, and if it can connect with your soul, it must also be affected by Usopp. Logan looked at the whiskey peak in the distance. Um? Seems like his vision has become clearer. He subconsciously released the God Killing Star, and then looked into the distance. Vision is back to normal. Afterwards, the God Killing Star reappeared in the hand. Sight became clear again. Although we are now close to Whiskey Peak, there is a saying that when you see the mountain, you run into a shipwreck. It looks close, but it's actually far away. But Logan is holding the God Killing Star in his hand at this time, but he can clearly see everything on the Whiskey Peak that are shaped like prickly pears. The thorns on the surface of the prickly pear are like cross tombstones one by one. It's interesting. Logan opened the bow, and suddenly felt a wave of power from the soul trembling in his hands. Because this Zanpakuto God Killing Star has just been developed by Usopp as Shikai, so it doesn't have any moves yet. Logan is aiming at the top of the Whiskey Mountain in the distance, full. Then let go. Whoosh. A spirit beam full of Ryatsu is like a laser beam, instantly across the sea and sky. Like a long rainbow penetrating the sun, it penetrates into the top of Whiskey Hill in an instant. Boom. Numerous tombstones were blown over. Chapter 80 Whoops. Seeing that people's graves were blown up, Logan shrank his neck. I'm sorry, I didn't know that this thing could shoot so far. Slip away. In the afternoon, going Mary docked at the port of Whiskey Peak. Wow. What a big prickly cactus, dash. Luffy is riding on the sheep's head, his eyes are full of novelty. It's an island. It's an island. Usopp corrected. Sanji was in high spirits, this is Whiskey Peak, it looks pretty good. At this moment, Miss Wednesday and MR9 jumped onto the fence on the deck at the same time. Since we're here, let's take our leave. Thanks for taking us back, darlings. See you soon. The two put on a thank you pose, and then jumped into the sea with a whoosh. They just left like this. Luffy watched the two of them swimming forward in the sea, and sweat broke out on his forehead. They're already docking, so what? Sanji pointed forward, look, there is a river ahead, it seems that you can go inland by ship. Hey, hey, hey. Is this, okay? What if there are monsters in it? As a coward, Usopp obviously doesn't agree with Sanji's idea. Sanji thought for a while, holding a cigarette between his fingers, the scenario you mentioned is possible, and the possibility is quite high. Because this is the Grand Line. Never mind him. It's fine just run away when the time comes Luffy was very happy and said with a smile. Listening to their words, Logan was speechless. Come on, you guys, it seems that you haven't realized how powerful you are. But after thinking about it for a while, Logan can also understand everyone. After all, he is a transmigrator, he knows everything, of course he doesn't worry about it. And for the other crews of the Straw Hat Pirates, every time they dock, what they face is a brand new unknown. What's the scariest? The unknown is the scariest thing. At this time, Nami raised the log pose on his wrist and said, Don't forget, we have to stay on this island for a while. Why? Luffy and Usopp showed question marks all over their faces at the same time. Nami clasped her hands in front of her body and explained calmly, On the way here, that woman has already explained to me the usage of log pose in detail. If the log pose is not allowed to record the magnetic field of this island, we will not be able to enter the next islands. And the time required for each island is different, some need a few hours, others need a few days. Ah! Usopp's eyes widened, that is to say, even if there are monsters in this island, we have to stay for several days before we can escape. Nami shrugged, then nodded, yes. Ah ha ha ha! This kind of thing will be discussed later. Let's go in quickly. Luffy was happy, he just wanted to see the island quickly. I think I may have a disease that prevents me from going to the island, Usopp. 
still wants to resist. It's just that, except for him, no one else has any objections to land. Soon, the inland river of the Golden Beauty entered Whiskey Peak. It's a pirate. Welcome to our town. Welcome to the Great Line. Long live the warriors of the sea. Seeing that the Golden Mary was about to dock, many people actually came to the shore, cheering loudly for everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates. After getting off the ship, a man with wavy hair, holding a saxophone, welcomed everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates, Welcome, my name is Igarapoy. Perhaps you are surprised by our attitude. But Whiskey Peak is a place where winemaking and music are very developed, and hospitality is our tradition. The wine we are proud of is as inexhaustible as the sea water. Tonight, I will use your adventure stories as food for fun. Please allow us to clean up the dust for you. I don't know if you will appreciate our effort. Wow haha. The people here are amazing. Luffy, Sanji, and Usopp hugged and cheered together. As for Logan, Nami, and Zoro, they stood aside, looking at the three idiots in front of them, and they were Kashios. Soon, as the evening approached, the welcome banquet began. Kampai. To the warriors of the sea. Wow. Master Usopp has drink ten consecutive shots. That's too strong. I'm willing to bow down and challenge someone else. The food in the banquet is very rich, and the wine is inexhaustible as Igarapoy said. With the drink after glass of wine, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates also became drunk. But Nami and Logan are still very sober. It's amazing. Already 39 shot in a row. Brother Logan is really good at drinking. Here, Nami Big Sister is not far behind, and has won 35 consecutive shot. Everyone else was basically drunk, and everyone started besieging Logan and Nami. Don't come one by one, come together, for every 10 glasses Nami and I drink, you both drink one cup at the same time. How about it? Facing these people who intentionally drink alcohol, Logan feels bored. Before he came, he knew that the purpose of these people was to get them drunk and then exchange them for rewards. According to the original idea, Logan planned to do it when he came here, knocking over a few, and teaching them how to behave. But on the way here, Nami tamed the sweet in the world of card captor Sakura, which made things interesting. The so-called the sweet card is a clow card that has the magic power to turn things into sweets. But at this time, facing everyone's crazy drinking, Logan secretly used the Gan card, turning the alcohol into air cotton candy. Drinking a large glass of wine is actually equivalent to taking a sip of cotton candy. The so-called air cotton candy is the kind sold by street vendors, and a very large volume of air cotton candy can burst out with just a little bit of lying down. After drinking more than 200 glasses of wine, it is probably equivalent to eating a few sweets. It's the same situation on Nami's side. Before getting off the ship, Logan told Nami that she might encounter alcohol abuse, and told her to use this method. So Logan and Nami drink a thousand cups and still not drunk. Grunt. 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 As the cups of wine were drunk, the people around Logan and Nami gradually became exhausted. Logan and Nami looked at each other, but they couldn't hold on anymore, and fell asleep on the table. Okay. Everyone is having a great time tonight, I wish you all have a good dream. Hospitable people began to move out. When they came outside, the enthusiastic smiles on their faces disappeared. In the open space outside, Igarapoy, M.9 and Miss Wednesday are all standing here. What a group of guys who can eat and drink. I used bubble barley tea to fight with them, and I was drunk to death. The door of the banquet hall opened, and a person dressed as a nun came out. She threw off the nun's clothes, revealing her strong muscles. Obviously, her identity is not a nun. She walked towards the three people on the opposite side, and said annoyedly, we are short of food, and we have to spend so much to entertain them. If the bounty is not high, we will be at a loss. Damn. I'm afraid that you will be shocked. The corner of Igarapoy's mouth twitched. Just now, while the Straw Hat Pirates were eating, he carefully flipped through the recent bounty newspaper. I didn't expect to turn it over soon. Ms. Monday said disdainfully, shock? Hey, hey, what are you kidding, just by the appearance of that group of people, you can tell they are a group of idiot rookies. Really? Look at this. Igarapoy took out a newspaper offering a reward and spread it out. What? When the other three saw the bounty clearly, they all opened their mouths wide and their eyeballs popped out of their sockets. One hundred million belly. He, 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 they, the stupid captain, 
unexpectedly, they are the big pirate group with a reward of 100 million belly. My god! What kind of horrible guy are we attracting? Ms. Wednesday, Mr. Nine and Ms. Monday are still calm at this time, they are just three frightened fawns. We need to be strong, there is no way back. Igarapoi wiped his face and said with difficulty. Ms. Wednesday carefully opened the second bounty. But as soon as the page fell, she withdrew her palm abruptly, ah! Hey hey hey! What's going on? Seeing this, MR9 quickly turned over the falling paper industry. Bounty, Logan, who belonged to the Straw Hat Pirates, offers a reward of 90 million belly. The hearts of the three of them were about to burst out. A 90 million belly? Another guy with 90 million belly. This pirate group is too scary. The one who is currently in Alabasta, one of the seven warlords of the sea, Crocodile, before he joined Shishibukai, his most common value was only 81 million belly. No no no, this is terrible. What should we do now? Ms. Monday realizing the seriousness of the problem, look at Mr. Igarapoi tensely. Scary? This is scary. With a wry smile on his face, Igarapoi turned over the second bounty, revealing the third bounty. Hiss. In the calm open space, only the sound of sucking air can be heard at this time. The three of Ms. Wednesday, Ms. Monday, and Mr. Nine are completely numb at this time. What did we see? The big pirate with a reward of 60 million belly? Oh my god! What is this concept? It's over, it's over, it's over. We may have provoked a terrifying existence this time. Although Ms. Monday is tall and big, she also has brains and knows what it means to offer a reward to a pirate of this level. What should we do? They're drunk now, why don't we keep doing it? Mr9's face was full of nervousness, and his eyes frightened towards the banquet hall from time to time. These people were brought over by him and Ms. Wednesday. He was afraid that once the other party found out that they set up the trap, the other party would kill them. This kind of bounty offering pirate, which one is not the one who kills without batting an eye? I think, before they sober up, let's give them a few injections of strong tranquilizers. As long as they get the shot, no matter how strong they are, we can take them out. Then we hurriedly notify Marine to come with the bounty. We don't care about the rest. Ms. Wednesday pursed her red lips and suggested. After all, she has a special status and safety is the main priority in everything. She doesn't want to lose her life in such a thing. In that case, the huge responsibility she was carrying would be over. Ha makes sense. After listening to Ms. Wednesday's suggestion, Ms. Modai took a deep breath and forcibly adjusted her mood. These people, on the surface, are actually bounty hunters. In this small town closest to the entrance of the Grand Line, it is dedicated to deceiving newcomers who have just entered the Grand Line. After getting drunk, give these pirates to Marine in exchange for a bounty. Day after day, this is indeed a low-cost, high-return business. Sometimes even encountering one with a high reward is equivalent to winning the lottery. It's just, this time the bounty is too high, it's too scary. Ms. Monday looked towards the open space next to it, where a large number of bounty hunters had gathered, all of them were their subordinates. He ordered, Hey! Hurry up and find a large amount of tranquilizers, and immediately give several injections to each of the people inside. Hey! I'm sorry. Can you let them sleep peacefully? Everyone sailed all the way here are very tired at this moment, a voice suddenly came from a high place. Nearly a hundred people in the open space looked up at the same time. They saw a strong figure sitting cross-legged on the top of the tall building where the banquet hall is located. Holding the sword high in his right hand, he said in a deep voice, As a swordsman, you will never be so stupid as to let alcohol control me. I probably understand, this is the lair of bounty hunters, right? You guys are here to take advantage of the dumbass who just entered the Grand Line. You have about 100 bounty hunters here, I'm here for you, Baroque works. Having said that, Zoro stood up slowly, the figure holding a sword in one hand, under the moonlight, looked like a god of war. When the name Baroque Works Agency was mentioned by Zoro, all the bounty hunters below all opened their mouths in horror. What? How do you know the name of our company? The bounty hunters exclaimed. Because, when I was doing this before, your company tried to recruit me, but I rejected it. So I know something about you. Zoro patiently explained. Anyway, after drinking a little, I think I'm sobering up right now. Since you know our secret, I can only kill you. Igarapoi's expression changed, and he said. 
That's right, there will be another tombstone on the cactus. Ms. Monday rubbed her fists, her face was cold, and she said in a relaxed tone, It's a good thing that those three scary bounty guys were all drunk, but this little green-haired guy is awake, so don't worry. Ms. Wednesday nodded, yet. Yeah. If one of those three people wakes up, we're probably doomed. Quick battle. Don't alarm those three bosses. MR9 also warned cautiously. Looking at the meaning of the people below, the corners of Zoro's mouth slightly raised, do you want to fight? That's really great. And many more. Suddenly, Igarapoi yelled loudly. What's wrong? Everyone looked at him suspiciously. Ah. This man, this man. As if remembering something, Igarapoi's expression suddenly changed. He quickly took out the stack of bounties and flipped through them quickly. Hey, hey. What are you looking for? There are only three people in the pirate group who have been offered a bounty, so don't worry. Ms. Monday said. But Igarapoi didn't listen to him and continued to flip through. A certain moment. Brush. A bounty order was pulled out from this stack by Igarapoi. In the empty night, the terrified cries became one. Chapter 81 The white moonlight fell on the bounty in Igarapoi's hand. It reflects the man with the green moss hair very clearly. This, this, also like their captain. Ms. Wednesday's beautiful eyes were bigger than her mouth, she pointed at the bounty with a look of horror, and she stuttered. Hiss. Even Zoro, who was standing on a high place, could hear the clear startled sound clearly. The agents of the Baroque works were all dumbfounded. They thought it was a rookie who came out. The reward amount just like the Straw Hats Captain 100 million belly. This is too scary. And you are obviously one of them, why is your bounty issued separately? If they knew Zoro were a boss monster just now, they would definitely try to keep their voices as low as possible. But before they thought too much, Zoro's figure disappeared from the sky in an instant. And the next moment. What? Help. Screams rang out from the crowd of bounty hunters. We can't back down now. Fight him. Otherwise, everyone will die here. Igarapoi also reacted at this time, knowing that it would be useless to ask for forgiveness anymore, so he steal his heart and gave orders. Everybody. Fight. No matter how strong he is, he is only one person. We have a chance. That's right, the advantage lies with us. These little bounty hunters didn't see the bounty but judged from the reaction of Igarapoi that the green hair in front of them should be very strong. At this time, the door of the banquet hall opened. Several bounty hunters were thrown out of it. Igarapoi and the others subconsciously looked at the door of the banquet hall, only to see a man and a woman walking out. What? Another bounty of 90 million belly and 60 million belly came out. It's over. This time there is really no possibility. It seems that you are not drunk either. Alas. Three idiots are enough for their group, there can't be no more. Seeing Logan and Nami come out, Zoro was slightly thankful while slashing on the bounty hunter with his sword. Then, he shouted, Since you are here, come and help. Forget it if I help. These people might just die from discouragement, so we'll just shout and cheer here Logan crossed his arms and leaned against the door frame. Zoro in the original plot can single out these people in front of him, let alone the Zoro in front of him now. Logan wasn't worried at all. Go Zoro. Nami waved his small fist and shouted at Zoro who was fighting. Hey hey hey. You two don't just stand there. Zoro has an urge to rush to kill Logan and Nami first. He's still a bit cold tonight. Nami rubbed her little hands and blew in front of her mouth, then took Logan's arm, and leaned her little head on Logan's shoulder. Seeing this, Logan simply let go of one arm and took Nami's head directly. Would it be warmer this way? Logan asked with a smile. Him feeling Logan's broad arms, Nami was really happy. Ah. I'm fighting here, you two are flirting over there? This is so unfair. As smoke blow from Zoro's angry nostrils. All the anger was cast onto the bounty hunters around. These people can be regarded as unlucky. It didn't take long before Zoro knocked him unconscious on the ground. Yes knock. Even in the original plot, Zoro used knock them out to deal with these bounty hunters. Although he is not a saint, he is definitely not a villain. Although these bounty hunters are deceiving, they are all pirates. Pirates. 
even Igarapoi, MS Monday, MS Wednesday, and MR9 also failed to escape Zoro's back attack. He didn't, didn't kill us. Igarapoi lay on the ground, shocked and grateful at the same time. That's, because you didn't poison them Logan walked over with Nami and said lightly. After all, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates really had a big meal. Hey, hey, hey. Don't take my moment. You make it look like you contribute. Zoro's nostrils were smoking with anger. I'm done, you guys are here, it really pissed me off. Didn't you wanted the opportunity to train with that earring Logan point towards Zoro's bell earrings, if Nami and I make a move, won't you lose a chance to train? God what chance to train? Zoro was depressed and found that there was no way to refute this statement. Yes. Although he does all the fight by himself, for him, it really is a training for him. It's already midnight. But this town is still so lively. Suddenly, a high-pitched female voice came from the side of the street. Everyone's eyes looked over. It was a tall woman with short blonde hair dan dark eyes. She wears a yellow and orange hat, as well a yellow dress with a lemon pattern. Beside her, a dark-skinned man with black hair and short spiky dreadlock, he wears a brown trench coat with a pair of sunglasses. He put his hands in his pockets and said with a temper, we were sent here just for such a trivial matter. Ah. MR5. MS Valentine. Igarapoi who was lying on the ground screamed when he saw these two people. The status of these two people in the Baroque work agency is a higher than the few that fell on the ground. Of course, the most important thing is that Igarapoi smelled a dangerous breath from the appearance of these two people. That was a bad feeling. It's really horrible. So many of you lost to a mere swordsman. MR5 raised his head proudly, looked at Igarapoi on the ground with a gaze that looked down on the world, and mocked coldly, this just pathetic. MS Valentine also laughed mercilessly, ah ha 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 ha. No wonder you can only be the low class agent you guys are just so pathetic. When the two were talking, they all ignored the three members of the Straw Hat Pirates. Having been in a high position for a long time and being surrounded by strong crew, they have developed this arrogant attitude in. Listening to the attitude of the two people talking, Igarapoi said unhappily, Are you here to laugh at us? The ridicule is just incidental, ha 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 ha. MS Valentine covered her mouth and laughed, Of course we are here to carry out the boss's task. Igarapoi was a little confused, Task? Even the boss knows that there will be powerful pirates here today. Stop joking. Dealing with pirates? Do you think we would come so far for such a trivial matter? The corner of MR5's mouth curled up, and he said in a cold voice. MR9 also got up from the ground, looked at MR5, what is that mission? Don't you know? MR5 looked at Igarapoi and the others, and said with a sneer, you know, the motto of our company is secrecy and it is not allowed to investigate the origins of anyone in the company, let alone the true identity of the boss. Ms. Valentine took over the conversation, so, after a little investigation, we can know that an important person of interset of a certain kingdom had sneaked into our workplace. As soon as these words came out, the faces of Igarapoi and Ms. Wednesday face changed at the same time. MR9 also changed his face greatly, he waved his hands in shock and said, Hey hey hey. Although I wear a crown, I am definitely not a king. It's not you MS Valentine shrugged and said disdainfully. MR5 went on to announce, the traitor Iden Teddy is. Before MR5 can finish, Igarapoi angrily wanted to get up and rush to the opponent. But, Zoro's strength is much greater than in the original plot. So with Zoro's previous fight, Igarapoi didn't have the strange to do it. Igarapoi captain of Alabasta's guard known as Igaram, and MS Wednesday or princess of Alabasta kingdom Nefertari Vivi. Speaking of this, MR5 coolly took out his right hand from his pocket and slowly lifted it up. Holding in his hand, the official photo of Princess Vivi. Ah. MS Wednesday, you are actually a princess. MR9 spat out a mouthful of blood. At this time, MR5's right index finger had already been stuffed into his nostril, and he coldly pronounced the sentence, in the name of the boss of the Baroque work agency, you two are here by fire. Don't underestimate me. Princess Vivi got up from the ground, and immediately took out her weapon. But at this moment, MR9 suddenly rushed in front of Princess Vivi, and he shouted, Although I don't know what happened, we have been partners for so long, so we are old friends. I'm here to help you buy time, MS Wednesday, hurry up and run. Saying that, MR9 rushed towards MR5. Nekisi 9 Kanjo Bloody Bat. 
MR9 rolls and leaps forward. Such loyalty! Laughing indifferently, MR5's fingers escaped from his nostrils and flicked forward. Nose fancy cannon. Boom. MR9 was blown away by the booger cannon. Nanny? His booger is so dangerous. Zoro on the side stared blankly. Nami frowned, feeling nauseated, so disgusting. Well, obviously you can pick any other part of your body, but you have to pick your booger, it's really disgusting. Logan also commented seriously. What ignorance. You stupid pirates haven't realized your situation yet. Do you think my booger is disgusting? Then I will make you regret feeling disgust. MR5 is a very proud ma, how can anyone say he is disgusting? He usually works with the Baroque work top agent. They, no matter how much he picks his boogers, others will only say awesome. It's so big. It's too strong. But these pirates in front of me are so ignorant. He buckled hard and dug out a lump of bloodshot booger. Vomit. Just seeing this coquettish operation, Logan and others are going to throw up. This powerful weakening buff weakens the enemy state before making a move. It's really a devastating move. Bloodshot booger fancy cannon. Whoosh. With the flick of MR5, the disgusting thing came straight to Logan and others. FK. Logan couldn't help but curse loudly. Can this thing be stopped? Of course. Even Logan's physical defense can ignore this explosive power. What's more, he has intermediate armament hacky. But. Damn, who would block this thing? Without any hesitation, Logan immediately used his small card ability, directly turning the booger cannon into a tiny dust. Then he flashed sideways with Nami, avoiding the path of the cannon. B.I.A. The tiny booger slipped past and not far behind made a tiny noise as light as mosquitoes and flies. Bastard. That's disgusting. I'm is going to kill you. Zoro, who also avoided this booger attack, was about to attack immediately without saying a word. Wait. Let me deal with him. Logan has never had such an urgent desire to kill a person with his own hands. He flipped his palm, and the sealed state bow appeared in his hand. Chasing freedom, god killing star. Underscore the Shikai transform, and the sealed state instantly becomes a god killing star. What is this? Zoro and Nami asked almost simultaneously. This is the weapon created by Usopp, I will use it for now Logan explained a little bit, and immediately drew his full bow. Ryatsuo instantly gathered at the position of the projectile and condensed into one Ryatsuo projectile. Although Usopp has not researched any special abilities for this god-killing star, but the Ryatsuo projectile alone is enough. Not to mention. The power card. Logan spiritually communicates with the claw card, instantly strengthen his hand. Yes, he's going to kill this disgusting thing. Then. Power surge, armament hacky activates. A pitch black airflow gushes out from Logan's hand in an instant, and then wraps around the riot so projectile. In this way, a blow that contains spiritual power, great strength and armament hacky is formed. Damn. Stop pretending. Although I don't know why my booger cannon suddenly disappeared, but MR5 is still extremely arrogant, he digs again. Another booger cannon. Logan cursed angrily, and let loose the projectile in his hand. A psychic beam shot out. Between the lightning and the flint, they will pass through the clouds and seize the moon. Boom. MR5 didn't have time to react, the booger cannon in his hand hadn't formed yet, he was hit by the psychic beam. Instead of flying upside down like being hit by a heavy object, it has a penetrating effect. The psychic light beam disappeared in a flash, MR5's whole body seemed to be lifted up by something, and his body was stiff. Then it seemed like a deflated ball, fell down, limp on the ground, motionless. What? Seeing MR5 die so simply, MS Valentine was terrified. Without any hesitation, she quickly jumped up. 0.001 kg. The Kilo Kilo fruit ability was activated, and MS Valentine immediately floated into the sky. Ah ha 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 ha. Didn't expect that, I can fly. Now let's see what you can do with me. Although he successfully escaped from the enemy's attack range, but MS Valentine committed the old problem again and did not forget to taunt the enemy. Logan pouted. If you keep ridiculing me, how can I turn a blind eye and let you escape? Logan said lightly, flying so high, aren't you afraid of being struck by lightning? Lightning? M.S. Valentine laughed loudly, ah ha ha ha. What an idiot. How can there be thunder in this clear night sky? 
Ack. As soon as her voice fell, a thunder fell on her. What? Said Sizi. M.S. Valentine floated down with green smoke. Isn't there? With a move of Nami's little hand, the effect of the thunder card was used. Taunting Logan? Humph. Chapter 82 Quack. On the treetops under the night sky, an old vulture flapped its wings and flew up, holding a otter under its claws. In otter's hand is a piece of drawing paper, on which many people are drawn. Includes Logan, Zoro, Nami, Igaram, Princess Vivi, and more. It's not good. It's Miss Friday of Baroque Works and Mr. Thirteen, and Mr. Thirteen has already recorded the things here, and he's going back to report to Mr. Zero. Igaram looked around, and suddenly saw the flying old vulture, and he was shocked. At this moment, Logan was holding the Bow God Killing Star, and his vision was excellent. From a few hundred meters away, he could see clearly the drawing on the drawing paper in Otter's hand. He commented slightly, his painting skill is not bad, if he work hard for a few more decades, he will be able to catch up with me. As if they heard Logan's comment, the old vulture and Otter in midair looked back at Logan at the same time. Yo, you still stare at me. Logan shrugged his shoulders. The agent are arrogant and ignorant. These two little beasts also look like an arrogant animal. It makes people very uncomfortable. Logan raised his hand, and a psychic beam shot out. Goog. The old vulture screamed, and both it and the otter were shot with the riot so shot. T. Just when Logan put away the god-killing star, he suddenly heard a shout. Then he saw Igaram hugging his leg tightly, and shouted, After seeing your great strength, I have a request. Hey. If you have something to say, don't hug me. Being hugged by a man, Logan doesn't like this kind of feeling. Ah, good good hearing this, Igaram quickly let go. Then, he introduced. I am Igaram, captain of the King's Guard of Alabasta, and this is Nefertari Vivi, princess of Alabasta. It's like this. Igaram cursed and narrated, and quickly told what happened to Alabasta in recent years and the culprit of it. So, as a princess, you actually risk yourself to investigate the culprit behind the drought. After listening to the story Igaram told, Nami was very curious and squatted beside Vivi, looking at her with a pair of bright eyes. Princess Vivi pursed her red lips, with sadness in her eyes, there is no other way, if the truth of this matter is not found out, the rebel will believe that the drought is caused by our royal family, and then officially start a war with the royal family. So, in order to protect the imperial power from being overthrown, you sacrifice a lot, Zoro commented calmly. No. Don't underestimate the princess Igaram was furious, and he argued with a flushed face, Princess Vivi is not that kind of person. She didn't want to see war and didn't want to see a lot of innocent people die. Princess Vivi smiled, Igaram, there is no need to explain. So many people in Alabasta don't believe it, why should we force people from other countries to believe it? As long as the war can be stopped, Princess Vivi is not afraid of death. I believe it. But at this time, Logan spoke up with certainty. Ah? Do you really believe it? There was a trace of confusion in her bright eyes, Princess Vivi slowly raised her head and looked at Logan standing in front of her. She wasn't quite sure whether the person in front of her really believed her, or he was there to tease her on purpose. Logan nodded faintly, if it's a princess who only thinks about imperial power in her head, it's impossible for her to risk her life to lurk in a dangerous group like Baroque work. Everyone listens. Yes. Those who always claim to be powerful, which one doesn't cherish their lives like gold. They have the power in their hands, the glory and wealth that others can't even dream of, how can they put themselves in a dangerous situation? They don't want to be even a little bit dangerous. What's more, as a princess of a country, you can still let go of the dignity of a princess and play the role of a clown like M.S. Wednesday. Princess Vivi opened her mouth wide I understand why, it's just, do you have to be so blunt? Life. Dignity. These two are the most important things for ordinary people, but you, as a princess, leave them all behind. I have no reason not to believe that you are for doing something more noble. Obviously, you are no longer a princess, but a qualified heir to the king. When Logan's voice fell, both Igaram and Princess Vivi were shocked hearing it. This person. Did he rate Princess Vivi so highly? In an instant, Princess Vivi's emotions couldn't help but break down, and tears poured out at once. She fell so wronged. In the past two or three years, not only Alabasta has suffered great injustice. As a princess, she has been wronged even more. 
but she didn't say it all the time, and she endured it silently. It doesn't matter if no one understands, she can bear it. But it is precisely when someone can understand her that this is when her psychological defense collapses. A pair of gentle arms embraced her. Not Logan, but Nami. My lovely princess, this man can always touch people's hearts, it's just so hateful. Gently pressing Princess Vivi's head in her arms, Nami smiled and patted the back of her head, I used to have grievances like you but couldn't speak out. Until I met this guy, I was in his arms I cried a lot, and I walked out. He told me that the grievances should be made public. Speaking of this, Nami's red lips touched Princess Vivi's pink earlobe, Hey, Princess, you can cry in my arms. After saying this, how can Princess Vivi hold back? Plunging into Nami's chest, Princess Vivi burst into tears. Seeing this scene, Igaram burst into tears. Hero, can you help us? Suddenly thinking of asking for help, Igaram looked at Logan, as if he was going to throw himself on his thigh if he didn't agree with each other. Don't move. Logan saw it and immediately warned. Afterwards, he shrugged his shoulders, I don't have any opinion on things like drawing swords to help when seeing injustice. But I have my crew, and I can't force my likes and dislikes on my crew. When they wake up, we will hold a meeting and give you an answer then. Really? This is good news. Hearing Logan's statement, Igaram was very excited, and he directly kowtowed to Logan, thank you thank you. Zoro leaned against the wall behind him, watched the scene, and then said, with the beautiful princess here, that guy Sanji will definitely agree. Logan nodded, well, that's for sure. That fellow Usopp's opinion can also be easily influenced, and he definitely disagrees. But his opinion doesn't count. After all, if there is even the slightest risk, Usopp will always refuse. Of course, although Usopp refused, but every time he would bite the bullet. He is still very reliable. Zoro added, but if you think about it carefully, that guy Luffy will definitely agree. Looking for exciting adventure, he is more active than anyone else. If you put it this way, it seems that you are the only one who has the opinion on this. As he spoke, Logan looked at Zoro playfully. Zoro refused to accept, he immediately pointed at Nami, isn't she still undecided? Logan smiled and shook his head, well, I'll give you two key words. One is princess, and the other is rich, understand. Hey? Why did I forget, as long as it's about money, there's nothing Nami isn't interested in. Zoro slapped his head and immediately figured it out. Igaram rushed forward and hugged Zoro's thigh. Zoro bared his teeth and got goosebumps all over the floor. Logan can't stand this kind of thing, and a straight man like Zoro can't stand it even more. Two days later, the log pose filled the magnetic field of the island, and going Mary left Whiskey Peak. As analyzed by Logan and Zoro, the result of the meeting of the Straw Hat Pirates was that Usopp firmly opposed it, and all the rest accept it. In this way, the next main destination of the Straw Hat Pirates is Alabasta. However, only Princess Vivi boarded the Straw Hat Pirates ship. As for Igaram. As in the original plot, he disguised himself as Princess Vivi in order to prevent the pursuers of the Baroque Work Agency from chasing and killing Vivi, and took the lead to Alabasta from another route. There is also the so-called camouflage of Igaram, so a big man dressed up as a princess, you don't need to think about how outrageous it is. But in the original plot, Igaram did return to Alabasta at the end. On the deck of the Going Merry, Princess Vivi stood at the bow, looking at the inland river of Whiskey Peak that was about to sail out, feeling very complicated. She muttered, I don't know if Igaram is safe on the road. There must be other pursuers in Baroque works. Yes beautiful lady, you guessed it right. Suddenly, a melodious chuckle came from above. The atmosphere on the deck also suddenly became cold. Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates looked at the top of the cabin, where a graceful and beautiful lady was sitting. With a delicate face and three-dimensional features, she is a charming woman. Dressed in denim, and with a wheat-colored skin tone, there is a burst of wildness from the west. She sits high on the top of the ship, her slender beauty is built together with her natural beauty. Miss All Sunday. The moment she saw this woman, Princess Vivi's voice trembled. However, she forcibly calmed down, she's the one that Vivi follows to be able to investigate the true identity of MR0. Later, Princess Vivi added, by the way, it was by following you that I managed investigated the true identity of the boss of Baroque work. Ah, cute little princess, I let you to follow me on purpose. Robin rested her chin in one hand, raised hers hands and raised her feet, 
and the aura of mature but not yet full beauty bloomed naturally. What? Then is she a good person? Luffy tilted his head, analyzing himself. Princess Vivi gritted her teeth and said angrily, I know that. Besides, the boss already tasked the officer to kill us and reveal our identity, you must be the one that tell the boss about it. Ah? So she's a bad guy. Luffy's head tilted the other way. As soon as these words came out, everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates was on edge. Logan pursed his lips slightly, don't point such dangerous things at me, please. Saying that, she activated the fruit ability. Poof. Usopp and Sanji fell to the ground. And that's all. Um. A look of horror suddenly appeared on the delicate cheeks that were originally breezy. Robin subconsciously looked at the other members of the Straw Hat Pirates. She saw. Nami stood with her hands on her hips, easily grasping the arms that appeared on her body. It's not enough strength to knock me down. Under the action of power cards, Nami's power is stronger when it is active. This is not what shocked Robin the most. What shocked her even more were Logan, Luffy, and Zoro. She saw black air currents winding around the arms of Luffy, Zoro, and Logan. It made those arms grow because of the flower flower fruit ability unable to shake the three of them at all. That's... Armament hacky. Robin's eyes were filled with shock. Seeing Robin's expression, Robin laughed, I wanted to show off, but it turned out to be embarrassing, isn't it? Ahem. Robin's face flushed slightly, which was indeed a bit embarrassing. Hey, hey. It's actually devil fruit power. It's great to be touched by such a beautiful big sister. Usopp and Sanji got up from the ground, but their attitudes were completely different. Are you going to fight? I can fight you. Luffy rolled up his sleeves, looking like he was going to do it. Robin regained his calm expression and shook his head slightly, Oh, don't get me wrong, originally I just wanted to persuade you to give up the idea of fighting against crocodiles. But now... She took another look at the armament hacky on the three of them, especially Logan's. That kind of prowess is definitely not the standard armed color. At least intermediate level and above. The armament hacky of the guy in the straw hat is also like an intermediate level. With such a luxurious and powerful lineup, Robin didn't know whether she should say what she wanted to say or not. Forget it, since you want to help this lovely princess, maybe you can. Here, have this. Saying so. Robin threw an hourglass-shaped thing at Princess Vivi. Eternal Pose Princess Vivi looked surprised. Yes, this eternal pose is pointed to the nearest safe island to Alabasta, which no one at Baroque Works knows. From there you can safely return to Alabasta. Logan nodded in response. But at this moment, Luffy's arm stretched out and grabbed the eternal pose. Snapped. Crumb. Chapter 83 Hey! You idiot! Nami punched Luffy to the ground, she kindly told us a shortcut. What if she is really a good person? Unnecessary. Luffy got up and announced seriously, the direction of this ship does not need to be controlled by an outsider. Okay. Logan curled his lips. This is Luffy, what he is sure about, no one else can influence him. But for Logan, he thinks there is nothing wrong with it. He knew that Robin had good intentions, but for others, who knows if Robin has another plan. This approach of Luffy may seem silly, but it is actually a smart. Quickly solve the root cause of the problem that is likely to cause disputes. This is an advantage that many captains do not have. Is that so, what a pity. Logan shrugged, and the corners of his mouth were raised slightly, revealing a regretful expression. In that case, let's say goodbye while speaking, she crossed her hands, and arms spread out from her arms, connecting back and forth, forming two arm ropes. Jumping over the railing on the ship and land on a turtle next to going Mary. With a little force, she pulled herself over. Zoro showed surprise, this trick is a bit similar to Luffy's rubber fruit ability, but it's not as convenient as Luffy's. Sanji was lying on the side of the ship with a flattering face, be careful, beauties. Ah, what a big sea turtle. Luffy, who had a serious face a moment ago, became excited when he saw the turtle. Robin's turtle ship is a real turtle. It's not even a ship, but a turtle mount. Do you dare to travel alone on the Grand Line? Nami's focus is not on the turtles, but on Robin's solitude. Their ship almost capsized collectively during the journey to Whiskey Peak, but the woman in front of her dared to shuttle between the islands riding a big turtle, which is really amazing. Hearing this, Robin looked back at Nami and smiled slightly, 
what's wrong with being alone? Nami thought about it seriously, and then said, it's lonely to be alone. Thinking of how lonely she was before, Nami felt deeply. Oh, some people are born to walk alone. Robin's eyebrows moved slightly, and he lifted his shoulder lightly, for example. I. Oh. Logan came to Nami's side, leaned gently on the fence, looked at Robin, that's not right. Really? Think whatever you like pulling the brim of the hat so that the sun would not reach her very much, Robin patted the big turtle lightly. I don't want to target you, I just want to refute your words. The sea is so vast, everyone will meet a companion that they can count on. Look at our ship. Before forming the pirates, Luffy was floating alone at sea and nearly drowned. I have been floating on the sea alone in a lonely small broken ship for more than a year. Zoro is weak and often got lost, so stupid that he was deceived by the young master of marine, and almost died in vain. Nami's hometown was oppressed by fishman pirates, how helpless she was, living a life for ten years. Usopp stays in a small mountain village, and can only lie every day. Sanji has a dream in his heart, but he can only be a cook on a ship. Those of us, if it wasn't for meeting each other and establishing a bond, we would still be living our miserable lives alone on the scene. But now, we protect each other, care about each other. None of us are no truly alone. Logan's words touched everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates. Yet. If it wasn't for meeting a crew. Our group of people is not just a mess of loose sand. Not even a plate of loose sand is good enough. Touching, Logan's words raised the cohesion of the Straw Hat Pirates to another level. This bond must be cherished. Of course, Robin was undoubtedly the most shocked at this time. Originally, she was ready to leave, but when Logan's words hit her one after another, her body trembled. Will everyone meet a companion that can be count on? A giant once told her. But, she have been wandering for twenty years, and she is still alone. Or, others can have companion, only her, the devil's child, is not worthy of having such companion? Logan is right. If I hadn't met Logan, I might have drowned in the sea Luffy grinned, as if reminiscing about the days when he'd burrowed into a barrel and resigned himself to fate. That's right. A crew is indeed a kind of magical power that makes people unable to give up once they come into contact with it. Zoro held up the sword in his hand, sighing with emotion. I hate it, when I talk about the past, it makes me want to cry Nami beat Logan lightly, and then put his little head into Logan's arms. With crewmates, I will become a brave sea fighter. Long live my crew. Sanji agreed very much. Logan looked at Robin, spread his hands, and said with a smile, Look, what you said is not right. Actually, what I firmly believe is. There is absolutely no one who is always alone in this world. This word. Like a bolt of lightning in the dark night, it struck Robin hard. Robin's body froze. There is absolutely no one who is always alone in this world. Twenty years ago, her only good friend also said this to her. And now, twenty years later this year, someone actually said the same thing to me. Is it a coincidence? Or, some things are predestined in the dark? Staring deeply at Logan for a while, Robin took a deep breath and turned his head in other directions. She looked at the sea in the distance, this direction is facing the direction of West Blue. With a long beard, Robin let out a sigh of relief from being provoked by Logan. Then, she looked at Logan again, Straw Hat Pirates, Logan. Logan raised his chin, motioning for please. Thank you for your word. You're welcome the big turtle paddled its limbs and headed towards the distant sea. Some words need not be said, you understand, I understand too. You are clearly contradicting her, why should she thank you? What a strange woman. Zoro frowned, expressing that he didn't understand the woman's brain circuit. Luffy also showed a question mark on his face, yet. Thank you even if you got different view. Ah. You bastard. Why would such a beautiful woman say thank to you? Sanji got jealous. It should be what Logan said that changed her opinion Nami can understand. After all, she was most touched by Logan's words. Logan shrugged, noncommittal. There is no need to explain this kind of thing. Otherwise, I have to explain a lot of things, which is very troublesome. After lunch, the Straw Hat Pirates entered their daily manga practice. Even Nami, who loves to pester Logan the most, did not relax. Every time she set sail, she tried her best to get as many claw cards as possible before reaching the next island. Kaya is still sick in bed, recuperating. 
Princess Vivi took a nap and woke up. It turns out that the pirate ship is not as bad as I imagined feeling the pure white quilt and pillow, Princess Vivi can be said to have slept so peacefully for the first time in recent years. Woke up and tidied myself up. Now the new Princess Vivi is no longer the same as the previous Ms. Wednesday. When the soaring ponytail was untied, Princess Vivi's sealed appearance seemed to be released, and she instantly changed from a little girl to an elegant and generous princess of the kingdom. Although they are pirates, but I don't know why, I envy them so much. Standing in front of the mirror, Princess Vivi let go of her thoughts. Even without considering the undercover life in the past two or three years, Princess Vivi is still envious of the straw hat pirates. Although she was a princess since she was a child, she lived a life of rich clothes and fine food. However, she has never experienced such a thing as friendship. She saw passion from everyone in the straw hat pirates. What an extravagant wish for her. At this point, everyone should be taking a nap. Thinking of this, Princess Vivi decided to go play with Nami. After all, she didn't know how long she would spend with these people. Since the future is at a loss, it is better to cherish the present. Next door to Princess Vivi is Kaya's room, and next door to Kaya is Nami's room. She first came to the room where Kaya, and first chatted with this good friend who had just met not long ago. So you are going to Drum Island to seek medical treatment? When she learned that Kaya was going to Magnetic Drum Island for medical treatment, Princess Vivi immediately nodded, Well, I know about that island, and their medical treatment is indeed very advanced. Really? If a princess like you is sure, then my illness seems really hopeful. Happily holding Princess Vivi's hand, Kaya's weak and pale face seemed to be covered with hope. But the king of that island is not a good person. If you go, try to avoid contact with that king. Thinking of being hit by the drum king on purpose when she was a child, Princess Vivi reminded her. After chatting for a while, Kaya needs to rest. You rest well, I'll go find Nami. You are so lucky to have a good friend like her. Saying that, Princess Vivi is going to the next room. Hey wait a minute. Seeing this, Kaya immediately shouted to Princess Vivi. What's wrong? Princess Vivi was a little surprised. It's time for everyone to practice now, don't bother them for now. Kaya propped herself up a little bit, and then solemnly warned, on this ship, everyone will work hard every day to protect their companions. At this time, even if you go to them, they can't do anything. Regarding manga training, of course no one kept Kaya from it. At first Logan also considered letting Kaya see manga. It's just that Kaya's body is too weak, and even reading manga consumes her energy too much. So there is no reluctance. The so-called reciprocity. Everyone's friendship to Kaya is sincere, and Kaya also cherishes everyone. She don't want everyone's training to be disturbed. But what she said made Princess Vivi very interested. Practice. The black eyes were shining, and Princess Vivi said with interest, I won't disturb them, I'll just take a look from a distance. Where are they practicing? No, the training method of this cruise is different from what you think. Kaya shook her head hastily, probably because her body was too weak, at this moment, she was sweating a lot again. Princess Vivi felt distressed immediately, okay, okay, sister Kaya, lie down quickly, I don't want to disturb them. By the way, why don't you go to Logan? He is the only one who is free during the training time. Besides, if you go to him, maybe. Speaking of this, Kaya stopped talking immediately. She suddenly thought that if the other people on the ship didn't talk about the mangas, she might as well not talk about it. But her appearance fell into the eyes of Princess Vivi, which made Princess Vivi think that Kaya's physical strength was exhausted to ultimate, so she quickly comforted Kaya and fell asleep. After leaving the room, Princess Vivi muttered, Are you looking for Logan? That super powerful man. Thinking of this, Princess Vivi went to Logan's studio. Anyway, I have nothing to do now, so I should just talk to someone. Knock knock knock. Hearing someone knock on the door politely, Logan put down the paintbrush in his hand, Is it Princess Vivi? Come in. Ah? How do you know it's me? The door opened, and indeed it was Princess Vivi. Because everyone is practicing at this time Logan shrugged and explained with a smile. In fact, there is another reason. That is, people from the Straw Hat Pirates will not knock on the door when they come to him. The only one who can knock on the door is Kaya, but she is sick in bed and can't come. Therefore, this polite person must be Princess Vivi. Oh embarrassedly scratching her forehead, Princess Vivi walked in very cautiously. What's up? 
Logan stretched out his hand to signal Princess Vivi to sit down. Oh, it's all right. I'm just bored by myself, I want to chat with you originally, she came here because she was bored, but when she got here and was alone with Logan in a room, Princess Vivi suddenly felt a little shy. Hey? There are so many manga here suddenly noticing the mangas on the bookshelf, Princess Vivi showed an interested look. Logan smiled slightly, that's right. I'm an ability user of manga fruit, and my hobby is drawing manga. Logan has been used to introducing himself in this way ever since being dubbed by the Straw Hat Pirates as Manga Fruit Ability User. Anyway, this is also convenient to explain my ability. My god. So many mangas are drawn by you you are so talented. The guy in front of me is powerful, handsome, and talented. It's just perfect. Vivi really envy Nami. It can be seen from the previous situation that the relationship between Nami and Logan is extraordinary. So Princess Vivi envied Nami more and more. The more she think about it, the more she feel envious, Princess Vivi can't help but blush. Ah! No no no, what is she thinking? Realizing that she might have lost her composure, Princess Vivi quickly found an excuse, I, can I read a manga? Okay. You can pick one yourself. For Princess Vivi's request, Logan agreed without any hesitation. Although Princess Vivi has just boarded the ship, Logan is a transmigrator. He know this is a non-active crew of the Straw Hat Pirates. His crew wants to read manga, so what else is there to think about? What's more, Logan now knows that when others get abilities from reading manga, he can get better at the same time. This kind of good thing, the more the better. Chapter 84 Thank you not daring to look at Logan again, for fear that Logan would notice her blushing, Princess Vivi hurried to the bookshelf. Choose slowly, pick one you like. By the way, reading my manga will be of great benefit to you Logan reminds me. Oh the little head nodded, Princess Vivi had seen a picture on the cover of the manga. For a princess like her, she still likes to see girls as heroines. This one from the dozen or so books in front of her, she picked one that suits her taste, and then looked at Logan, can I take it back to my room and read it? After all, watching from Logan, Princess Vivi is afraid that she will not know whether she is reading mangas or watching Logan. It's okay. I'll give you this manga as a meeting gift Logan said generously. Ah this. Although it is just a manga, Princess Vivi still thinks such a gift is very precious. Much more precious than any gold jewelry. Those things are readily available, but this manga is different. Even if you have traveled all over the world of pirates, there is only one here in Logan. But, but I, seem to have nothing to give you. Reciprocity is the most basic tradition among nobles. This kind of etiquette is naturally deeply rooted in Princess Vivi's bone marrow. She is currently fleeing, so naturally she has nothing to offer. Logan made a look of thinking, and then said, It's okay, I think your duck is good, give it to me. It will definitely be delicious when roasted. As soon as the words came out, Princess Vivi was terrified, Ah! Karu is not food. Ah ha ha Anne, seeing you are so reserved, let me make a joke with you amused by Princess Vivi's funny appearance. Logan came over and said with a smile, if every gift is meant to be a gift in return, then the meaning of the gift will be lost. Princess Vivi was shocked. Very reasonable words. She always remembers the interests of the nobility, and a gift must be returned. But now hearing Logan's words, she thinks carefully. Every time princes and nobles give gifts to each other, it seems that it is indeed a way to deepen friendship. But such a gift is more like an exchange. Gifts are no longer gifts but a means of socializing. The real gift is given to express the goodwill between each other, this is the meaning of the gift. No wonder MS all Sunday say thank you to you. What you said is really beneficial holding the manga in her arms, Princess Vivi performed a royal etiquette to Logan, and said seriously, thank you, for letting me understand the meaning of the gift. Logan smiled, well, you're welcome. After leaving the painter, Princess Vivi returned to her temporary room. It is very cherished to take out this manga. She swears that when she returns to Alabasta this time, she can lose everything, but this manga must not. The cover is a sassy girl with long crimson hair. The girl is wearing a delicate and sexy female armor, pressing the hilt of the sword with both hands, and pointing the tip of the sword to the ground, that heroic and heroic posture is almost vivid on the paper. Fairy tale, Urza Scarlet, the name is also very nice. For such a strong lady, Princess Vivi has almost no resistance. She is a princess of the kingdom, but she also likes to fight with guns and sword. When she saw this cover on the bookshelf just now, 
she decided it has to be this manga. Turning to the first page of the manga fairy tale, Urza Scarlet, what comes into view is not Urza's valor, but Urza's tragic fate when she was a child. Ah! Seeing Urza's childhood experience, Princess Vivi felt inexplicable heartache. Even in such a difficult environment, she always maintains a gentle smile, what a strong girl. These people are really hateful. Urza rescued them, but framed Urza instead, it's really hateful. Look at it, Princess Vivi has fallen into the pit. In a trance, she suddenly found that the surrounding environment seemed to have changed. In the dark night, there are only stars. Surrounded by pitch black forests, from time to time, some unknown beast bowed its head. Where am I? Princess Vivi is confused. Is this hallucination? But why is the night wind blowing on the arm so clear and cold? At this moment, there was a loud noise from the front. There are still many lights shining here. Run. Don't be caught back. The wizard are coming. A group of children of about the same age were running away frantically. And the direction of escape is exactly the direction where Princess Vivi is. Ah, isn't this the scene of Urza and her group trying to escape from the Black Magic Order? Because it was the manga she just read, Princess Vivi has a very clear memory of this scene. She can be sure that this is the scene in the manga just now. Isn't it? Could it be that I entered the manga world? No, no, no. I fell asleep while reading the manga, was it a dream? Well, it must be like this. As long as I get myself, I will definitely wake up from the dream. Thinking of this, Princess Vivi walked directly towards the crowd in front of her. Hey! That woman, don't get in the way. Run quickly. This is the place of the Black Magic Order, do you want to die? Stay still, like a fool. The children enslaved by the Black Magic Order didn't pay much attention to Princess Vivi, and then whizzed past her. What a determined look. When Urza passed by her, Princess Vivi saw the determination and courage in Urza's eyes. An inconspicuous magic circle appeared at the feet of Princess Vivi, setting off a faint light. The next moment, the magic circle poured directly into Princess Vivi's body. The moment the magic circle entered her body, the humble princess felt it. This is. Feeling the awakening magic power in her body, Princess Vivi was stunned. Is it magic? After reading this kind of manga just now, the power system that the humble princess knows is mainly magic. And magic can be learned or awakened. Her current situation is obviously the awakening of magic. Hey? And many more. The magic. When Princess Vivi further felt the magic surging, she was suddenly stunned. This, this, isn't this Urza's requip magic? Although the only power that can be used at this time is requip magic, and her magic is still in the awakening stage. This is the magic master by Urza in the manga. Kill. Dash while Princess Vivi was still in a daze, the group of chasing magic soldiers directly stabbed Princess Vivi with their weapons. What? With a scream, Princess Vivi woke up suddenly. She checked her arm, covered in cold sweat. Just now, that was a hallucination. The feeling of being hacked to death with a sword is so real. Wait. This is. Suddenly, Princess Vivi found something abnormal in her body. She tried to communicate with the power in her body. Ah. It's magic power. That's right, isn't this the magic power of the Requip magic? How could this be? Could it be that I really entered the world of manga just now, and awaken my magic? Even if Princess Vivi had just experienced this outrageous thing, she still couldn't believe it. Only. She communicated with the source of magic power. Buzz. The magic power fluctuated and shone, and the clothes on her body disappeared in an instant. What? Dash. Sudden loss of clothes, which frightened Princess Vivi. But when she looked down at herself, she immediately breathed a sigh of relief. Because she didn't appear with a naked body, around her body, there was a layer of magic power to wrap her up. This magic power fluctuation seems to be a layer of membrane, it looks like a mist, but nothing can be seen through it. Accompanied by a powerful clang, pieces of blade-like bright silver magic steel were automatically assembled around Princess Vivi's body. The next moment, the force wave dissipated. Princess Vivi's arm is protected by a gauntlet made of magic steel. The upper body is an armor made of steel blades, and the lower body is a layered skirt made of steel blades. Behind her, there are four steel wings made of steel blades, one pair facing upwards and one pair facing downwards. It looks a bit like the wings of an elf, but it's made of steel. Ah! This armor! 
Princess Vivi looked down. This is too revealing. She tried to communicate with the source of magic power. Knock Keng Keng Keng. Sure enough, the magic heart moved at will, and more than a dozen pieces of magic steel appeared out of thin air, replacing Princess Vivi's enclosure with a half-body armor. Hey, this is not too bad, otherwise it would be embarrassing to fight like this. Seeing that there is no leak now, Princess Vivi was relieved. But, does that seem to be the case? Why can't I sense the next ability? Princess Vivi communicated with the source of magical power in her body, and wanted to try more magical abilities, but found that she seemed to be stagnant. But I read that Urza's armor in the manga are not limited to this, why can't I continue to use more? Frowning, Princess Vivi began to think seriously. With her cleverness, she quickly guessed where the problem might be. I'm trying to enter the manga world. After thinking about it, Princess Vivi tried to communicate spiritually with the manga. Call. The gusts of night wind made Princess Vivi feel a bit chilly. And then came in again. She felt in her body, the source of magic power was still there. At this time, the front came again. There was movement. Hey! That woman, don't get in the way. Run quickly. This is the place of the black magic order, do you want to die? Stay still, like a fool. The crowd rushing towards Princess Vivi were none other than the group of children enslaved by the Black Magic Order. Everyone quickly ran past Princess Vivi. Bang 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 bang. The heavy footsteps of the magic soldiers also approached Princess Vivi. If I'm right, even if I die in the manga world, it's just my spirit being cut off. If that's the case, what's there to worry about? Thinking of this, Princess Vivi communicated the source of magic power in her body. Requip Heaven's Wheel Armor. As she said softly, huge magic power instantly surrounded her. The original clothes suddenly disappeared, replaced by the Heaven's Wheel Armor composed of pieces of magic steel. Of course, it is an impeccable Heaven's Wheel Armor formed according to Princess Vivi's own wishes. Hey hey hey! What is that? My god! Is that magic? What a beautiful armor! So cool! The strong magic fluctuations made the children who were running away subconsciously turn around. When they saw Princess Vivi wearing the Heaven's Wheel armor, they were all stunned. Fly, sword. Supported by the magic power, Princess Vivi jumped two meters from the ground. The gorgeous magic fluctuations formed ripples on his body. Two magical steel swords appeared in his hands. When he held the simulated steel sword in both hands and spread it to both sides for a moment, those magic fluctuations spread to a ring-shaped area around his body and transformed into a foot sword. Sixteen magical steel swords. These sixteen magical steel swords formed a ring of stars around the body of Princess Vivi. Sure enough, after coming to the manga world, it seems that my magic source can continue to be used. I don't know if I can continue to use it when I return to the real world. Without continuing to think about this question, Princess Vivi leaned forward slightly, crossed her swords, and then opened it violently. Swipe 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 swipe. A ring of magical steel swords around him all flew forward in an instant. Bang 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 bang. These magical steel swords have a terrifying sharpness that ordinary steel does not have. Those magic soldiers were vulnerable to a single blow, and they were instantly penetrated into a hornet's nest by these dozens of magic steel swords. Boom. 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 A few seconds after the magic soldier fell, Princess Vivi felt a burst of magic exhaustion. The fluctuation of magic power instantly surrounded her, and the steel armor just dissipated, and then her original clothes appeared. The next moment, the magic wave disappeared. More than what can be used in the real world, but it is limited, and it consumes energy. Quickly comparing the difference between the two uses of magic in her mind, Princess Vivi already had a preliminary judgment in her mind. It seems that I have to constantly hone this magic in the manga world, so that I can better display the power of this magic in the real world. Hey! After taking a deep breath, Princess Vivi tried again to activate the Heaven's Wheel armor. Really? This time, she can play to a greater extent than before. But still limited. Without continuing to enter the manga world, Princess Vivi was thinking while resting. The manga that Logan gave me actually has such a magical ability, does he know? But just when this idea came into being, Princess Vivi laughed at herself, what am I thinking? He is a manga fruit capable person. The physical ability that this manga brings to me must be thanks to him. By the way, when he gave me this manga, he said that it had a great benefit for me. Sure enough, this benefit is really huge. No, 
it should be said that it is a great benefit. Logan. How can she thank him? Chapter 85 Your fan Nefertari Vivi has awakened the magic of Requip in the world of the manga fairy tale Urza Scarlet. You simultaneously gain the Requip magic. You get points plus two. Your fan Nefertari Vivi practiced the magic of Requip in the world of the manga fairy tale Urza Scarlet, she gained Heaven's Wheel Armor. You simultaneously gain the ability to Requip the Heaven's Wheel Armor. You get points plus one. Logan was bored looking at the system emails of the log classification and saw that Princess Vivi's tribute had arrived. Not long after she got the manga, she have already gained the ability. This efficiency is quite high. Logan likes such a talented fan. And all of a sudden contributed three points. Logan looked at it, and it was only a few points away from the next lottery to unlock achievement points. MMM. Looking forward to the next treasure reward. This requip magic is Urza's specialty and it's very cool. I just don't know what it's like to be synchronized by Mia. People, if you already have good things, you want to see the effect. So is Logan. Putting down the paintbrush in his hand, Logan came to the open space of the studio. After thinking about it, I might as well go out. If there is a lot of noise, it will be troublesome to blow up your own studio. Not long after, Logan appeared on the rear deck. Well, there's no one here, so let's try it here. After looking at the card left and right to make sure no one noticed, Logan communicated with the source of magic power in his body. Hey! Damn it! Suddenly, all the clothes on my body disappeared. However, when he looked down, he breathed a sigh of relief. Okay. The protective cover formed by this wave of magic power well protected him. Then. King 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 King. Accompanied by a powerful clanging sound pieces of magic steel appeared out of thin air and quickly combined on Logan's body. Soon, a piece of steel armor was woven. Puff. Seeing the look of this armor, Logan immediately sprayed it. What is the situation in this encirclement? He quickly communicated with the source of magic power, and tried to change the shape of this thing. Okay okay okay. Can change. After a while, Logan finished adjusting the armor. The steel armor that reappeared on Logan's body was a steel armor similar to Saint Cea's golden armor. The four magical steel wings on the back also changed into the shape of Cea's armored wings. Well, it's almost the same. The one just now was just making fun of me. It has to be said that dressing magic is really convenient at this point, and each piece of armor can be rectified by relying on each person's independent ideas. After the rectification is completed, as long as you think about this shape when you change clothes next time, it will appear. Fly, sword. Logan's body surged with magical power, and he flew more than two meters into the air. As he pointed towards the sea, the sixteen magical steel swords surrounded by the whole body shuttled into the sea like a storm. Boom. The sea exploded, setting off monstrous waves. A huge bluefin tuna came out of the sea. Damn it, I won the lottery. Looks like we can get Sanji to give us extra meals tonight. Overjoyed. Logan extended his arms and pulled the freshly caught bluefin tuna onto the deck. It seems that it can only be used to this extent at present. Withdrawing the magic power of the requip magic, Logan took the bluefin tuna to the kitchen, and waited for Sanji to finish his training and deal with it. After washing off the sea water on his hands, Logan returned to the studio. Not long after painting, there was another polite knock on the door. Come in, Princess Vivi. Needless to say, this is definitely Princess Vivi again. The next moment, Princess Vivi, came in. Without waiting for Princess Vivi to speak, Logan spoke first, that's right, I just got the requip magic not long after I got the manga. It really didn't disappoint me. Hearing Logan's words, Princess Vivi felt relieved. Sure enough, what did Logan really say? Thank you Princess Vivi performed royal etiquette to Logan and said excitedly, this gift is really too much. Oh if you came to say something to thank me, then there is no need. Forgot what I told you before? If a gift is to return a gift, then the meaning of the gift is lost. Actually, the mangas here are not given randomly. If you choose this book, it means that you are destined for it. As long as you continue to practice requip magic well, you will be strong. What Logan said seemed a bit high sounding, but it was really his inner thoughts. After all, as long as others work hard to cultivate the abilities in the mangas, they can be synchronized to Logan. In this case, Logan's idea of wanting others to practice well is of course 100% sincere. Hmm. 
I know her eyes were moist with gratitude, and Princess Vivi nodded repeatedly. She pursed her red lips and raised her head, by the way, I have one more thing to do. Oh? What's the matter? The corners of Logan's mouth raised slightly, and he asked curiously. Princess Vivi replied, because this requip magic can be said to be a gift from you, so I just got this ability, so I want to show you my ability. Her thoughts at this time are actually like a child who just got good grades, and she especially wants to show off in front of her teachers and parents. It will be even better if you can get praise from your parents or teachers. That's it, that's good. Logan was a little surprised, but seemed to understand. Moreover, when Princess Vivi mentioned this, he really wanted to see what kind of style Princess Vivi made for his Skywheel armor. Original? Logan thinks that Princess Vivi should not keep that look. After all, it is a princess of a country, and it is not a pleasant thing to be regarded as adulterous by the enemy during the battle. Princess Vivi was very happy to hear that Logan agreed. She left the magic source of intense communication. Change, Heaven's Wheel Armor. The strong magic wave instantly enveloped Princess Vivi. The original clothes disappeared instantly. Then magical steel appeared out of thin air. Hiss. But at this moment, Logan couldn't help but gasp. Lying in a trough. This skin is so white. His eyes widened suddenly, and an expression of disbelief appeared on his face. Then he felt a rush of hot blood rushing directly to his nose. Okay. He can probably understand Sanji. King 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 King. Pieces of magic steel were quickly woven into Heaven's Wheel armor. Hum. With the complete weaving of the armor of the Sky Wheel, the fluctuation of magic power as the princess as a package also disappeared. Look. This is the first dress I just got, the armor of Heaven's Wheel armor. It was a bit exposed at first, but after my own adjustments, it's very good now. Saying that, Princess Vivi patted the half-body armor on her upper body, looking like she wanted to exaggerate. Logan swallowed hard. The scene just now is still shaking his brain, yes he is a little slow to react at this time. Ah uh, hello, Logan. Your face seems a little uncomfortable. Seeing that something was wrong with Logan, Princess Vivi immediately came over and asked with concern. Oh, it's all right, I'm not feeling sick. Logan shook his head in a daze. Oh, it's good that I don't feel uncomfortable. Look, the shape of this upper body armor I designed myself, is it okay? Knowing that Logan is fine, Princess Vivi felt relieved, and then introduced her own changes. Well, very white. What? Ah. So what, it's very good. Well, very good. Ah he. Princess Vivi was very happy when Logan said yes, okay, I mainly want to show my achievements to you. Now. I will continue to practice. Okay, okay. Logan also breathed a sigh of relief. Hurry up, I need to adjust this powerful impact. Requip magic, original clothes. After the show was over, Princess Vivi communicated her magic power again and removed Heaven's wheel armor. The fluctuation of magic power enveloped her again. But at this moment. Nourishment. Something flew over the protective cover of the magic wave in an instant, and landed on Princess Vivi's heart. What? Suddenly feeling something, Princess Vivi exclaimed, and subconsciously stretched out her hand to wipe it. But she found out that it was. Blood. She was horrified, Princess Vivi possessed her original clothes, and the fluctuation of magic power around her body also dissipated. She immediately looked up at Roland, and said concernedly, Why are you bleeding? But as soon as she said this, Princess Vivi discovered the problem. This blood is not spit out, but squirted from Logan's nose. Nose spurting blood. This does not mean that. No way. Suddenly, Princess Vivi seemed to have come to her senses. She shrank her hands subconsciously and looked at Logan with nervous eyes. Bang 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 bang. Even the sound of the heartbeat has become so clear. Some who dared not face it asked, you, you don't know, you saw it just now. Logan smiled wryly. Can't say, he is innocent too. Oh. No way. Seeing that Logan didn't speak, and the expression on his face was very embarrassing, Princess Vivi felt that she must have guessed right. She felt a burst of fire on her face, but Princess Vivi still had a glimmer of hope, and she asked pitifully again, You, you, have you? Logan shrugged in embarrassment. Shrugged, with a sorry expression on his face, Sorry, I didn't know it would happen. Although it can be said that he didn't see it, 
Logan feels that there is no need to lie to his future crews. Ah. Underscore underscore W. A scream full of embarrassment. The white palm instantly covered her cheeks, and Princess Vivi really wanted to find a hole in the ground to get in. She squatted on the ground, a little hesitant. In fact, how could a girl like her who is as white as ice and snow fail to think of the possibility that the magic power fluctuations might be seen through? Before coming to Logan, Princess Vivi first went to Kaya and used the Heaven's Wheel armor. Kaya was pretty sure she couldn't see it. That's why Princess Vivi dared to use the Requip magic in front of Logan, but she didn't expect it to happen. Covering her face, she murmured shamefully, Why, how? Kaya obviously can't see through this magic wave. If the magic fluctuation of this Requip magic can be seen through by others, then how can this magic be used? No I need to kill him. Seeing Princess Vivi's skeptical look, Logan said, Eh this should be something that everyone can't see through. Can't see through? Princess Vivi looked up at Logan who was standing beside her, then why can you? Actually, it's easy to understand. This is my ability. Logan shrugged and explained, whether it's mangas or the abilities you get from mangas, they are actually part of my abilities. My abilities, of course, are part of me. Logan realized this from the moment he saw through Princess Vivi. He guessed that not only is this kind of magical fluctuation of the visual barrier ineffective to him, but even if he uses the ability in the manga to attack him, it should also be ineffective. This point, just find a time to verify it. It turned out to be like this. Princess Vivi seemed to have been soaked in water, she was extremely depressed, I, hey, I, I let you see. Uh, no, 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 you don't have to feel sorry. To be honest, you are the one who suffers but I am the beneficiary. I should be the one to say sorry. Logan knelt down, patted Princess Vivi's back lightly, and comforted her. Later, he emphasized it again, however, I really didn't have the slightest foresight about this happening, I'm really sorry. Hearing Logan kept saying sorry, Princess Vivi, who was extremely annoyed, felt a little guilty at this time. Yet. Yeah. Logan didn't do it on purpose. She did something stupid from the beginning to the end of this matter, how did it happen that now Logan is here to comfort her and apologize to her? This is too unfair to Logan. Moreover, he has great kindness to her, he is handsome and strong, even if she sees it, she can accept it. Just thinking of this, Princess Vivi's cheeks flushed immediately. I, how could she think that? So, so shameful. The more she stayed, the more embarrassing she felt, Princess Vivi hurried up, she didn't dare to look at Logan, she lowered her head shyly and said, Yes. I'm sorry, I'll go back first. Well, good. But, you won't be overwhelmed, right? Logan asked with concern. No. It won't be, if it's you, I can accept it. How can she speak her mind? Originally, she just wanted to find a hole to drill in. It's all right now, Princess Vivi can't wait to find a crack in the dimension and get out of this world. I. I, I, I will go first. All of a sudden, she slipped her tongue, and Princess Vivi wanted to die, so she hurriedly covered her face and ran away. Um, the door is over there. Logan stretched out his hand and pointed in the direction of the door. Oh oh oh. So embarrassing. After finding the right direction of the door, Princess Vivi rushed out. Chapter 86 At night, Logan returned to his room. He came back a bit late today, because Princess Vivi visual impact during the day which caused his efficiency in drawing mangas to be half a beat slower than usual. However, as soon as he entered the room, his eyes were exposed again. Ah this! Why is he so lucky today? He was tested by Princess Vivi during the day, and now he going to be tested by Nami again? I said, what's the matter with you? Looking at Nami's slid shoulders, Logan is a little confused. The last time was in Nami's room, and that made sense. But now this is Logan's room. The test has intensified? Um. Nami turned around and gave Logan an unreasonable look. She reminded, you look again. Logan nodded, yeah, you're very pretty. However, just as he finished speaking, his eyes suddenly widened slightly, hey? The tattoo on your shoulder. Logan rushed over quickly, sat beside Nami, and stared at her shoulder carefully. Clean and fair, no tattoo marks at all. He <laughs> he, are you surprised? Seeing Logan's expression, Nami smiled happily at Logan. Um, it's really a surprise. That's for sure. 
In the original plot, when Nami left Kokoyashi village, she asked the tattoo artist in the village to remove her tattoo, but left a scar. In fact, when Nami left his hometown, he also had this plan, but was stopped by Logan. The main reason is that at that time Logan already knew that Nami possessed the ability of Clow cards. According to his idea, as long as Nami could get the, the erase cards, her tattoo could be easily erased without leaving any traces. Logan opened the system email and checked again, but he didn't receive the news of Nami getting the card. But if it's not to the erase cards, then there is no other reason. Is it the ability of the erase cards? After thinking about it, Logan still asked. Nami nods. Logan is fascinated. He wondered, did you get the, the erase card? No. Nami shook her head, and then a little anger appeared on her face, just thinking about it makes me so angry. What's wrong? It seems that Nami keep getting frustrated the manga world? Nami said, this time, Kirili found the trace of the erase card, and I tried to subdue her in the past. But the problem is that the abilities of several of my cards can't help in this matter. And then. As a qualified listener, Logan knows how to ask appropriate questions. Nami puffed his mouth out angrily, then little Sakura appeared. And that little Sakura's simp, Sayaran Lee. Sayaran Lee is a simp. Why doesn't Logan remember this incident? Yes. He is little Sakura's simp. It's just a high-level simp, it's not so easy for people to find out. Holmes Nami is sure of this. All right. If you want to say that, then Sayaran Lee is indeed a different kind of simp. Every time little Sakura is in trouble, he always comes to the rescue. If you think about it carefully, this guy is really a bit advanced. It's still my Nami who is the right one. So, the erase card was taken away by little Sakura. Logan probably guessed what was going on, and continued to ask. Yet. Yeah. Little Sakura just kept crying and crying, that Sayaran Lee didn't know what whispered to her, and then little Sakura suddenly seemed to wake up and found the erase card. She subdued her. Nami said dejectedly. I still don't forget to add, it's all because of Sayaran Lee. Otherwise, little Sakura may not be able to subdue the erase card, and maybe I will be subdued. Nami cursed silently in her mind, frickin' simp. Only. She forgot one thing. Someone is also Logan's simp. Logan understood, he smiled, and said, understood, in the end it was little Sakura who helped you get rid of the tattoo. Yet. Sakura is such a pure and lovely girl. She is also very friendly. Although she took away the card, she invited me to her house as a guest, so I am not so angry. Oh, by the way, that Sayaran Lee was not invited. Okay. Although you haven't subdued the erase card, you can remove the tattoo on your shoulder. This is something worth celebrating. Let's hold a banquet tomorrow and celebrate collectively. Looking at Nami's cute appearance full of resentment, Logan comforted with a smile. Hearing this, Nami's mood suddenly improved. She grabbed Logan's arm, he he, it's a good thing I have Logan. And, it's late now, it's time to go back to bed Logan said petting Nami's little head. However, Nami has no intention of letting go of Logan. Closing her eyes and leaning against Logan for a while, she said in a condescending tone, I can't walk, you have to carry me to my room. It's really a test to death. Naturally, Logan would not refuse this kind of thing. He stopped Nami's back with one hand, bent down and passed through Nami's leg with the other, and when he stood up, Nami was carried horizontally by her. Came to Nami's room, Logan gently put her on the bed, and then covered her with the quilt, then scraped her cute nose with fingers, and said softly, Good night. Okay, good night. With the residual warmth of Logan's Princess Carrie, Nami fell asleep happily. Time flies, a few days have passed. Going Mary is approaching an island full of primitive atmosphere. Little Garden Just from the appearance, the island is almost completely covered by dense and tall rainforest. From time to time, some strange beast calls and growls can be heard. In the cabin at this time, the studio. Logan is browsing the email records received in the past few days. Your manga fan Monkey D. Luffy has improved his world strength in the manga Akame GA Kill and Observation Haki has been promoted to intermediate level. You get its Observation Haki ability simultaneously. You get points plus two. Your manga fan Nami has conquered the big card in the world of manga card captor Sakura. You simultaneously acquire the big card abilities. You get points plus one. Your fan Kobe has improved his world strength in the manga Demon Slayer Zenitsu, 
and learn the second form of the breath of thunder, Inatama, Rice Spirit. You get its thunder breathing ability simultaneously, and you get plus two points. Your manga fan Usopp has cultivated the ability of Shikai, the god killing star flaming phoenix, in the world of the manga Bleach, Uritsunimeya. You simultaneously get the ability of Shikai, the god killing star, flaming phoenix. You get points plus one. Nami is still as strong as ever, and continues to make contributions. Luffy's strength improvement is very gratifying. This time the observation haki has been promoted to the intermediate level, which means that his two-color haki has reached the intermediate level. Even if he go to New World, he definitely going a strong player that cannot be ignored. Kobe actually learned the second form of Thunder Breath. This was a bit beyond Logan's expectation. After all, Zenitsu only learned one form from beginning to end. However, the talents of the two people are different, and it is understandable. Kabi's master is Jigoro Kawashima, not Zenitsu. Logan don't know if Zenitsu's mentality will collapse after seeing Kobe also learn the second form. Thinking of that unlucky boy, Logan couldn't help expressing his condolences silently. But what interests Logan the most is Usopp's ability. At first glance, this guy's Shikai abilities do match his own. But Logan did some research and found that the effect of this flaming phoenix was actually had as 32 OK's yellow fire flash. It's just that the power is not as powerful as that used by Urahara Kisuke in the Bleach manga. Not nerfed, but because Usopp has limited Ryatsu now. When his Ryatsu gradually becomes stronger, the power of this flaming phoenix will naturally become stronger and stronger. It's a pity, the points are 29, and there is only one point left to unlock the second stage of achievement rewards. He checked the points column, this one point that was close was really killing his obsessive compulsive disorder. Forget it, go to the deck and have a look, it is estimated that it will be docked soon. Logan reckoned that by the time they leave this island, they should be able to draw prizes. But just when he was about to close the system interface, a new email popped up. Good thing. He opened the mail and looked. Your fan Nefertari Vivi gain the black wing armor in the world of the manga fairy tale Urza Scarlet. You simultaneously gain the black wing armor. You get points plus one. It's actually a contribution from Princess Vivi. He have to say, Princess Vivi's talent is really good. In just a few days, she has actually gotten two kinds of armor. It seems that her future achievements will be good. Good. Looks like Princess Vivi is also my lucky star. After confirming that the points had become 30 points, Logan immediately opened the reward interface. Sure enough, the icon of the second treasure box has actually been lit up. From the appearance point of view, the second treasure box has more complicated textures than the first treasure box, which looks more mysterious and taller. Okay. It should be that the further back the treasure box, the better. Without thinking too much, Logan immediately opened the second treasure box. As the lid of the treasure chest was opened, golden light jumped out from inside. Then, a package-like prop jumped out of it. Marine 6 Styles Full Level Gift Pack, after using it, the host can instantly master all the moves of Marine 6 Styles. Compared with the previous Resurrection Gold Coins. The importance of Resurrection Gold Coins is self-evident. But with Logan's current strength, it is estimated that he may not be able to use Resurrection Coins in this life. But this Marine 6 Styles is different. Very convenient ability, the frequency of use will not be low. Use the Marine 6 Styles Pack. Logan gave an order. The package immediately burst into light, and then merged into Logan's body. As soon as Logan moved, he appeared outside the door in an instant. The principle of Soru is to step on a dozen times or even dozens of times in an instant, bursting out with a powerful speed. And the speed of full level Soru is even more terrifying. What's more, Logan's own speed attribute has been increased to a very terrifying level by the system. At this time, using the full level Soru on the basis of this speed can only be said. In addition, the most practical should be Jeppo. It can be said to be a high-level application of Soru, which can be used to exert force and change direction in the air by stepping on the air, so that people who have no flying ability can obtain explosive airborne ability. In addition, Kami-e is a very good defensive move, and if used well, it has magical effects. Shigen and Rank Yaku belong to the attack ability. The stronger the strength of these two abilities, the greater the power they will display. Perfect for Logan. Only one Takai skill was passed by Logan. It's not that this ability is not strong, but that this ability has a natural debuff ability. As we all know, in One Piece world, 
as long as you use the Tekai ability to defend, the battle is over. Yes, it ends with your failure. Isn't Tekai just as good in battle? Only one. That was the critical moment of the battle between Kaido and Luffy in the original plot, CP0 used Tekai to attack Luffy, the only successful case. But. Guys who fail to defend with Tekai, just fail or get hurt. And the only guy who justified the name of Tekai was sent to receive a blow by Kaido in less than 5 seconds after he succeeded. If someone fails with Tekai, they just fail. If you dare to perform well with Tekai, you will end up dead. From this we can see how terrible the curse of Tekai is. Although Logan is not superstitious, it is better not to touch this outrageous debuff. Wow. It's here. At this moment, Luffy's excited shout came from the deck outside. Well, it looks like the little garden adventure is about to begin. After closing the system interface, Logan went to the deck. Chapter 87 On the deck of Going Merry, everyone from the Straw Hat Pirates came here. Hey hey hey! Are we really going to disembark at this place? Usopp's face was not very good, and he looked around nervously, did you hear that? What was that terrible sound just now? Like some kind of bird. Sanji took a puff on the cigarette and said casually. Sanji, Sanji. Suddenly, Luffy called out abruptly. What? Sanji looked confused. Pirate Bento. I feel like I'm going on an adventure. Looking at the dense forest ahead, Luffy's face was full of excitement. Oh, okay. I'll do it. After understanding, Sanji went back to the cabin. Actually, we don't need to disembark here. There is no city on this island at first glance, and we can't go shopping after disembarking. Why don't we wait for the log post to store up the magnetic field of this island on the ship, and then we will go sail immediately. As a navigator, Nami gave very correct advice. Yes yes yes. Nami is absolutely right. Usopp hastened to agree, wishing to drag everyone from the ship immediately. Give up, Luffy wants to take an adventure, do you think someone can stop it by shouting a few words? At this time, Logan came over. He came to the front of the deck, looked at this island full of primitive atmosphere, and suddenly said, and, I want to see it too. In the previous life, Logan lived in a modern society made of steel and concrete, and it was impossible for him to step into this pure primitive forest. And in this life, with such an opportunity, how could Logan give up? Everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates has their own ideals. As for Logan, although he said that he wanted to draw everyone's journey into a manga. But more, Logan actually wants to see the world. Feel the charm and infinite scenery of Pirate World. Wow haha. Seeing that Logan was about to disembark, Luffy was very happy. Usopp looked at Nami bitterly. Nami, hurry up and persuade them. Can't you use your fist to persuade them? I've decided, I want to go on an adventure too. Nami pounced to Logan's side, holding his arm, where was the serious analysis before? What? Usopp yelled and fell to the ground depressed. I, I want to go too. Princess Vivi slowly raised her hand, showing a requesting gaze. No problem. Nami pulled Princess Vivi over. She held Logan in one arm and played with Princess Vivi in the other. She giggled and said, Logan and I will protect you. Seeing Nami's courageous appearance now, Logan was very pleased. With strength comes confidence. In the original plot, Nami and Usopp are known as a cowardly duo. And now, it's just Usopp's timid one-man show. Of course, Usopp actually has strength, but his timidity will not change for a while. Just like some people in the previous life suddenly became rich, but their temperament has not kept up. When it comes to Usopp, the strength suddenly increases, but the courage is still dragging its heels. Hey, hey, hey. You guys are so brave. No. Usopp is lying on the ground, almost foaming at the mouth. Zoro on the side stretched his arm and said, Anyway, I'm free, so I'll get off the ship and go for a walk. No. Logan immediately refused. Zoro wants to walk alone? Do not make jokes. He looked at Zoro, If you go for a walk, people will have to look for you all over the mountains. Zoro pouted, Ah? Isn't that exaggerated? No. Not at all. Very true. All crew members nodded seriously. Seeing those expression, Zoro scratched his head in embarrassment, but I also want to get off the ship. Then you can come with us. Logan said. Okay then. As long as he can walk around, 
Zoro has no problem. Soon, Sanji came out, carrying some bentos. What? Zoro is going to? Is he going to hunt? I'm no worse than him. Sanji, who had no plan to get off the ship, became interested at this time. That's not true. I was just afraid of him losing his way around and called him to come with me. Logan shook his head, then he looked at Usopp, Usopp, our ship is guarded by you, this is the lifeblood of our straw hat pirates. Don't worry. Brave sea warriors are not afraid of difficulties. Usopp got up from the ground and made a pose. Logan looked at Sanji, Sanji, you don't need get off the ship, Kaya needs some cooking meals, please help her. Wow. That's great. I will definitely take good care of the gentle and lovely Miss Kaya. Sanji immediately decided not to get off the ship. In this way, with Sanji and Usopp on board, there should be no problem. Even if the Baroque work took the opportunity to sneak in, the two of them could handle it completely. These arrangements should have been done by the captain, but Luffy's words. Forget it. Everyone is also used to having Logan arrange related matters every time they disembark. So the Straw Hat Pirates set foot on the territory of Little Garden. Dash dash. Suddenly there was a long roar, and then a huge long neck was lifted up from the forest. What? Princess Vivi's eyes widened instantly, and she looked at the giant in the sky in shock. Hey? Why are there sea kings on land? Luffy scratched his head, bewildered. Stupid, that's a dinosaur. Zoro complained. Wait. Vivi said the name of this place is Little Garden, right? Suddenly, Nami seemed to think of something. Princess Vivi looked at Nami, yes, it's called Little Garden. Nami suddenly realized, I remembered. I read a Little Garden before, which recorded the situation of this island. This island should be an island that completely stayed in the age of dinosaurs. Yes, the islands on the Grand Line are extremely difficult due to navigation. There is no communication between many islands, so many islands will maintain their independence. Somewhere, there are highly civilized islands, and there are also islands like this that have not evolved for thousands of years, or even tens of thousand years, and have maintained a completely primitive style. Boom! At this moment, a loud roar came. Everyone immediately looked towards the center of the island, which was the direction where the roar was generated. It's a volcanic eruption. Seeing the black rock rising suddenly, Nami immediately made a judgment. This huge dinosaur seemed to be frightened, and immediately started to go crazy, destroying the forest with his super big neck crazily. Brush. Suddenly, a broad axe slashed across the sky, cutting off the dinosaur's long neck directly. Boom. 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 Accompanied by the roar of the earth, a huge giant whose stature was no less than that of a dinosaur hit the ground with its huge feet and ran forward. Did you, see? Luffy's expression was wonderful, his eyes were round and round, and he was completely unbelievable. Look, see. A drop of cold sweat appeared on Zoro's side cheek. The person who passed by just now? It's the first time he have seen such guy with a mountain size. Giant, giant. Suddenly cold sweat dripped down on her fair cheeks, and Princess Vivi's eyes rolled in horror. After all, she was also a person who participated in the World Summit, so of course she knew about the existence of the giant race. Giant race? Is there such a tall human race? Hearing what Princess Vivi said, Nami asked curiously. Although the giant is scary, she has the claw card, so she is not afraid at all. What's more, there is Logan by his side. Yes, but they shouldn't live in this place. Although she can't remember the name of the island where the giants are located, Princess Vivi is sure that this is definitely not the hometown of the giants. Hey hey hey! He ran over there. There seems to be something he is eager to see. Luffy yelled to everyone, and immediately gave chase. Come on, let's go and have a look. Logan also followed. Nami is like a pendant on Logan's body, and this time there is a string of two, a Vivi in series. Not long after, everyone came to a rather sparse primitive forest not far from the volcano. House. Unexpectedly there are two more. Seeing the two giants like hills appear in front of his eyes, Zoro bared his teeth, and the cold sweat came out of his side cheeks again. Luffy cheered, wow. It's so big. The volcano erupted again, that's the signal for our duel. Dory, are you ready to lose to me? Red Ogre Broggy came up to him, brandishing a broad tomahawk. Yahaha. Broggy, 
for the sake of honor, I will definitely win this 73,466th battle. Blue Ogre Dori held up the sword in his hand, and slashed at Red Ogre Bragi with all his might. They have fought more than 70,000 battles. Listening to what the two giants said just now, Princess Vivi was shocked. It seems to be like this. Nami also nodded blankly, and then asked in confusion, what kind of hatred do these two guys have, why are they fighting such a battle? Logan explained, I have heard some sayings about the giant clan. If there is an irreconcilable dispute between two people in their village, then the solution is this kind of duel. Zoro frowned, in this case, in fact, I still don't know who is right and who is wrong. Logan spread his hands with a smile, that's right. But they believe that their gods will let the right people survive, so dueling is the only way for them to solve the problem. Your knowledge is really broad listening to Logan's narration, even Vivi, the princess of the kingdom, couldn't help being amazed. You know, she has been to many places since she was a child, but at most she knows that there are giants. But she didn't expect Logan to look so young, but he even knew giant customs. As a mangaka I need a lot of creative inspiration, so I usually like to read various books and newspapers, and it is normal to know a lot. Logan explained a little bit. He he he, it's amazing Nami hugged Logan's arm even tighter. So, they have fight more than 70,000 pstil and have not yet decided the winner? Why did this happen? At this time, Luffy discovered the problem. I also think it's outrageous Zoro bared his teeth, feeling speechless too. Haha. Ha. You are right. In fact, if you want to decide the outcome, one game is enough. The so-called draw is that both sides are unwilling to end these kinds of battles. Logan said with a smile. Just then, he heard a loud roar. 73466. 73466. Blue Ogre Dory and Red Ogre Bragi stopped at the same time, and then burst out laughing. Did you see it? In fact, they didn't intend to decide the outcome you still have strength, why don't you fight? When you are exhausted, there will always be someone who can make up the last sword. Hey! Little ones! Don't think that we can't hear you because you are small. Elbaf's honor must never be tarnished. Blue Ogre Dory suddenly turned his head and looked at Logan and the others behind him. Ah Princess Vivi was a little startled, and subconsciously leaned against Nami. Another giant, Red Ogre Bragi, looked at Logan, especially that brat, you actually know about our Elbaf traditions, it's really surprising. Logan shrugged slightly, noncommittal. At that time, Luffy asked curiously, you have fought so many battles, it should take a lot of time. Blue Ogre Dory said, yeah, it have been 100 years. Red Ogre Bragi also laughed, haha, that's right. I keep track of the time, it's indeed 100 years. As soon as these words came out, Luffy opened his mouth in shock, aha. You have been fighting for 100 years. Blue Ogre Dory laughed. Don't make such a fuss. We live three times as long as you. Ga ha 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 ha. But even if you have such a long lifespan, after 100 years, your enthusiasm for fighting should have cooled down? What kind of deep hatred can make you fight for so long? Princess Vivi's little face was full of confusion. When did the agreement start, as long as the volcano erupts is the signal for us to fight? But the reason for our dispute, has long been forgotten. Ha ha. This is for honor. You don't understand. The views of the two giants seem to agree. Ha 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 ha. At this moment, Logan laughed out loud. Laughing presumptuously. Little devil, why are you laughing? Annoyed by Logan's laughter, the two giants looked at Logan at the same time. Logan said with a smile, if you really want to decide the winner, I have a good way. Oh? Tell me. Both giants showed expressions of interest. You two fight me separately. Whoever lasts more seconds in the battle with me will be the stronger one. Logan said. What? The anger of Blue Ogre Dory and Red Ogre Bragi rises at the same time. Arrogant. Chapter 88 What do the giants of Elbaf care about the most? That is of course the honor of a warrior. If they are provoked by others, needless to say whether it is aggressive or not, they will definitely not back down. What's more, he is an ordinary human who is so small in their eyes. How can this? be endured. Even, the most outrageous thing. This tiny human actually uses seconds to judge how long the two of them can last in his hands? The dignified Elbaf's powerful fighter is actually just a second boy in the eyes of others. Hateful. Hateful. 
Little man, since you ask it, then I will fight with you. I will crush you. Blue Ogre Dori was very angry. He held the shield in one hand and the sword in the other, roaring loudly. No. Let me do it. I want to crush this guy into a pulp with an axe. Red Ogre also didn't want to back down, he looked at Roland condescendingly, Boy, you are too arrogant. Dare to underestimate Elbaf's fighters, you must be sanctioned by the Elbaf god. No. Let me clean up this bastard. You rest by the side, I'll get it done in a second. Blue Ogre Dori and Red Ogre Bragi pushed each other, in order to compete for the first place to fight with Logan, they almost fought. Ah, it seems that this battle can't be fought. Zoro looked at the scene in front of him, and sat on the ground next to him speechless. Ah ha ha ha. Logan's method is so good, I want to fight. Let me do it. Luffy took a big mouthful of smile at Logan, eager to try. All right Logan doesn't care. For things like fighting, Logan is not very keen, he just wants to use a method to make the two giants decide the outcome. Actually if Luffy wants to fight, so give him the chance to train. Shia hia he. Seeing that Logan was willing to give up the opportunity, Luffy was very excited. He jumped to the front and yelled at the two giants, who will fight with me. The two giants froze for a moment. Then yelled at the same time, get out of here. We are going to clean up that bastard. Dare to defy the honor of Elbaf fighters, we will never let him go. Nobody wants to fight for him. Aluffy froze for a moment, fell asleep with his arms and dragged his tongue and came back. It seems that they want to fight with you. Nami blinked her eyes. Okay it seems that they want me to exercise my muscles. Logan pulled his arms out of Nami's embrace, and walked towards the two giants. Although the two giants in front of them are tall and mighty, their actual strength is really mediocre. In the original plot, even Luffy, who just went out to sea, is not weaker than these two giants. But think about it. In the whole world of One Piece, the giant race seems to have no top-level powerhouse, author forgot about Big Mom. He don't know if it's because this race puts all their talent points on the body, so the talent in training is very weak. Hey! Are you guys are trying to avoid fighting with me, pretending to have a dispute this fierce? Maybe I should go. As a man who traveled from the 21st century, in terms of talking trash, he has the buff bonus of the keyboard man in his previous life. Just a word can make the other half angry. Of course, if Logan can't find a way to stop the two of them from arguing, who knows when this battle will start. Sure enough, as soon as Logan said this, the two giants stopped immediately. Ah! Damn bastard! Blue Ogre Dory exploded, he roared, Broggy, I'll let you go first. You beat his head to the ground. Okay. You don't need to say I will do it. Then beat him to the ground, and then we will fight again. Red Ogre Broggy turned to face Logan with the battle axe in his hand. What a disgrace. It's a disgrace that the mighty Elbaf fighter should bully such a small man. Broggy was very upset to fight normal size Logan thinking he has unfair advantage. Oh? Think I'm too small? Logan frowned. This can't work. Thinking of this. Logan mentally communicated with the big card. This is the claw card that Nami just got. Let's say Nami is Logan's lucky star. If she hadn't worked so hard to get a big card before arriving at Little Garden, then Logan can only stare at being ridiculed. You think I'm small, don't you? I'll show you what it means to be big. The energy of the claw card instantly filled Logan's whole body. Rumble. His body size is growing rapidly. The towering ancient tree that originally covered the sky around Logan has already been stepped on by him at this time, and it collapsed. What? Luffy was stunned in shock. Zoro was also shocked by the sudden scene and fell to the ground. Wow, so big. Nami opened her red lips slightly, her eyes are still full of admiration for Logan. Yeah, it's really big. Princess Vivi's face trembled slightly, she was also stunned, and murmured, He, how could he be so big? It's a big card. The ability of the claw card with that said, Nami explained the claw card to Princess Vivi. In a blink of an eye, Logan's stature climbed to the size of Elbaf's giant. However, it has risen a bit more, it looks like it is a head taller than the two giants. Little? Now what? Who's little? Logan looked down at Red Ogre Broggy slightly, and teased lightly. The corner of Red Ogre's mouth twitches. For the giants of Elbaf, size is what speaks volumes. Now the opponent is as big as him and taller than him by a head, Broggy immediately recognized that Logan has the strength to match him. 
However, when he was about to do it, he found that Logan's hands were empty. Immediately, he said, Dory, lend this guy your weapon. The god of Elbath will never admit the result of my battle with an unarmed guy. On this point, Dory and Bragi agree. Fight a defenseless man with a weapon in your hand, even if you are victorious, the god of Elbath will never recognize your honor. Brush. The huge sword flew towards Logan. What a big sword. It feels like a train is flying past. Giant is really an exaggerated race. Logan easily caught Dory's sword, tried it a few times, felt that it was not easy, and then threw it back. You want to be empty-handed? You look down on me. Red Ogre Bragi was furious. Hey, I said you giants are really, can't your mind be enlarged? Logan shrugged, and then said, I'm not used to using his sword, since you want me to fight with a weapon, I'll just use my own weapon. Speaking, Logan mentally communicated with the magic source of physical strength, and activated the Requip magic. The magic wave surged instantly, forming a protective film to completely cover Logan. The original clothes dissipated, replaced by a large amount of magic steel that appeared out of nowhere. Ah! What is this? It was the first time for Luffy to see such a tall thing, and he jumped up in excitement. Are you kidding? He can transform like this? It's so cool. Zoro. Also look straight in the eyes. Nami exclaimed, My god. Whose ability is this why have I never seen it? I don't know, it's not mine. Luffy shook her head hastily. It's not mine either. Zoro also denied it, before adding, It's probably not Sanji and Usopp's either. Whose is it then? Nami was puzzled, turned to look at Princess Vivi, and asked, Have you read the manga? However, Princess Vivi didn't seem to hear Nami's words, but her pupils were wide open, her mouth was slightly opened, and she was in a state of shock. He muttered in his mouth, It's so, so big. Hey, hey, hey. It's been over a while ago, it shouldn't be time to marvel at the cool magic armor around Logan. Nami reached out and swiped up and down in front of Princess Wei's eyes. Princess Vivi, why did she react so much? Logan summoned the armor of the Sky Wheel, and suddenly thought of Princess Vivi's previous operation in his mind so he subconsciously looked at Princess Vivi. F-L-A-R. Princess Vivi must have thought of the previous incident, otherwise why did her cheeks turn red again? Thinking of this, Logan felt secretly embarrassed. Um? No, where is Princess Vivi looking? Logan followed Princess Vivi's gaze in confusion. Hey hey hey. What's the situation? Could it be that his magic wave is also ineffective on her? No way. It was originally thought that Princess Vivi's reaction was to recall the scene where she herself used the Requip magic before. But if he take a closer look, Logan feels more and more wrong. But he didn't have time to think about this matter at this time, because Red Ogre Bragi had already rushed over clamoring. Good. This is the qualified opponent of Elbaf Fighter. Of. A huge tomahawk came from the air, setting off a violent gust of wind. Logan raised his hand, Logan's sword easily blocked the slash. What? Red Ogre Bragi's eyes were shocked. He slashed vigorously, but was easily blocked by the person in front of him. How can that be? It's my turn. Logan raised his left leg, went up and kicked Bragi. This kick uses the ticking principle of Marine Six styles, which greatly increases the power it sends out. Not only that, Logan also opened the first gate of eight inner gates. As for why not open the second gate? That's because Logan was afraid that he would drive high and kick Bragi to death. He's here to persuade, not to kill. Even, he didn't even dare to use armament hacky. Boom. The moment the foot touched, Red Ogre felt as if he was hit by a continuous mountain. His huge figure was like being carried by an extremely fast off-string arrow, and he flew upside down with a whoosh. Boom. The mountain wall not far away exploded, and Bragi was deeply embedded in it. Bragi. Underscore Blue Ogre Dory yelled in shock. The battle is over, 3.2 seconds Nami has been recording the time for Logan, and at this time, she played the role of the counting clerk. After waiting for a while, they saw that just as Bragi struggled out of the mountain wall, he threw himself on the ground. Then, it's your turn Logan looked at Dory and raised his eyebrows. Blue Ogre Dory took a deep breath. Just now Logan's fighting power made him feel terrified. Only. Elbaf's sense of honor as a warrior urges him not to back down. Okay. Come on. Blue Ogre Dory stepped on his feet, 
and his whole body was like a Tyrannosaurus Rex running wildly, rushing fiercely towards Logan. The sword in his hand slashed across. It's sword against sword. Seeing this, Logan swept the sword of in his hand. Two swords collide. There was a deafening roar on the island of Little Garden. Next moment. Boom. The sword in Blue Ogre Dory's hand shattered instantly. The blade of Logan's sword lay heavily on Dory's body. Boom. Immediately afterwards, Dory also followed in Broggy's footsteps and was ruthlessly embedded in the mountain wall. Wow. It's faster this time, it only took two seconds. Nami said with a cheer. Done. Logan's mental strength moved, and he left to cancel the armor of the sky wheel. He subconsciously looked at Princess Vivi, only to find that Princess Vivi's red lips grew in horror again, and her eyes were full of complicated lust. Then, the eyes of the two met. Princess Vivi's cheeks were covered with a layer of red, and the corners of her lips touched. What the hell? Logan can be sure that the magic wave cannot stop Princess Vivi's sight. What's the situation? Why? Is it because this ability was acquired by Princess Vivi, so she also has a certain privilege in the ability to requip? Thinking about it carefully, it seems very possible. According to this theory, that is to say, whoever train the ability will have a certain privilege. And Logan, as the master of mangas, has a higher privilege for all abilities. I'll find time to ask Vivi later, if she really sees through the magic wave. After thinking about it, Logan also removed the ability of the big card and returned to normal. Chapter 89 Broggy and Dory waited for a long time before sitting up slowly. Although Logan's attack was heavy, it didn't aim to be fatal. It just made the two of them temporarily lose their ability to move. Dory lasted for two seconds in my hands, and Broggy lasted for about three seconds in my hands. The gap is obvious, and Broggy is slightly better. Logan looked at the two and announced their results. Eh this gap is really obvious. Zoro clicked his tongue. The gap of one second. It's only a one second gap, they shouldn't be convinced, right? Princess Vivi said in a low voice. Nami also agreed, nodded, and responded in a low voice, I think so too. Logan smiled, no. The outcome has been decided, and they will definitely agree. To be honest, Logan can completely manipulate this kind of victory. But for the stubborn giant race, they have to use a duel to judge right or wrong, so how could they question the outcome? No matter what the method is, no matter whether there is unfairness or not, their sense of honor as fighters will never allow them to flinch in any way. Just like in the original plot, Dory was obviously injured by a bomb. But when the signal of volcanic eruption appeared, he still went to duel with Broggy without hesitation. There is no slightest intention to use injury as an excuse. This is the almost pervert sense of honor of the giants. I won. Dory. Although the pain in his body has not been completely relieved, Broggy shouted excitedly. This battle has lasted for a century. Broggy showed his huge front teeth excitedly, and shouted, 73,466 fight. I lost. Blue Ogre Dory sat slumped on the ground, he murmured, this is the judgment made by the god of Elbaf, he didn't protect me. That's all. As Logan said, Blue Ogre Dory didn't find any excuses, and accepted his failure frankly. Ha 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 ha. Tears welled up in Red Ogre's happy eyes. Too long. The battle ended suddenly, he didn't know whether he should be happy or cry. This is the battle that has accompanied them for 100 years. Now suddenly lost, his heart seems to be empty. At this time, Logan's words first rang in their ears. I heard that the fighters of Elbaf not only have the lofty honor of fighters, but when the duel is over, no matter what the reason for the previous dispute is, it doesn't matter. They will accept each other again with a broad mind. I really admire this kind of soldier's honor and bravery. The point is, Logan believes that the giants must love to hear this. In the words of the 21st century, Logan is called moral kidnapping. It's just that other people's moral kidnapping is usually for disgusting things, but Logan here for good things. Essentially there is a difference. Sure enough, when Logan said this, the giant Broggy blushed and stopped celebrating. Dory. We have been fighting for 100 years, and lasted more than 70,000 battles. In fact, the outcome is not important anymore. Stepping up to Dory, Broggy stretched out his big hand to Dory, I don't think I need to say it, you should feel it too. We have actually established an unbreakable friendship in the past 100 years. Ahahaha. Hearing this, Dory's eyes were filled with tears, 
and he said solemnly, Yes. One hundred years. Congratulations, Broggy, you conquered me with a victory. Dory grabbed Broggy's extended hand, borrowed some strength, and stood up with a swipe. Dory. Broggy looked deeply at Blue Ogre Dory. Broggy. Dory also looked deeply at Red Ogre Broggy. Hey. Dash. The two hugged each other fiercely, with tears in their eyes youth. Wow ha ha. Great. They finally reconciled. Luffy raised his hands high, he likes to watch this kind of happy ending. Zoro picked his ears, actually, they reconciled a long time ago, but they lacked an opportunity. Logan just gave them this opportunity. Logan give thumbs up to Zoro. He is indeed the most calm existence of the whole Straw Hat Pirates. An hour later. A small barbecue banquet was held at the foot of the volcano. This dinosaur meat barbecue is really delicious. Luffy was carrying a piece of barbecue bigger than others, and his mouth was full of oil. It's really chewy. It seems that the bigger the animal is, the more delicious it will be when chewing. While eating the barbecue, Zoro was thinking, we must hunt a dinosaur back later, so that Sanji can cook a few big meals. That's right. Just bring them all. Luffy agreed. Uncle, by the way, how long do the log pos on this island need to be stored? Nami ate a piece of roasted dinosaur tendon, and she didn't forget to twitch her fingers, it's delicious. It will probably take a year Broggy bit off a dinosaur hind leg, and answered casually. Oh, eh, what? The dinosaur tendon in his mouth suddenly became unsavory, Nami looked at Broggy with wide eyes in horror, and stretched out a finger, you mean, a year. Yet. When you came here, didn't you see a lot of human skulls piled up there? Dory ate the meat and pointed in a direction towards the foot of the volcano. Luffy nodded, I see. I thought those people were killed by you guys. Ah ha We're not interested in those people. They all died on this island before the log pose filled the magnetic field. Red Ogre Broggy laughed out loud, and then he explained, in order to prevent their corpses from being eaten by dinosaurs, we specially found the corpses of these dead people at the foot of the volcano. That's how it is MN Zoro nodded understandingly. Luffy also smiled happily, sure enough. It's impossible for an upright fighter like the uncles to do that kind of thing. Haha. <laughs> hey, 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 don't you guys understand the situation? Uncle just said that the magnetic field of this island needs to be recorded for a year. Seeing that his friends are still there, Nami is so worried. It's clear, but it's no use worrying. Zoro took another piece of meat and stuffed it into his mouth, it's better to eat a little more so that you will have the strength to go around the island later, maybe you can find a way. Yet. Yeah. I'll eat more. Luffy happily grabbed two big stick bones. Nami has an urge to hit someone. Why don't these two foodies support her? Logan, what shall we do next? Nami approached Logan, and put her cheek on Logan's shoulder tiredly. This scene really made Vivi on the side envious. Nami is tired and has someone to rely on, but what about her? Thinking of seeing the huge size of the giant Logan when he changed his magic armor, Princess Vivi's heart immediately felt like a drumbeat. There is a saying in my hometown, that is, when the ship arrives at the bridge, it will go straight. Logan smiled, turned his head to look at this cute cheek on his shoulder, scratched Nami's little nose, and then said, as Zoro said, let's eat first. The problem should be solved it will always be resolved. Hmm, okay depressed for a while. Nami took the opportunity to coquettishly and opened her mouth, ah. Logan could still understand this voice. This is what she want to eat. Logan tore off a strip from his own barbecue and stuffed it into Nami's mouth. It really made Vivi on the side look greedy. After they were full, the Straw Hat Pirates bid farewell to the two giants and continued their adventure in Little Garden. Walking on the path in the rainforest. It's useless for us to wander around like this Nami is still worrying about recording pointers. Since she learned that the magnetic field of this island needs to be recorded for a year, she have been observing the recording progress of the recording pointer. The more she observed, the more her mentality collapsed. Because she found that it would really take a year to record at this speed. Relax, don't think about log pose anymore. For a few days, just treat it as a relaxation. Logan patted Nami on the shoulder, smiling and comforting. You can still laugh. Nami frowned, lowered her head her two little hands were tangled together. She is really worried about this matter. Even in such difficulties and dangers, with only Logan by her side, Nami will not feel any fear or tension. 
but only in the matter of recording the magnetic field, no matter how powerful it is, it can't help. Looking at Nami's worried look, Logan is both funny and concerned. Indeed, Logan has no way for Logpose to record the magnetic field quickly. But he knew that in the sea not far from the little garden island, there was a small resort island MR3 and Miss Golden Week stationed there with a group of Baroque work subordinates. Although Logan doesn't know where the island is, but he knows one thing. MR3 has been planning to capture Dory and Broggy. The bounty offered by these two giants totaled 200 million belly, which was a huge temptation for MR3. And according to the plot timeline, in the next few days, MR3 will definitely come. Since this guy dared to come, he definitely didn't plan to stay on this island for a full year before leaving. Therefore, MR3 must have a eternal pose in his hand, which can point to a certain island, so that he can leave the little garden island smoothly. At least, there must be a eternal pose to the resort island. So all they have to do now is wait. Just wait for MR3 to send them the log pose. Ah. Uh, I'm going to go walk somewhere else, and find a year's rations on the way. Zoro felt that he was feeling bothered by Logan and Nami flirting, and he firmly didn't want to go with Logan and the others again. Oh, really sensible. Nami finally felt a little better, and smiled brightly. Of course, Zoro has always been very sensible. Unlike that idiot Sanji, ahaha Logan said with a smile. Zoro gritted his teeth, what two hateful guys. Nami looked at Luffy again, by the way, Luffy, don't you want to follow Zoro? Otherwise, he will definitely get lost later. Yet. Yeah. Luffy didn't feel the pressure at all, he just thought Nami was right. Zoro, wait for me. With that said, Luffy chased after Zoro. This time, Princess Vivi is embarrassing. Normal people can feel it, and of course a smart girl like Princess Vivi can also feel it. I, why don't I go for a stroll? Although she felt a bit bitter in her heart. No need. Let's go together. Nami smiled and pulled Princess Vivi's arm into her arms, and on the other hand pulled Logan's arm into her arms. Inadvertently, the arms of Logan and Princess Vivi were all leaning together. Feeling the temperature from Logan's arm, Princess Vivi was startled, and subconsciously looked at Logan. When her eyes fell on Logan's handsome face, her heart jumped. With a swipe, Princess Vivi's face turned red all the way to the ears, and she hurriedly lowered her head shyly. Chapter 90 The leisure time in Little Garden has passed for several days, and it can be regarded as a rare relaxing time. Although Nami was still worried, being able to visit the big forest with Logan made her feel much better. Going Mary In the studio Logan is checking his mail. In the past few days he have not received many emails from it. There are only two of them. Your manga fan Rorano Azoro has improved his world strength in the manga Zaraki Kenpeki biography, and Zoro's sword has evolved into the prototype of Zanpakut. You get points, plus one. Your fan Nami has conquered the snow in the world of the manga card captor Sakura. You get the snow card ability simultaneously. You get points, plus one. Although there are only two system emails, this news from Zoro surprised Logan. Zoro sword has evolved becoming a prototype of Zanpakut? What's going on? Moreover, this ability has not been synchronized to Logan. System. What's the situation? Why did Zoro's sword evolve into a Zanpakut prototype, but I didn't get it it? Logan asked the system a question. After a while. Logan shook his head slightly. Sure enough, this broken system is not a system that can communicate. Just some simple prompts, stylized dialogue and the like. Forget it, don't expect the system to give an answer. As long as Zoro's sword continues to be Zanpakut, Logan feels that he will always know the reason. Another system message is from Nami. Nami is awesome. Although many Clow cards have limited functions, they can continue to provide Logan with points. This is very capable. Let me go. At this moment, an angry roar came from the little garden group. It's Broggy. Logan's eyes narrowed slightly. It seems that the giant is shouting, and it seems to be in trouble. Nami came to Logan's studio for the first time. Yes, let's go and see. Logan nodded, but he was happy in his heart. Because on this island, it is almost impossible for any animal to pose a threat to Dory and Broggy. The only people who can really trouble the two of them are the guys from the Baroque work. Now that the people from the Baroque work have come, the eternal pose will naturally also come. Coming to the deck, other members of the Straw Hat Pirates have also arrived. It's Broggy's cry, he must need help. 
Without saying a word, Luffy jumped off the deck and rushed towards the volcano. For the loyalty of friends, Luffy is always very reliable. This idiot is not afraid of getting lost if he rushes like this. I'll go after him. Zoro jumped down quickly and chased after Luffy. Seeing this situation, Logan quickly shouted, Damn! Sanji go after Zoro, don't let him get lost. Okay, you can count on me. During the past few days, Sanji also got off the ship and wandered around the island, so he also got to know Dori and Bragi. Hearing Bragi's cry now, he wanted to help too. Let's go too. Nami said. Logan shook his head, you and Vivi stay here and watch the ship, I'll go. Since it is very likely that people from Baroque work show up, it is necessary to prevent those guys from stealing the ship. Well, okay Nami thought about it, but Usopp was alone on the ship and had to take care of Kaya, which was indeed a bit disturbing. But with her and Princess Vivi around, it would be different. During these few days of getting along, the relationship between her and Princess Vivi has become more harmonious, and the two seem to have a tendency to develop into best friends. Logan didn't delay any more, he stepped on his foot and jumped out quickly. After changing direction several times in the air, he fell into the depths of the rainforest and rushed towards Bragi's place. Not long after, Logan came to the foot of the volcano. In the air, the pungent smell of candle oil came into the nostrils. Needless to say, MR3 must be here. Dori and Bragi were lying on the ground at this time, their limbs were pierced by the sharp sword solidified by the candle, and they were nailed to the ground. Although they are giants, they can only serve as fish on the chopping board in the face of devil fruit power. Beside the two of them, there is a tall candle holder like a cake tower. The candle holder above is constantly rotating, and a large amount of candle oil falls down from the rotating candle holder, gradually covering Dori and Bragi. Haha! <laughs> The candle statue made of giants is really a perfect work of art. If your bounty is not too tempting, I really want to keep you in my wax museum. Next to the tall candle holder, the man standing there comfortably with his hands folded in front of him, isn't he the MR3 from Baroque Works? A blue and white striped short-sleeved shirt, paired with beige trousers, and a purple bow at the neckline, is also very cool. Most importantly, on his left wrist, he wears a log pose. It is good. Target found. Logan feels more at ease. Eh? No. Those guys are ahead of me, why haven't they come here to save people? Logan glanced over. Dory. Broggy. MR3. MS Golden Week. Luffy. Um? Luffy? This tea tastes really good, let's have another cup on the grass. Luffy is sitting on a picnic blanket, with a small wooden table in the middle, drinking tea. Opposite him, sat a little kiff dressed in a sporty style. With big black eyes, double ponytails, and pear-shaped red cheeks on both cheeks, she looks very cute. Only. She is not Luffy's friend, but MR3's partner, MS Golden Week. It's a pity that the time is too rushed, otherwise the tea will be more fragrant and rich if it is brewed for a longer time. While talking about the tea, MS Golden Week picked up the teapot and refilled a cup for Luffy. On the back of Luffy's clothing, there is a striking piece of green paint. It turns out that he fell into the color trap Logan understood. Ms. Golden Week is not devil fruit power, but she is good at color paint, comparable to the effect of hypnosis. For a simple head like Luffy, the abilities of hypnosis and hint can almost exert 200% effect. Logan's current ability is enough to crush the two present, but he feels. If he can be careful, it's better to be careful. Who knows if he accidentally touched the paint of Ms. Golden Week what kind of disaster would happen? Then, Logan palmed, and a cloud card appeared in his hand. He glanced at the sky above his head at MS Golden Week. Wow! A blue lightning suddenly intertwined out of thin air, forming a thick beam of lightning, which fell from the sky in an instant. Hack! Ms. Golden Week hadn't finished her tea yet, and was knocked to the ground, smoking non-stop. Although the appearance of Ms. Golden Week is cute, but Logan will not be soft on the enemy. Ruthless. In Logan's eyes, it doesn't matter who you are, as long as you are an enemy, you should subdue them first. Miss Golden Week. Unexpectedly, MR3 saw a bolt of lightning falling from the sky, which knocked over the MS Golden Week, and it really shocked MR3. He hurried over and confirmed that Miss Golden Week was not in danger, and he was relieved. But seeing the unlucky appearance of Miss Golden Week, MR3 smiled wryly and asked. Hey, hey, hey. 
Have you done something bad recently, why is lightning hitting you in this clear sky? Tongue is also numb, how can she speak? But she turned her eyes very hard, and looked behind MR3. What are you looking at? Is there something on my shoulder? MR3 looked toward his shoulders, but didn't notice anything. But MS Golden Week's eyes are still looking towards MR3's shoulder. Is she becoming stupid, did the lightning cause her brain to malfunction? Suddenly realizing this possibility, MR3's expression on his face was not very good. But as soon as he finished speaking, he suddenly felt a strong force tightening on his hair. Then he felt someone was pulling his hair up. Stupid, she is looking at me behind you. Logan held MR3 like pulling a carrot, and said calmly. MR3 was in pain all over his hair, turned his head with difficulty, and immediately saw his enemy a tall guy. Logan used the big card then, with his other hand activated the ability of rubber fruit, which instantly wrapped around MR3's two arms, restraining M3 completely. The reason for adopting such a safe method is mainly to worry that the eternal pose on MR3's wrist will be accidentally broken during the battle. Otherwise, when lightning struck MS Golden Week just now, MR3 should be electrocuted together. Bastard, who are you? What is this devil fruit ability? Suddenly encountering such an unresisting thing, MR3 shouted in shock. After one arm of Logan completely restrained MR3, the palm continued to extend until it came to MR3's left wrist, and he could only carefully take the eternal POS. Brush. After it entered the system space, Logan was completely relieved. Then he threw MR3 aside, Logan picked up Luffy who was still drinking tea there, and turned his back to the grass, like a rag, wiped the rag hard. Ah. Damn, I actually got that damn paint. I have to teach her a lesson. With the paint wiped off behind him, Luffy regained consciousness. No need, I've already taken care of her, there's another one over there, take him to vent your anger Logan shrugged, then pouted in the direction of M3. Um? They obviously capture me, but then let me go. Then? Is it to make my companions take it out on me? Asshole. How dare you underestimate me? Idiots, you will regret what you just did. MR3 got angry and the candles came rolling in. A large lump of candle oil suddenly appeared in his hands, and he flung it towards Logan. Candle shackles. Stupid. Your opponent is me now. As soon as Luffy stretched out his hand, his arm stretched out, and the candle shackle was intercepted in the air. Nanny? How come you two are noodle people? MR3 showed a bewildered expression. You are the noodle man. Logan and Luffy also raised strong objections to the nickname given to them by MR3. This is the rubber fruit ability, idiot. Luffy's arm was directly thrown out, and it hit MR3's body with a bang, blasting him hard against a big tree. FK. This power is so strong. MR3 spat out a mouthful of blood, feeling like his soul was almost blown away. Large candle shackles. He didn't dare to think too much, and desperately activated the fruit ability. The candle oil, which was bigger than others, was smashed hard at Luffy. Wow. Luffy didn't dodge and was hit accurately. Ha ha ha. You are finished. Once my candle solidifies, it is harder than steel. With one hit, MR3 thinks he can do it again. But at this moment. Boom. The block of candle that had sealed Luffy exploded. MR3 opened his eyes wide in shock, what? How is it possible? Although it hasn't been completely solidified yet, this is by no means something that ordinary people can break free with their energy. When his eyes fell on Luffy's arms. Throat. He almost choked to death with my own breath. Woo. Armament hacky. Suddenly, MR3 wondered if he was dreaming. What are you kidding? Such a young guy has armament hacky. You must know that among the agents in the Baroque works, only the boss has cultivated hacky. Nobody else not a single person. He has also been in the Grand Line for a while. Naturally understand what Haki stands above all. Strong. There is no doubt that this is the symbol of strength. However, he has no time to think about these at this time. I hate you noodle man. When? Luffy's displeased voice came, followed by Luffy's giant punch. Boom. Poor MR3. He was directly blasted into the tree trunk and fell to the ground after rolling his eyes. Chapter 91 Goodbye, our friend. In the river port of Little Garden, Dory and Broggy wave goodbye to going merry. Wow haha. Uncles. 
Hope to see you again in the future. Luffy sat on the railing and said goodbye to the giants happily. From now on, no one will disturb you on this island, ahaha looking at the two, Logan always felt that the relationship between these two guys has surpassed friendship. Is that something like love? Ha ha ha. In the original plot, the knot between the last two people has been untied, but these two guys still did not leave Little Garden, but stayed there. Hey hey hey. What are you going to do with us? On the deck, MR3, who was tied into rice dumplings, asked with a worried face. The whole body is tied up with steel bars, from head to toe, it is almost completely tightened. This kind of steel bar can be broken for Logan, Nami, and others, but non-strength players like MR3 can't move it. There is no way, the straw hats don't have sea stone in their hands at the moment, and they can't limit the devil fruit power, so they can only use the safest way to tie up MR3 completely. Even if MR3 uses the wax wax fruit ability, he is not Logia after all, and he cannot use elementalization to escape. Please, one of you has a bounty of 24 million belly, and the other has a bounty of 29 million belly, and you still ask what we want to do with you. Nami came over. The small magic wand in his hand knocked on MR3's forehead. Really? Bastard. You are pirates yourself, you still do this kind of thing. Hearing this, MR3 was filled with righteous indignation and angrily accused everyone in the Straw Hat Pirates. He was furious, this is so unethical. Um? Speaking of thieves? Logan looked at MR3 with a funny face, and slapped him on the back of the head, damn. Didn't you also plan to catch Dory and Broggy for bounties? You still have the face to say us. Oh, yes. MR3 was slapped and forced, and then he was honest. But he didn't stop talking, and asked angrily, we are all prisoners, why should she be treated differently? He looked at himself who was tied up into a mummy by steel bars, and then at the MS Golden Week with hands and feet tied behind their backs. MR3 is very unconvinced. Snapped. Logan slapped him on the back of the head again. If it weren't for the 30% more bounty for living, we would have taken your corpse directly. Besides, if you talk nonsense, I'll throw you into the sea to feed the fish. Cursing his lips, Logan then pointed to MS Golden Week, look at her. Stay here quietly and don't do anything. This is what a prisoner should look like, understand? Golden Week nodded, yes, I am very quit. By the way, if you are only worried that MR3 will use the Devil Fruit ability to escape, you can try to soak him in sea water. Hey? Makes sense. Hearing this, Logan immediately reacted. MR3 immediately exploded, which group are you on? Of course we are together. Ms. Golden Week still had a calm look on her face, she explained, if they used the method of soaking in sea water to limit your devil fruit ability, then don't they need to continue to tie you up with steel bars? Is that so, it seems to be pretty good feeling aggrieved by being motionless, MR3 nodded. Wow. A large bucket of sea water was brought up. Logan picked up the MR3 and inserted it directly into the bucket, with only one head sticking out. MR3 was in a state of weakness visible to the naked eye, he said in a cold sweat, can you release the steel bars on my body now? Snapped. Logan slapped him on the back of the head again, what are you thinking? This is it. Nanny. Originally thought that the restriction of the steel bars could be lifted, and then found an opportunity to escape, but I didn't expect to be completely locked up now. MR3 looked at MS Golden Week depressedly, idiot, what a bad idea you came up with. Ah. I'm so sorry. The corner of the mouth is slightly pulled down, MS Golden Week is also very depressed. Logan, come quickly. At this moment, Nami ran over from the cabin with a hurried look, and pulled Logan into the cabin. What's wrong? You shouldn't be sick. Looking at Nami's appearance, Logan asked with some concern. In the original plot, when Nami was in Little Garden, she was bitten by a poisonous insect and became seriously ill. If he hadn't arrived at Drum Island in time, Nami's life journey would have ended here. Logan knew about this, so when he was walking in Little Garden these days, he used the ability of Thunder Card to spread a dissociated electromagnetic field around, making it impossible for those bugs to get close. Logically speaking, since the bugs can't get close, Nami shouldn't be sick. Someone is sick, but it's not me, it's Princess Vivi. Nami's face was very tense, and she dragged Logan to Princess Vivi's room before she knew it. When he saw the condition of Princess Vivi, Logan didn't know where he got wrong. Regardless of the original plot or the current plot, 
one of them must be infected by bacteria in Little Garden, right? But Logan still doesn't understand. Princess Vivi was walking with him and Nami, it is impossible for Logan to only protect Nami and ignore Princess Vivi. He is very sure that absolutely no poisonous insect has ever approached Princess Vivi. Why is it still like this? With such confusion, Logan came to Princess Vivi's bedside, sat down, and put his hand on Princess Vivi's forehead. Hiss. High fever. This situation is indeed similar to Nami's situation in the original plot. Sorry. The face that was originally fair and tender was now flushed with high fever, Princess Vivi said apologetically. What are you talking about idiot? Logan smiled and gave her an encouraging look, don't worry, it's fine. I don't know if it's because of the high fever, but Princess Vivi thinks Logan's caring words are really nice. You have a good rest, I'll ask Sanji to make you some millet porridge. With that said, Logan pulled Nami out. He asked, you go and check Princess Vivi's body to see if there are any wounds bitten by insects. Is it a bug bite, it's so serious. Although Nami knew something about common diseases at sea, she didn't know anything about this rare disease. After a while, Nami came out and shook his head with a solemn expression, there is no wound. No wounds. Logan is fascinated. If it wasn't bitten by a poisonous insect, how could it be the same disease as Nami in the original plot? Seeing Logan's expression, Nami added again, really not, even check there. Ah, I don't doubt your words. I just think this disease is too strange Logan patted the top of Nami's head apologetically. Hmm. Being doted on by Logan, Nami was very helpful, and leaned into Logan's arms, however, fortunately, we were lucky, not only got the eternal pose to Alabasta from MR3, but also got the MS Golden Week the eternal pose to Drum Island. In this way, Princess Vivi's illness should not be delayed. Yes. This poor girl has a heavy burden on her. Hearing this, Logan nodded seriously. Princess Vivi is worthy of admiration for being able to do this for the commoners who have nothing to do with her. On the other hand, Wapole, the king of Drum Island. When the Blackbeard pirates went to attack Drum Island, he took the lead as the king to escape. The next day. Logan, there seems to be a marine warship ahead. The studio door was pushed open and Usopp spoke. Normally, if a situation is discovered, all crews will be notified. But this time point is the time for the crew to practice, so Usopp thought about it, and it is better to come and find Logan, the idleman. As for his own words. Because his training situation is different from others, he needs to stay in the mangas for a short time, so he often stays on the watchtower during the day. And the most important thing is that Usopp likes to stay on the watchtower to watch the world because the god-killing star can greatly improve eyesight. That feeling of looking far and controlling everything. Very cool. Let's go and have a look. Logan recalled the plot a little bit, and he probably guessed who he might meet here. Coincidentally, there are two pirates on board, and it would be troublesome to carry them on board all the time, so I might as well hand them over to Marine here. On the sea about ten nautical miles away from the Going Mary ten small warships flying the Marinal are sailing in the direction of the Going Mary. On the deck, Smoker sat on a comfortable chair and looked at the documents in his hand. Beside him, on the mast post, was strapped a strong fellow. At this time, Chief Petty Officer Tashiji came over, took a note, and reported. Captain, these are the information I got from him. Their code name should be that they belong to a certain criminal group. Generally speaking, in order to be safe, they seldom use phone snail, but use orders. Also, it seems the latest task concerns the long-lost Princess of Alabasta. Wonder if this has something to do with the recent riots in Alabasta. After listening to Tashiji's report, Smoker thought for a while. It seems that it is necessary to go to Alabasta to investigate the whole matter. It's just. Having said that, Smoker frowned again, in this case, the pursuit of Straw Hat crew will be delayed. Tashiji adjusted his glasses, I think the matter of Alabasta is more important. Once the riots really happen, it will affect the lives of thousands of people. You're right. Sighing deeply, Smoker looked at another intelligence officer, notify the headquarters immediately, and request for eternal pose to Alabasta. Captain, there's a ship ahead. Look like, a pirate ship. Suddenly, the observers on the watchtower announced loudly. Pirates. Hearing this, Smoker stood up with a swipe. He took the binoculars from the marine video next to him and watched the past. Hey? This pirate flag. The eyebrows were raised suddenly, 
and Smoker's face was full of excitement, ha 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 ha. It's the Straw Hat Pirates. I found them. Fire. Dash. Fire the main gun. Without any hesitation, Smoker ordered directly. Yes, sir. The marine soldiers on the deck immediately got busy and adjusted the direction of the main gun. Boom. A cannonball dragged a fierce flame, like a ferocious beast, rushed towards the pirate ship in the distance. Hey? They fired. It seems that they saw our pirate flag. Usopp is holding the god-killing star in his hand, and he can see places that are not clearer than the marine telescope by relying on himself. While speaking, he raised his hand to fill up the god-killing star. Flaming Phoenix. The moment he let go, riots rolled and turned into a combo of flames. Skip the distant sea and sky as fast as lightning. Boom. The shell of the main gun was directly engulfed by the flames of the yellow spark. They're about to fire a second shot, you might as well give them a good shot. Logan also held the god-killing star in his hand, clearly seeing the situation on the deck of the warship. He saw Smoker and Tashiji, and immediately found it interesting. In the original plot, Smoker is all about catching Luffy. As a result, he chase all the way to Alabasta, but he didn't catch Luffy, but he did help Luffy and picked up a lot of credit, and finally I was directly promoted to Commodore of Marine Headquarters. If he didn't know Smoker's personality, Logan would even wonder if he was chasing Luffy all day long just to get credit. On the deck of the Marine warship. What is that? It actually directly destroyed our shells. The second round is loaded, we must let the pirates taste the power of our marine. Ready, fire. But at this moment, a beam of shinnik energy shot out quickly. Accurately hit the barrel of the warship's main gun. Boom. The barrel of the main gun was lifted up all of a sudden, and the air wave generated by the explosion directly washed everything on the deck into the sea. Immediately afterwards, a figure descended from the sky. Marine, I have something to talk to you. Chapter 92 the explosion blasted Smoker's cigars into the air. Just as he was about to get up, he saw a figure had already landed in front of his eyes. Marine I have something to talk to you guys. Logan looked at Smoker calmly, completely ignoring the Marines on the deck who were hurriedly raising their guns. Smoker raised his head slowly, and when he looked at Logan, his two eyes almost burst into flames. A pirate. He actually went to the warship and presumptuously said that he wanted to talk to Marine? Simply too arrogant. Although in Logue Town, Smoker was knocked out by Logan's armament hacky, but he didn't think it was a normal battle result. At that time, he never thought that the pirate from the Little East Blue would armament hacky. And there are still two. If he knew at that time, he would definitely not ignore the fists of Logan and Luffy. The elementalization of Logia is indeed a bug, but sometimes it can't resist people. Of course, if they were really strong players, such as Marine Admiral, they wouldn't make such low-level mistakes. Because those pirates who need them to go out to clean up, armament hacky is the most basic qualification. Boy. Last time you succeeded in Logue Town, do you think you are good? With a slight grin on the corner of his mouth, Smoker asked coldly. Hey. Logan was stunned. What's the situation? What with the courage, actually pretending to be in front of me? What exactly gave him the illusion that he is qualified to pretend in front of me? Really? It seems that you have forgotten the horror of being dominated by armament hacky again. Logan sighed, pursed his lips slightly, and rubbed the wrist of his right hand with his left hand, immediately a strong armament hacky wrapped around it. I'll give you another chance to speak humanly. Raising his armed fist, Logan reminded. Hee hee, although the armed color can capture Logia's entity, but boy, there are so many abilities you haven't seen. For example. Marine Six Styles. Smoker's figure disappeared from the chair in an instant. Pay for your arrogance. Smoker's. Voice appeared behind Logan. As soon as he raised his hand, he poked Logan's back forcefully. Look back at me in pain. Let me see your eyes that suddenly become blind. Facing this kind of scene where he can avenge his shame, Smoker can't wait to see Logan begging for mercy in pain. But when he tried hard to feel Logan's flesh and blood, his brows frowned suddenly. Wrong. This Shigan doesn't feel right. Could it be that? No way. When Smoker realized that the problem was serious, Logan, who had been pierced by his Shigan, disappeared in an instant. What? What time? Smoker is not a fool, he immediately understood that Logan in front of him was just an afterimage. 
that's a situation that can only be caused when the speed is fast as the speed of light. When he was surprised, Logan's voice came from behind. Soru. Stomp on the ground dozens of times in a row at high speed in an instant, thereby generating an explosive reaction force, to achieve an instant high speed movement, as if the enemy disappeared directly in front of his eyes hearing this, Smoker was shocked. He turned his head abruptly, and saw Logan looking at him calmly. You also know Marine Six styles. Smoker's complexion suddenly turned bad. Suddenly, he thought of something again, and looked at Logan with a face full of horror, what ability did you use to disappear in an instant and then appear behind me? Logan did not understand what he said. Slightly frowning, Logan said confusedly, no way. Can't you see it? I use Marine Six style Soru. Soru? Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Smoker categorically denied it. He shook his head again and again, stop talking nonsense, I can use Soru myself, don't you know the speed of Soru? Although the Soru speed is very fast, it is impossible to achieve the speed of teleportation like you just did. To an extent. Lied to me this professionally. Stop dreaming. Hey. I don't need to lie to you about this kind of thing, do I? Spreading his hands, Logan felt very speechless. I'm a pirate, and I'm arguing with a marine on a warship about this kind of issue. Outrageous. But the next moment, he suddenly understood. Oh. I want to understand, my Soru is the highest level of Soru. And your Soru has just mastered the entry level. So it's normal that you can't understand my Soru. Logan explained. Well broken. But it's okay if he doesn't explain, this explanation made Smoker even more unacceptable. Impossible. You, a pirate, brazenly say that you have trained Marine Six styles to the highest level? There must be a limit to your big talk. Smoker raged. Want to mock me with lies? I can't be fooled by you as a smoker. Yes. Stop lying. Our captain is not easy to deceive. Pirates, raise your hands and surrender. The surrounding marines also stood up for smoker. Sure enough, what kind of general will lead what kind of soldiers? Logan's stomach hurts from laughing at the confidence of these marines, he shook his head, since you guys like to argue about this, let me teach you a lesson. Here, look. This is one of my fingers. Next, I will use it to show you what is called Shigan. As soon as Logan raised his hand, he pokes Smoker directly. Don't try to succeed. Smoker yells and uses Marine Six style Soru again. After stomping on the ground dozens of times, his figure instantly disappeared from Logan's eyes. Immediately after. Puff. Smoker trembled violently. A heart-piercing pain instantly hit the whole body from the chest. How? How is it possible? He looked down at his chest, where Logan's finger was stuck. The fingers are submerged in half, obviously leaving room for the heart. The other party showed mercy. It's easy. Observation Hacky has locked your trajectory. Armament Hacky captured your elemental entity. So, do you think my Shigan is standard enough? Logan slowly pulled out his finger, there was still Smoker's body on it. Puff. With blood spilling from his mouth. Smoker sat slumped on the ground. He looked at Logan in disbelief, gritted his teeth. Haha. I deliberately use the lowest level Shigan, just to let you understand. It's okay, you didn't let me down. Logan smiled and patted Smoker on the shoulder. Puff. Originally, it was just blood spilling from the corner of his mouth, but upon hearing Logan's words, Smoker spit out a mouthful of blood. Using the lowest Shigan on purpose just to make me understand. Since when have I, Smoker, been looked down upon so much? Shame. Powerlessness. Emerging deeply in Smoker's heart. All the Marine soldiers on the deck pointed their guns at Logan, their swords were on edge, as long as Smoker gave an order, they would shoot immediately. Stop. This will kill the captain. On the side, Tashiji, who is Petty Chief Officer, saw that the superior who was both a teacher and a friend was penetrated by a Shigan, and she was devastated. But she also knows that facing such a strong man, even if all their marines are shot, they are just lambs to be slaughtered. It seems that there are still smart people. Logan turned to look at Tashiji, then waved to her. Tashiji was taken aback, but considering that Smoker was still next to Logan, she had no choice but to walk over obediently. You, what are you going to do? A little panicked, Tashiji pursed his lips and said nervously. Logan didn't speak, 
just stretched out his hand to Tashiji. Hateful. Pirates are pirates. Even a guy who is so handsome is still a disgusting pirate. Sensing that Logan's palm was stretched towards her heart, Tashiji was about to go into a rage. Don't move. Or your boss will die. Logan's words immediately made Tashiji afraid to move. Although she didn't want this to happen, it was absolutely impossible for her to watch this boss who cared about her get killed by pirates. Bastard. If you want to blackmail me, can T you do it in a more private place, where there is no one to see? Gritting. Her teeth, Tashiji said resolutely. If it can be exchanged for the safety of her boss, she can sacrifice it. Suicide later. What's more, compared to other pirates, this Logan in front of him has an acceptable appearance anyway. Just when she was thinking wildly, Logan's hand came to her jacket pocket, and took out the handkerchief inside. Logan calmly wiped the blood off his fingers, then threw the handkerchief in front of Smoker, and said, Stop the bleeding. I'm here to talk about something. Nanny? Tashiji is numb. This nasty guy. The threat he made in that tone was actually just for my handkerchief. God. What did I just say? Thinking of what she thought and said just now. Tashiji felt an unprecedented shame wrapping her in an instant. Oh. At this moment, her cheeks turned red instantly, and she just wanted to find a hole in the ground. Get in quickly. Oh, that's right. What did you just say to take you to a place where there is no one? Is there something you want me to do to you in a place where no one is? Pfft. If I didn't know clearly, you must have naughty thought just now. Hey, isn't it? And she just agreed. This pirate is really stupid. If he takes the opportunity to threaten her, she will really succeed. Hey, 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 have you overlooked a problem? People don't have that kind of thinking at all, everything is just made up by the chief herself. Pfft. I have to hold back, I can't laugh. Haha. Ha. Although it's Marine's own person, but men are like this, once they talk about that kind of topic, they will be even harder to tease their own people. Listening to the comments of people around, Tashiji felt that he was already dead. Nasty pirate. It's all your fault. At this time, Smoker raised his head and looked at Logan, it's because of wishful thinking. As Captain Marine, it is absolutely impossible for me to talk to pirates. Um, sorry, I didn't make it clear just now. Logan raised his eyes and explained with a smile, what about my talk, it's not two-way, but one-sided, I'm talking to you. You listen. Understand. Bastard. Why do you think I will compromise with you? Smoker was furious. Although he is a good guy, he has a big temper. Personality is even more staunch. Die at worst. Compromise with pirates? No way. By the way, Miss Petty Officer. I think your idea just now is very good, I agree. Tell me, where do you like to go? Instead of continuing to entangle with Smoker, Logan grabbed Tashiji over. The rubber fruit ability was activated, and an arm spread like a snake in an instant, binding Tashiji tightly from the beginning to the end. What? Underscore underscore but then, when she realized what Logan was talking about, her mind went blank. Is this? Is this, really going to happen? I thought it was going to happen just now, but it didn't happen, and people didn't have that idea. Now I thought it wouldn't happen, but suddenly it happened. The ups and downs of life are too fast. At this time, Smoker snorted coldly, let her go, let's talk. Isn't it going to be okay if it's already like this? Logan shrugged, followed by laughter. After a while. There are two more people on the deck of the warship. MR3 and MS Golden Week. So, you made such commotion, and in the end you just want to exchange these two people for bounty. Smoker looked at Logan in bewilderment. Yeah why not Logan spread his hands. Puff. Smoker spat out a mouthful of blood. Thanks for listening. <laughs>